ornaments, ascending octave scales, broad range and strings crescendo. In an instant, the stars fell from the sky and the musical notes sprinkled to the ground. We are going to find out Who wrote the rest note? Here we are. Is this my opinionatedness. In the quest for the unknown, we may have a glimpse of the brave new world. The rest note is announcing the advent of the greatest masterpiece. prosperity of both dynasties. Some offer their kindness, while some stop the music. I wish to respond to that kindness and hear the melody of peace once more. If heavy shackles stand in the way of it all, then let me remake them. Let me compose this movement myself. Child, 
please. You are so bad in me. No! Damn it! You hypocrite! Poverty is the worst curse. But sometimes there are ways to make a change.
Where have you gone, my naughty kitty? With a crown, then my dreams will align to hold him once again and to see her smile. Yeah, <laughs> Enough with the games, the people are ready. The crown awaits. The crown! The crown! The crown! And the crown chooses its queen. Father and daughter unite with glee. Raising the dead was just the bait, you see. For a hopeful heart is the sweetest. This feels like a never-ending nightmare. Sometimes, I cannot tell if I'm really awake. A puppet without strings! My proudest! Lewis! Thank you for coming tonight! Please come see my next amazing performance with Lewis! <laughs> and again, countless times. Ladies and gentlemen, it's day number two of Call of the Abyss 7 qualifiers here at the Southeast Asia region. Potspice and Chocho, your commentators for this first match. And we had quite 
the barn burner of matches we had yesterday, Chocho. Tell me how you're feeling so far with these qualifiers. Uh, yeah, I'm super excited still. Um, in just two days, in literally the day two already, we'll be having our finals. So mm -hmm. that's going to be really exciting. But yesterday, we are, unfortunately, we have this 2-0 curse from the first <laughs> matchup to the third. So hopefully today, I think it's going to be a lot more intense and a lot mm -hmm. more exciting for you guys to watch. 100%. I'm super excited to see more matches, but you can't deny the dominance displayed for the teams that did uh, qualify yesterday. Not to mention yes. the first match we might see is, is that we're going to see is GH versus UL, but not to mention UTP and not to mention Gear Up Booster, ladies and gentlemen. Big shout out to them because Gear Up Booster ensures a comfortable gaming experience and reliable network support. Try up Gear Up Booster now and elevate your gaming to that next level. And if you're like Eli and rank is life, this is something that you need. How's your rank grind and so far, uh, Chojo? I know you've been studying, but like you've been playing. Uh, yeah, today. rank grind hasn't been uh, very successful, unfortunately, since, mm -hmm. you know, time, time is a little bit tight, but mm -hmm. I think uh, we've been updated about the new patches, the new updates on the Hunter buffs, and as well as the Survivor buff on the Lawyer. Hey, sorry, Survivor mm -hmm. buff, as well as the Survivor nerf on Changes. the Lawyer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think that's going to be really exciting. Even yesterday, we had a Evil Reptilian match and matches, in fact. Uh -huh. So, yeah, this non-meta and conventional piece is actually starting to show. So, mm. hopefully, today we'll see more of that. And if mm. not, I think a lot of us are anticipating this. The Itaqua. Oh, yeah, I mean, the chat was going wild for it, right? So, shout out to people in the chat that are here watching. Hopefully, we get some night watches, a lot of opera singers for sure, and a lot to be won here with the prize pool in front of your screen, folks. That's 4 million Chinese yuan, or approximately 560 USD. Cho Cho, that's a lot of numbers. I'm terrible with numbers, but talk us through the, the prize pool distribution. Um, Make it to top 16, uh, sorry, top 20, and you do mm -hmm. get some money uh, in CN, Chinese yen. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, getting, being the champion recently has always been uh, Chinese mainland teams being the top. So hopefully this time around when it comes to the group stages, playoffs, we'll be seeing new performances from all different regions and also different play styles and team comps that we don't usually see. Yeah, so fingers crossed we get to see um, although, I mean, it, they're always playing for, aside from the amazing prize pool, it's for the glory to be called the Call of the Abyss champions, right? There are only a limited number of teams that can lay claim to that. And there was one team that won it thrice in a row. So you'll be part of that elite group of uh, teams. And like you said, all the winners of Call of the Abyss have been Chinese mainland teams. So hopefully this will be the changing of the tides. And speaking of the tides changing, the brackets have been changing. We have match number five, GH versus UL. Match number six, UTP versus RS. And we have our grand finals. This is no uh, lower. There's going to be no lower bracket for this one, folks. So it's single elimination. We're going to have our last match to determine who will be advancing, who will be joining Team FT to qualify for a Call of the Abyss 7. Yeah, and that's going to be really exciting. Currently, we already have FT qualified, right? And I think mm. there's a bit of members change inside. So uh, there's something that we can anticipate when it comes to the roster um, announcement when it comes out. Now, looking at our matchup timings, mm -hmm. uh, yep, it's at 3, 5, and 7 p.m. UTC plus 7. So mm. if you guys are in plus 8 timing, just like us, uh, it will be one hour right after that. So uh, again, mark your, well, time your alarms if you want to see certain matches and make sure you support your favorite teams because they need it now more than ever. And it gets more and more intense as the bracket goes along. And also not to mention, we still have the EU qualifiers coming up. We have um, the Japan qualifiers as well as Chinese mainland qualifiers. Every division qualifiers are going to be happening. And what's happening in front of us right now is the team profile of Team GH. I was able to call their match and they performed spectacularly, both mm. on the survivor side and the hunter side. And a lot of eyes are on Meow right now because mm -hmm. he's the newest addition to Team GH. Yeah, very exciting. We usually saw, we usually see God J or Seichu mm. at that point in time. But now with the addition of Meow, we definitely do see certain uh, strengths coming from GH. And now player introduction, we do have the Wax artist being shown here. But yesterday he played the opera singer at Moonlit and, and sorry, Opera singer at... Moonlit, yes, you are correct. Moonlit, and mm -hmm. I believe the end at Chinatown. Yeah. So uh, that's going to be... Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, uh, things do work out for them again. If it works out, 2-0 we'll be seeing. But if not, uh, we might see very intense matchup between Team GH and UL. UL didn't play yesterday, so this is going to be our first time seeing them as a whole team with new members inside. Mm-hmm. 
so we have to get to that in just a bit. Going to introduce the, the other players. God J, also a name that is synonymous to competitive identity five here in Southeast Asia. We did not see him yesterday, which is which begs the question: like, will we see him today or uh, in, in future tournaments? Or he's is he going to come in like round four or five? Hopefully, we'll see him in round three. But with the way Meow performed yesterday. I think he's going to try to bring back that same type of magic. We haven't seen him um, actually on the Opera Singer because Meow is actually really well. So hopefully we get to see Godjay on that. But uh, Chocho, tell us a little something about Skyfall. Yeah, Skyfall uh, usually plays the Rescuer role for his team. And yesterday he played the Wilding as well as the Embalmer. So uh, not too much of uh, things going on other than I think yesterday there was this play from GH Survivors between the Wilding and Gardener. They were trying to pull on until the last cipher was popped and they successfully did that and got a three escape in that moonlit remark park match so um definitely a very core member and an og oh, yeah. member of team gh and we got to move on to gh zao Khan. and now zao Khan has been in the name on people's mouths a lot when you guys say all-star teams right you want an all-star mm -hmm. rescuer zao Khan. more like for but me but I mean, you and Nell were talking about how, uh, praising Zhao Kahn, right? And yes. yesterday, he didn't really play the rescuer role because that was uh, Skyfall. He did an amazing job as the acrobat kiting around Moonlit River Park. Uh, he also had a little bit of airplaneness mishap, but still able mm -hmm. to get the three-person escape. Uh, that is a win on GH's book. So can't wait to see how Zhao Kahn will perform in this matchup. And now, yesterday, star player, little boy, did that double portal trick at Moonlit River Park. Something very amazing, not every single princess player can do. Really requires a certain level of precision and mm -hmm. familiarity with that character. And other than the princess, he did play the cheerleader and did quite enough support and also decoding for his team. Mm -hmm. Looking at our decoding progress, 150 percent so uh yeah we can definitely see how he might potentially be one of the best supporters in this game at this point point. and speaking of other support Narakun's prospector is so good with that support um compare uh, uh and compare and contrast to how little boy also is able to kite you know you have the and zao Khan as well and skyfall with just the stable rescuer Narakun's playstyle really establishes him as the the ob -er and the ones that really tries to go for that yes. stun so I'm super excited to see the team synergy in this matchup and GH really leaning into their strengths with the with the support and really covering their their grounds to create these big opportunities and kind of uh, prolong the the hunter's chase or at least delay the first down to happen once the last cipher is primed. Even though that match tends to go like five minutes onwards, it's still all good because they're the ones controlling the tempo. And now moving on to our next team introduction, we do have Team UL. Mm -hmm. It's the first time we're seeing them in this tournament. And yeah, two of them straight up, they do have the Night Watch. So Itaqua, Itaqua supporters, we might definitely see this mm -hmm. Itaqua coming out probably in BO2 or BO3. Yeah. Shout out to Zen. I was able to talk to him, uh, interview him. I asked like, what, what's the name UL? Apparently it's, it means untitled. Like... It means like when you oh. name a document or file and you forgot to create the name, it'll be like untitled doc one or something. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's a name in progress, but shout outs to him. He is going to be one of the hunters here. And he says that the team's biggest strengths are the members. They listen and help each other in many things and uh, try to problem solve with the play style that's given for them. And uh, if you watch IVA, IVC, Zen OWO is a name that you all remember. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, just looking from the interview itself, right? It seems like they're all very well co coordinated. They communicate effectively mm -hmm. and try to solve problems calmly. So uh, hopefully it, 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 it will be displayed uh, when it comes mm -hmm. to the survivors uh, playing later on against mm -hmm. possibly um, God J or Mel. Right. And now Lemon Lime, a rather unfamiliar name for me. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, he plays the night I need a Lemon Lime. Uh, I will say this though, the chat is asking for Itaqua and you know, hopefully we'll get two Itaquas based on the, the character profile, but you were saying Hopefully. Mm -hmm. But we know from Zeno, right? He does play Deny at Geisha and also yes. his very well-known Dream Witch. Mm -hmm. So Itaqua-wise may not be his first pick, maybe his second or third. We have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. So moving on to the players, Hatari is another a name that you all know and love here. He was, I believe he did uh, join a couple IVAs in a couple of teams. I think he also yeah. was a GH member at one point, or he joined the, the all-star teams in Thailand. But we all know him as a really good stunner, really good ob -er. So hopefully he'll create those moments here in the qualifiers for Call of the Abyss 7 in the Team UL. 
and hopefully uh, things do work out because I think in the recent tournaments that we've been seeing him, official and unofficial, his performance hasn't been very consistent. So hopefully this time round, we'll be seeing the better side of him. And now, Yezen, another Survivor player that, very familiar name of course, uh, plays the Antiquarian and Prospector and... Yeah, among his teammates, right, he doesn't really stand out, but he's definitely that stable mm -hmm. survivor that we always want to see as our randoms in rank matches. Yes. So, yes, and hopefully he shows us his prospector play later on. Mm. I believe he's also an S badge prospector, so that could come in handy uh, in, in this mm. tournament. So I'm super excited to see what they have in store because when I was talking to um, Zen, he did say like, hey, what do you think about the meta of the game? It goes, this is opera singer, opera singer all the way. So hopefully boy man, and uh, Yazin and Hatari will be ready for the uh, the Sangria that will come out. So Boyman here, I don't have that much notes on him yet, but looking at his uh, de deduction score, containment time, quite impressive numbers. So hopefully Boyman can create some moments. Chocho, anything else to add? Uh, yeah, for Boyman, I actually did notice him in IVA when I was managing the project. And mm -hmm. he actually played, I would say he's one of the standout players in his team. Nice. I think we can anticipate certain plays from him that might be spectacular. So I think we can have certain expectations on him. But now moving on to Plug Name, a very familiar mercenary rescuer as well. Um, very stable, I would say. Uh, 1.22, mm -hmm. so at least one stable rescue each round. Mm -hmm. And yeah, manages to decode that one cipher at least. Uh, very responsible uh, rescuer main, I would say. Mm -hmm. And yeah, hopefully you won't see a Merc Coder um, for the entire round. <laughs> I'll pray for him. Hope hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. And it was interesting because I think ST did bring an interesting uh, build last uh, yesterday. They brought like three Tide Turners to try and out. So hopefully we'll see some interesting rescues from... Uh, uh, the, the team here, but we're going to move on to Vin here. Uh, it says here that he's a forward, average decoding scores, triple digits, containment time above 60 seconds, so that's huge. Uh, re average rescues, this is an important number to notice, it's 1.24, so hopefully we'll live up to the stats that we see on screen. Mm. So, yeah, I'm not too sure who their main line up for survivors will be, as well as the mm -hmm. hunter, since they do have five survivors and two hunters now so we have to wait and see i think one thing that's interesting here is that hatari is registered as a hunter player but the character oh. pools that has been showed to us is a survivor hmm. so actually am i saying this wrong four survivors and two three hunters three hunters wow that's <laughs> it seems like they need one more to have a four uh, four four team that's interesting. Yeah. Um, but I mean, based on the stats we see on screen, I think we took this into account from yesterday as well. Mm. We thought that um, it would be God J being the survivor, but maybe today Hatari is going to be uh, a, a survivor for now and have uh, the two have other hunters. Huh? Yeah, well, switcheroo, <laughs> a novelist switcheroo happen. Yeah, so, and I think mm -hmm. for UL, right? Uh, mm -hmm. They if they actually studied GH yesterday. They shouldn't be picking any maps that is too into their favor right now. Just from yesterday, they did pick the Moonlit River Park, Chinatown as well, and they excel perfectly in both matches. So they really have to think into the character pool of Meow Pai slash mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it seems like S a UL <laughs> is still gonna hit straight for that Moonlit River Park regardless. Okay. Yeah. This is terrifying because we saw how well the survivors perform in Moonlit River Park. There was yeah. no no part of that map was every part of that map was utilized to their advantage so hopefully they know what they're getting into because i mean if you give gh that same type of map if mm. you give them the exact same conditions i'm sure more often than not they're going to produce the same type of results so whether it be in the picks and bands and the spawn points they have to be ready for this and we know that meow is gonna play his game He's, he he did he was unfazed with um this big map and he used opera singer which arguably does she doesn't do well in because of the big areas you want enclosed spaces but he was able to manage it pretty well and kite and uh stuff a I think it was like a 30 second kite onto an acrobat in fourth stop. Mm. And also one thing to be careful about, uh, I think mm. they wouldn't be using the same strategy that they had yesterday with the Wilding Gardener that we saw. Mm. So I still do think that GH survivors have many, many other tricks oh, up yeah. their sleeves that they're not showing. So we'll see how their hunter side of UL is gonna counter that kind mm. of possible strategy they're going for yesterday and see mm. and possibly see new um ways that they could play around with those characters once again right and 
let us uh, let your voices be heard, chat. Again, uh, two teams will only uh, and only one will come out on top. Will it be GH? Will it be UL? I know Chocho, you thought that what was that team? Uh, Utopia. You thought it was like bamboo or something. What would you oh, give? Yeah. What emoji would you give UL? Because I'm pretty sure GH has one, and it's a clover leaf, right? That's good luck. So cloverleaf yeah. emojis for GH or just maybe green hearts for GH. What would you give UL? Oh, UL. I'm untitled. I feel I don't know. You gives me umbrella. Like when I see you, it gives me umbrella, umbrella. So maybe an umbrella, yeah. An umbrella. Okay. okay how about um, umbrella and leaf. water? Like let's make it rain. Oh. Let's go. All right. All right. Let's, let's make it rain. Let's, let's, yeah. Blue hearts, umbrella. Any blue emojis for uh, Team UL? Because it reminds Chocho of rain for some reason, or umbrella at least. And GH, it's all about green. It's all about good luck. Have fun. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's green hearts, clover leaves, trees. Anything, anything green? Yeah, go for it. And green emojis. Uh, let your voices be heard in chat. While I do that, I'm gonna read the chat. It's Sublimes here. Uh, Tewu, Steam Buns, Mani, Nano, uh, Winter Blore, I believe. There's there's everyone's here. They're also asking for Itaqua, so hopefully we'll see some. Yeah, and I would like to give my shoutouts too, right? To Steam Buns, Window Blower. And a very special shout out to this specific person. Uh, okay, who? Soapy. Soapy, soapy. right? Like, so, like, yeah, soap? like Soapy. Uh, yeah, and okay. also I think I just saw that she said that she had an exam tomorrow. So, good oh, luck good to you. Good luck. And have fun. Yeah, all the no, best. Please study. Exam, really. <laughs> yeah, you can always watch this again, but mm -hmm, the test yes. is tomorrow. So, you know what? So set funny. Up can I just right say first. this? I love how you give advice, and then if you're commentating with Eli, he's like, we, we, we go rank, we don't prioritize school, but no, school <laughs> is... <laughs> Eli, if you're listening, Chocho is your complete opposite. That's why you guys are so funny commentating together. Anyway, good, luck to, any, 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 yeah. <laughs> good luck to anyone having their exam. Hope you guys are having a great Sunday wherever you guys are at the world, or having a great time wherever you guys are watching this, but... We're going to head towards the picks and bands as we head to Moonlit River Park, Chocho. Yeah, so UL Survivor is going against GH Hunter Meow Pai. No God J um, uh, at all. So maybe we might not even be seeing him. Maybe unless um, they decide to let him out in BO2 and have another swap in BO3. That could be possible. Mm -hmm. And yeah, straight up, they are banning out the antiquarian and first officer. Survivor side, they're going to be picking a very standard gardener and patient mm. picks over here. This is okay. like a deja vu moment over and over again. Mm -hmm. Since yesterday's uh, GH, ST, I think Omori as well, they have been banning yeah. the same two first two survivors. I, mm -hmm. picking, the first, picking the first same two survivors at the start. Yeah. Seems like a trajectory that we're going to, and it seems like Meow also is not a fan of the Aeroplanist, so he's going to be mm. banning out the Aeroplanist, allowing the mercenary to be picked up or... Um, uh, yeah, a, a stable rescuer, right? And rightfully so, he's going to pick that one up. So I think, yeah, they are definitely gearing up towards the opera singer that will definitely come out of Meow. Just depends on the last ban and what will the last survivor be available to the team uh, to pick up. Mm, yeah, and now they, are, will be they will be confirming the mercenary. Uh, Meow Pai actually gave them the chance to pick it in the first two to kind of eliminate that, but they kind of took it slow and it worked out for them. So, uh, yeah, UL now needs probably a harass. Mm -hmm. They will just negate that har harassing portion huh. and just hit straight for the Embama. Wow. Embama's a very popular pick uh, since yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, what's interesting here is that usually Embalmers are chosen just to tie things out. So, this. For me, it, it's giving like, oh, let's just try and go for a safe game, a tie at most. Let's not overextend ourselves because we know what Meow is capable of. Um, I don't, I think this doesn't scream aggression because, right, you were trying to look mm. for a harasser, but it seems like everyone's kind of left to their, their own self to kite. And there's a mercenary there for that one save if it has to happen. But yeah, I, I think they, they're coming in with a strategy of defense. Uh, to mm. kind of negate any points being gained, more than two at least, on the side of Meow. Yeah, and yeah, considering it's quite interesting, considering how Meow Pai uh, has a, would, would most likely be picking the opera singer, right? I would think that possibly a prospector might be a better option for them. But now uh, now they have no harasses and will just be relying them, uh, on themselves for solo kiting. A very standard spawn that we're seeing here. Patient at fourth stop, so he can hook around that area. And Bama can put his cough into the second floor when he spawned there. Yazin can rotate to the first stop. And with this spawn, actually, you might not want to rotate first stop since the 
cipher will be locked. So see which side Miao Pai decides to chase, who mm. who Miao Pai decides to chase, and whether the first cut will be long enough for them to actually hopefully tie against Miao Pai. Yeah, so I'm super interested to see how that is going to play out, folks, because. Again, um, they saw a little bit of a br- blueprint that was made from yesterday. They saw what mm. to do, what not to do, what to expect. And I, I can't recall the exact bands of Meow Pai, but I feel like it's pretty much the same. I just noted that he'd opt to actually have the mercenary come in than the airplane, and he was able to handle the mercenary pretty well. And again, there were a lot yeah. of scrambly moments, but he still ended up on top, and that's the only thing that matters. So can he make lightning strike twice, and will we have some deja vu coming into this round one first half yeah and yeah i mean this is also ul's map selection so we hopefully they'll be able to get the advantage that they need and i'll be heading into b01 first half uh by commentary by chocho and posh pies <laughs> yeah so here we have it again same type of rotation here hatari has to be able to get it but unable to get the first hook and this is a bit of a same situation <laughs> Different story, different players, but now Meow is on the hunt and Hatari unfortunately has to make this kite last. He's already going for that second hook and um, trying to just stick around this area and play the mind games here. He vaults the pallet and it seems like Meow is hell-bent and intent on downing this uh, this patient early on. Oh, a little bit impatient coming from Meow Pai and now we'll be heading this area once again. Hatari trying to mind game Meow Pai but will it work out here? I think it's just a matter of mind game and time at this point and he will wow. be down with that Terra Shock blink not ready just yet. Mm -hmm. Again, incredible start. I mean, it, it la yesterday I believe he was down in 30 th the 30th second mark. Bought a little mm. more time but when you're up against an opera singer Cypher progress have to be on point and the first chase needs to be so good because if not, the domino pieces have already been falling into place and now he's already harassing. Oh, and now we'll not be able to get that rescue off successfully now. Plug name forced out of the area, but luckily Boy Man is here for that rescue. And Bama with a 6-9 build. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So now uh, it seems like the, the rescue does happen. I mean, Ty Turner is in... Uh, man, this is going to be a little tough. He's just going to pop for the last effort. Full presence uh, opera singer. And now Hatari is shifting his attentions to this two-story. But Chocho, it's going to be a little tough because this patient has no more items to use. Yeah, so uh, they just need to not rescue and give that your Tinnitus so that Miapai doesn't mm -hmm. actually go out and scout for the next survivor already. Plug name is near this area and has been healed fully, quite fast mm -hmm. actually, from the side of survivors. And now they are all continuing with their... Decoding duties. Plug name giving that tinnitus as expected from Team UL. Melpai, yeah, he, I think he kind of knows also because patient really used up three hooks. There is no way they want to go for this rescue. And I think one unfortunate thing from the side of UL survivors is that they weren't able to force out that blink from Melpai. So this second kite has to last and also force out that blink. Oh, for sure. Just a great start for any opera singer players. First person already eliminated from the game. Yazin now will get the attention of Meow. And now, unfortunately, no ciphers have popped just yet, Chocho. Three are primed, but he's just chasing them away at the at the bridge cipher. And now Yazin just dropping down these pallets. Free dropping pallets is so important up against the uh, opera singer. Let's see how long this was uh this uh kite is gonna last. Yeah, and now they're kiting on top of each other. Yarzen trying to get out of this area now with that speed boost and attack attack coming through. Yeah, he's getting kinda confused because even if he stays here, he's gonna be interrupting his teammate Cypher. Able to get that bubble, but does he have pallet boost? Oh, unfortunately, um. we're not going to find out because he already broke that pallet. And now Yazin forced out in the open here with a charged up attack. And Yazin has fallen down. Two ciphers have popped. The Mercoder actually on the, the cipher primes here. So it just seems like a tough uh, situation for G uh, for UL. But can we actually give our like give our uh, just high praises to how Meow is actually controlling this matchup? It's only three minutes in, and he's well on his way to get his, his second survivor out of the game. Yeah, and yeah, this is leading a little bit towards Meow Pie right now. Planning trying to get come for this rescue, and hopefully, no double down situation. But did Meow Pie put a remnant in front? Seems like he did not and will be manually traveling over there just to get that hit. Mm. Yeah, padding away very safely, but he wants this double down. He knows oh that once this double down occurs, it's gonna be a pretty definite 
three or four yeah. kill for him. True, and now he's gonna go back to the Shadow Remnant. Yazin now trying to transition to a better spot for kiting. And now Meow Pai just so masterful in controlling the pace of this match. Double down situation, but the Gardener does have a coffin for him to get rescued right away. But it's still, two bodies have been on the floor and now two Cyphers remaining. This Embalmer can't pop all those Cyphers. So um, Meow Pai still on the, the hunt and still you know pressing on the gas here to continue his dominance. Yeah, very curious because even okay, if you can go back, right? Patient didn't act when he was down. The Cyphers were kind of on a standstill for all three of them, so it begs the question: What was going on at that point in time? But right. now, going heading back into this chase, Gardener trying to kite for a life. The Titan effect from the Embalmer is gonna last really, really shortly, and mm. Yazan will be seeing the chair once Ooh. again. The bubble was so close to happening, and no Chocho that we have not seen the blink used just yet. So Meow Pai was just just flexing the the raw strength of this opera singer able to get um a second person eliminated from this matchup and now it's uh it's only a matter of time till he finds his next target and it's gonna be so much harder to pop two ciphers if one is being chased yeah and see and now he sees the blood tree boy man getting the hit through that mm -hmm. pellet very well played from Yalpai's side. Boyman trying to kite for his life, but has nothing to work with. He only has a coffin, but the coffin has already been used on yeah. Gardener, so has oh. no kiting abilities. True, and now forcing the vault, and now it's gonna be a, 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 a down situation, and now he's gonna go for another down, and he's gonna try to slug these survivors as much as possible. Shout outs to Ping Pong in chat here, because he says, do you get deja vu, Chocho? Because like, this is how it's performing like yesterday. Yeah, it's just Meow Pai is just really strong, and I think that the only way that you can kind of slow him down when it comes to first chase and potential chairing is through the harassment coming mm -hmm. from the pos possibly prospector. Mm -hmm. So yeah, really, really unfortunate that they didn't really mm -hmm. pick characters like that, yeah. and now they are kind of stuck with. Even though. Uh, Hatari managed to use all three hooks, right? He didn't really pull on the kite very long. All three Cyphers was just in their, their 50 range each. True, and now the Remnant switcheroo that happened just so he can down uh, this Mercenary. So, yeah, I like the point that you brought up. He's going to use the Teleport just to get to Boyman here. If you let Meow Pai play his game, he'd gladly do it without the risk of getting stunned. Yeah, and Opera Singer is very terrifying, but in the hands of Meow Pai, it's a... Di it's it's a whole other ball game, right? You have to play not just the, the strengths of the opera singer, but Meow Pai himself. So a dominant first half uh, for Meow Pai, just very reminiscent of how he performed yesterday, even with just the different characters, no harassers involved, but he was still able to produce the same type of results. And dare I say, a lot cleaner from yesterday. So maybe the jitters are gone and he's all warmed up. So this can only mean trouble for any other team that's gonna be facing him down the line. Yeah, it, yeah, it just shows how Meow Pai is really in good condition at this point. Um, definitely ready to claim that a win for today. Mm -hmm. But we have to see how he performed uh, in the later rounds. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing that we really have to mention is how strong his chasing ability is. We didn't right. have the blink initially, right, for Meow Pai, And he manages to chase every single one of them without the blink. And it shows that... I mean, his aggression is definitely showing through. He's able to capitalize on mistakes, mm -hmm. on opportunities. And I think there's something not every hunter can do. I, I think one noticeable point, right, is when one person was eliminated and on top, it just reads there, five cyphers remaining. Yeah. It definitely shows how strong Mel Pai is as a hunter now. I think also to add on to that, he really capitalized on the transitions. Like there, there was a trend also from yesterday that uh, survivors kiting on top of each other, that, mm. that he just was able to control the map. And this is a huge map and he was really able to um, maneuver around it. I mean, we have to watch back, maybe we have recency bias, but I don't think there's any wasted movement on his side. His strikes were precise, his movement, his remnants. His mind game was also on point. So it's, yes, aggressive, but it's that calculated aggression that he was able to um, kind of overwhelm the survivors. And I think he's able to do that because he's not nervous for any prospector or not nervous mm. for any antiquarian to go stun him. He just had to play his game because he knew there were no harassers. It was a very defensive lineup. And you know what? They really tried to bolster up with the embalmer, but he was able to counter it. So again, GG is going to go out to both the teams. It is uh, Meow to get five points once again. So he's well on his way to get best deduction um, in this matchup again. 
Yeah, and also to add on, right? I think there was this one moment where actually he actually created an opportunity for himself when Mercenary came for that rescue. I believe it was on Gardener. Uh, after mm-hmm. the rescue, he actually padded away so that he kind of avoids the double down situation. But Melpa was so aggressive in his playstyle, mm-hmm. he just went straight and tried to get the double down. He manages to manage to teleport back with that remnant. Right. And Gardener actually didn't rotate far from that area still. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. That, I was gonna say, yeah, that was a uh, that was just his hunter instincts on display. Like usually, mm-hmm. some hunters would kind of lose their survivors, getting a little greedy for the overextension, and that almost happened yesterday. But now it just seemed like uh, Meow Pai 2.0 with how he's able to just control the the entire matchup and control the entire map. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we need to really you know calm down with our praises for Meow Pai because we've been seeing it <laughs> since the start. Now looking at yeah. our stats, right? Actually, not too bad. Atari actually kited for 61.1 seconds against a opera singer with and and use up three hooks already. So um, definitely could be better. But against mm-hmm. Meow Pai's aggression, I think there's something that even survivors themselves, just listening to its name, get scared, oh, nervous, yeah. and that kind of do affect the performance. So we hopefully can see better performance coming from UL survivors, possibly mm-hmm. in BO2. Yeah. And this is the point of uh, the qualifiers, right? We want the best of the best to come out of this qualifiers to represent the Southeast Asia region. So hopefully UL will understand the matchup, come back stronger in round number two. There's always a round number two, like you said yesterday, Chocho. There's always another game and there's always another tournament and there's always another, a learning that you can get from this. So mm. hopefully they'll, able to get, they'll be able to get that. But in this matchup, uh, Meow just had the better game plan, the better execution, and he was able to execute accordingly. So uh, that's done and dusted. We're done with the first half, and now we're going to shift on over to the second half of this game. Hopefully, um, the, the the hunter of Team UL will try and bounce back from this uh, five-point deficit. Yeah, hopefully so. And mm-hmm. yeah, we do have two of them, right? Lemon Lime and Zeno. So yeah, the question begs now is... Which hunter are they gonna be bringing out, and which one is the stronger out of the two as well? Because mm. Lemon Lime, we have no idea, and either maybe he changed his name. We're not too sure. But for <laughs> Zeno, he definitely with, do with have the name. If I may ask you, Chocho, with a name like yeah. Lemon Lime, what's it giving? What's the hunter? What's the with a name like with an IGN like that? Fiesta. Fe- <laughs> I don't know. I don't know because I personally like lemon lime. The <laughs> Yeah, I personally like the fruit, lemon and lime, lime juice especially. So true, true. You, you, you squeeze it on the sotong, and mm. sotong is. You know what sotong yeah. is, right? Octopus, yeah, I, right? It's <laughs> like yeah. something similar. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it reminds me I of food. Actually think, reminds me of hungry. Yeah, I was, I'm, I'm getting hungry. Thanks, Chocho. I got a double duty today, and you're making me hungry. But I would have to say, yeah, are you thinking feaster? I was actually thinking naiad. I don't know. Mm. If, if, again, if, we're just, it's just giving that, folks, because again, I'm, I'm also, aside from being hungry, I'm thirsty, I'm quite parched, so I could use a lemon lime right now. But hopefully, mm. I don't know if the U- Team UL could use the lemon lime, because we have to talk about Zen. Zen, you know what, synonymous uh, to IVA, always present there. The, oh, oh, actually, I asked him any shout out or any message you want to give to the fans watching Team UL. And he goes, he just typed O W O because that's his thing. It's Zen O O O O O W O O O Zen O O, right? That's his, that's his the entire tag. I don't know. It's his thing. So O W O in the chat for Zen, guys, if he'll be the hunter for this game. And you, you brought up a good point, right? He has the, the Dream Witch, the Geisha, Nyad. They're not opera singer. Hopefully, they Lemon Lime or Zen could bring out the opera singer because you can't deny that it is the era of the opera singer. Mm, yeah, you're right. Hopefully, we'll see that. And yeah, I mean, with the rise of the opera singer, right? I mean, it's definitely the strongest hunter now for that four kill and that BO1 mm. hunter as well. So, mm. um, higher chance that you might be seeing it if Zeno do have that at the back of his hand and mm. if not if he actually does see that oh maybe Dream Witch might work with this team comm that the servers are actually mm. giving then he might want to go for that but the thing is right. with Dream Witch mm-hmm. you don't if the team the survivor team is actually very well coordinated there is mm. no way you can really outplay that you actually as yeah. the Dream Witch you actually get outplayed by them mm-hmm. and considering mm-hmm. how well these GH survivors are together when it comes to synergy teamwork and these four core players that we've seen for years already mm-hmm. um, 
picking Dream Rich is really, really tough for a general yeah. at this point. Yeah, it's and like picking the, your poison. Yeah, and I'm just gonna add to that. They they scrim with God J, one of the best Dream Witches out there too. So I'm pretty sure they might know. And uh, the Moonlit River Park not the best map for Dream Witch because it's so far apart. You're gonna do yeah. extra work with try to positioning the the leeches. So Zena's his work cut out for him, but Takwa, Nightwatch. I don't know if anyone has that lemon lime or Zen. We didn't see it. Mean, if he wants to mm -hmm. go, Geisha. Uh, Geisha, Geisha does really well at Moonlit great. with the yeah. if he has the gr aggression and mm -hmm. the the survivors do slip up a little bit here and there. I think he might be able to play that. But this is GH once again. Even if they slip up, they come back as strong in that same matchup itself. It's, it's like some miracle happening in GH. They just know what to do, how mm -hmm. to come back from a potential loss match. And there's something that I really admire and look up to for, about GH survivors. Yeah, no matter how the situation is looking, they're able to find ways to make it work out. It's like, usually you can kind of see from a team, like if one thing doesn't go their way, it's kind of hard for them to scramble and then they kind of fall apart. But with GH, it's like, uh, there's never one moment, even though like there's one great chase at the start, they're still able to bounce back in the mid game, the end game. So you're right that the Hunter really has his work cut out for him and they have to be prepared with whatever they're going to be bringing out. So hopefully we'll find out soon enough which Hunter is going to be coming into the table. But guys in chat, I want to see you make it rain out there. Some umbrellas for UL, some blue hearts. Uh, just to give them, you know, some love and support because they need it now more than ever. Because 5-0 is not the best start to a game that a lot is on the line to represent Southeast Asia. So also for those guys that are watching for GH, I want to see you spam the green hearts as well as the, the lucky clover leaves for the good lucks and have funds. Uh, we are looking at you guys. So uh, any shout outs you want to give out, Jojo? Uh, yeah, to Erica, Amon, Dreamy Chain, TT Griffin, mm -hmm. uh, just a sleeve for Alex to fold. <laughs> it's a <laughs> long name that we have there. Uh, somebody Pearl, play Gamekeeper, he says. <laughs> Sorry? No, he said somebody play Gamekeeper, that really long name. So, mm -hmm. uh, not sure if we're going to see it now. Because again, also for those watching now, even the grand finals is going to be a best of three. So, usually Gamekeeper usually comes out four or five. So, I'm not sure if Gamekeeper is going to come out. But yeah, uh, uh, continue on to the shout outs. Uh, yeah, uh, Chiu, Ramoda, yeah, all of you guys that's watching this, thank you for being here and also, you know what, usually the matches, uh, do take oh, some time because, the yeah, the matches do take some time, so we need to be a little bit more patient and now, mm -hmm. speaking of patient, we're actually gonna dive right straight into yeah, this. Yeah, Chocho, you don't, so we don't, you don't like no Chocho patience, wait, right? guys, production, Chocho doesn't like to wait, she wants the matches now, I'm kidding. <laughs> But you guys, it's all good things can happen for those who wait. And we want to make sure that all the players are in the best possible conditions. That's why it takes a little extra time. And it usually, and it always does, you know, it, it, the anticipation does pay off. So we're going to see Zen actually take the, the Helm of Hunter. And we have uh, classic picks here. Uh, wow, securing the Acrobat right off the bat is going to be a little tough here because Acrobat is so good on this map. Yeah, so... We do see a little bit of changes when it comes to their first two picks. Yesterday was Gardener and Patient. Today is Gardener and Acrobat. And we know how Acrobat and Patient is kind of like interchangeable. If Hunter bans one, you pick the other one. And I guess in their perspective, going against whichever Zeno's hunt, Zeno is going to pick, uh, the Acrobat seems to be a better option in their perspective. So we'll see how this Acrobat may shine at potentially the fourth stop spawn location. And now moving on from that, we do have the aeroplane is being bent out. Mm. Oh, they're gonna pick a double Kiter team comp over wow. here with the Acrobat and Patient. Yo, this is kind of crazy because you think about it, they they know they have like five points and they can kind of rest on their laurels to get a tie, mm. but they're not picking Embalmer. They're not picking a Rescuer to start out. They're actually go, you know, they're doubling down on the, the kiting, the support. So mm. interesting choice that they went for Patient here and I'm pretty sure this might be Zhao Khan's patient. And to top it all off, they're going mercenary since first officer was banned. So GH, this is definitely not giving a Thai mentality. They want the, a Thai or 2-2 two -two, uh, mentality. They are from Thailand. So the, this is very much Thai, a Thai team. So, mm -hmm. but I mean the 2-2 two -two mentality that they just want to rest on their laurels, ladies and gentlemen. So 
uh gh is a team that wants to fight and really showcase their survivor skills so they want to go for they want to gun for more points yeah and i think one thing that uh we should notice is also that uh, Zeno actually did not ban the Priestess and GH also didn't pick the Priestess so I'm guess and and also from GH's side they didn't pick any single harassers yesterday they at least picked the Wilding mm -hmm. but today it's just completely a full-on kiting team comp that we're seeing yes. here so might not really see any um um fights in the game it's probably just gonna be solo kiting and um probably no no support that I can really see from here yeah i agree wow so zen coming out with the opera singer so we can actually kind of compare and contrast these two types of matches because opera singer with no harassers could be a little tough i think the most synergy they can get from this is the coaster and maybe like an acrobat silence once he's able to make that rescue happen but yeah aside from that you don't really see any support happening like some wi-fi heals from the psychologist antiquarian with any of the the stuns prospector as well which is very interesting because i like that you brought up that you know what gh isn't going to rest on their laurels with how they performed yesterday they have the same map same lineup priestess was not banned but they did not pick up priestess yeah so, yeah very cute actually not that you mentioned it psychologist hasn't been any team's picks since yesterday so that's rather curious like why is mm -hmm. not being picked over here when it's such a rather okay character to be picked uh, in the later rounds as well? And now looking at our spawn locations, Little Boy at the 4th stop Gardener, Nerekun at the double story. Like I said, everyone in this <laughs> team can kite, yeah, right? So, they can. really, it's picking your poison once again from Zeno's side. The, he does have the Opera Sing, which is the strongest hunter in the game. Mm -hmm. So, what can he possibly go for at this point in time? Is it the left oh. person or the right one? Ah, pick your poison. The lesser of the evils. Are you going to call? Or are you going to fall? Where, where, where are we going? Where are we going? The lesser of the evils here. Because you're going to have Acrobat, who is really good on fourth stop. You got the Gardener on two story. That's going to be another. Uh, it's it's a whole other can of worms. So I do see a lot of support in the chat, guys. I see a lot of the clover leaves. I see a lot of the hearts. I see a lot of the umbrellas. And I do see Silly Billy saying thank you to the commentators. So thank you as well for joining us, Silly Billy. That's silly mm. goose, silly Billy joining us. So shout yeah, out to each and every one of you that's joining us. Yeah, and I think just a sleep for Alex to fall is Hanako. So uh, I'm just gonna, oh, yeah, okay. shout out to Hanako. <laughs> Yo, what's an easier name to say? <laughs> yeah, what well, is with that name? But anyways, thank you for being here. Horton mm. is here. Jofel is here. Raven is here. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, this matchup is gonna be BO1 second half and yes. the live commentary we brought by Chocho and Fosh Spice. Good transition. And speaking of transition, we're gonna see an acrobat transition to that fourth stop. So let's see how Zen can kind of contain Little Boy. Little Boy known as, you know, his priestess, known as his composer, but now he's gonna do a jump towards the coaster area and provide a lot of distance. Still holding on to his, uh, his uh, acrobat bombs here. Drops the pallet, forces the movement, and now Zen trying to score a hit here, but he's going to prolong it for just a bit more. Yeah, a little boy will be able to transition to a better kiting area. He's working with the 3 9, so um, no flywood will be seen here. He does have, he used another ball, a mud ball, I believe, to jump over. So uh, he's trying to rotate back to the safer area up there, but he's Ooh. unable to jump upwards. He's going to jump across and across. still able to creates such long distances against an opera singer mm -hmm. well first minute part of the game three ciphers already at 50 percent note that the mercenaries here so decoding isn't as fast so little boy's gonna have to kite a little longer for it to be a little more impressive here little boy now oh the blink was already expended didn't waste enough time so zen able to get his first survivor down so this is actually a good start for zen he's gonna try to camp uh, this chair that is close as possible to that bridge cipher. He's able, if he's able to cut off Skyfall, it's going to be huge. Yeah, this is actually a really good start for Zeno to potentially tie against GH members. But we need to remind each other that in the first half, his survivors actually Yo. got... The hijab say, moment! They, it did the same skin on the mercenary! Oh, yeah. Dude, you'd get deja vu. Oh my Dude, god. Nerekun also coming in with that deja vu rescue in the back yeah, now. Oh my god. Shout out to Olivia Rodrigo. I get deja vu all the time. A nice able to get the the uh, the, the hit, but the, the bubble did register enough in time. Little boy, though, has to be able to kite for wow. as long as he can and gets the pallet slam. 
Yeah, I mean, competing like mind game wise, you, you really it's uh -oh. very difficult to go against a G survivor. We do see little boy getting a little bit stuck there, but we'll be. At, whoop, whoop, oh, oh, oh. I just being so slam. Yeah, unfortunately, there. Um, I thought he was gonna slam the pallet when Zen was walking right through it, but he was able to down little boy. But the difference here, Chocho, is that this is the second chair, but three ciphers have already been primed. They haven't worked on their last cipher yet. And the mercenary still has the tight turner left, but he is injured. Yeah, so uh, they won't be wasting any time to heal up. It's just going to be a potential sell. There, no, on the bottom left, we do see the gardener potentially trying to go for this rescue. But yeah, being very wary, not wanting to give that tonight is to show Hunter that I am here and uh, he doesn't want to take that second kite just yet. Nerukun seems like he's going to be coming for this rescue, but will he make it in time? Oh my god, I don't think so. Yeah, it's a little too late. So now, Zeno has his first survivor out of the game. So, Nerequin has to kite for as long as he can. That last cypher is at 30%. Nice bubble usage for him to create a little more time and opportunity to push for the end game. Yeah, now Nerequin will be getting that basic hit after that bubble hit. Patient will be finished at first stop cypher. Last cypher is being worked on at 50% by, I believe, Skyfall. Yes. I think Teleport was already switched to, so 10 seconds on the board for that. And now Gardener has fallen down. Last Cypher is at 50%. Patient is making his way for that uh, save, I believe. And Skyfall actually not touching any Cyphers here. So they're playing the long game. I like this. They're very patient when it comes to pushing for that end game. And they're making sure that they have the right rotations on deck. Mm. Skyfall actually going to try to go for this rescue. Yeah, and this is going to be really important. If Zeno can actually cut Skyfall off before he gets this rescue, before the Cypher is prime as well, it's actually a huge win for him. He can potentially go for three on not four kill. But now, able to spin all the way there, but it seems like a very stable Ooh. rescue and Titanic effect is on. Yeah, so now Zen choosing to go for Nerequin, waiting for the bubble. Unfortunately, it is not there. The Cypher is not primed yet, so Nerequin has to get to a really good spot and wait for that primed Cypher. They're going to have to pop this right in time once Nerequin does fall down. Yeah, and we'll be getting that speed boost oh! from that pellet, I believe. And mm. no, he will not. He will just be standing up. And he's just going to be playing around this area. There is no 3-9. My bet is 3-6 Gardener. Mm -hmm. Nerukun will be down here, unfortunately. Jao Khan in the middle. Uh, is this Nerukun's last chair or second chair? I think this is his second chair, I believe. So now he actually has teleport mm. to work with. So this is going to be huge. 60 Can seconds left. 60% uh, left onto the decoding. Can Did they make teleport it? in time? Oh, actually, it's the second chair. So now the teleport's going to happen. Oh, the mercenary oh, no. able to move away in time. And the yeah. rescue's going to happen. Oh, quite curious. The gate opened already, but I think Skyfall predicted that he couldn't enter the gate successfully Ooh. just yet because it needs time for the gate to open. Patient oh, running back and forth from the chair and back to the gate. The gate is open. Can Zhao Khan get out of this place and get that potential win? He yeah, he just needs that. Zhao Khan just needs one to be able to score the victory for his team, yeah. and he is able to get it. But can we congratulate Zen for getting a three point game, getting a three person elimination? Again, I forgot to call that. Yeah, the remnant was placed there so he could go back and forth. So yeah, it was it was kind of an interesting scenario that um, Skyfall did pad away from the gate and didn't try to force to exit. Yeah, maybe he thought that he wasn't going to get get out in time. And the fact that he was able to pad away meant that the gate was still intact, I guess. But hey, again, GH knows when they're facing a formidable foe, they don't want to push for anything more. They get the conservative win just by getting one survivor out. And that's still good in their book. Yeah, so yeah, congratulations to GH for winning the first BO1, 6 to 3. So, uh, yeah, very close call coming from Zen O. Oh, um, he was able to capitalize on the little things that GH service kind of slipped. I believe mm -hmm. Naruku in the garden was just trying to go for the rescue, but it seems mm -hmm. like he kind of mistimed it. It seems to be a situation, yeah. and it kind of um, helped uh, Zen O to snowball better mm -hmm. when it comes to chasing the second survivor. Yeah. Actually, if you think about it also, it was um, that moment kind of created a... If, if they were able to get that rescue, it would have been uh, a, diff a whole other story. Maybe it could have been pushed for a tie. But uh, considering that they tried to prolong it as much as possible, uh, I think now it just seems like Zen is a lot more confident in his... Or at least this opera singer. They weren't able to kind of bully the, the opera singer into the, with the portals, with the stuns. And to your point, Chocho, this is what was kind of concerning. If you allow the opera singer to just worry about 
uh, just downing survivors and not worry about defense. This is kind of what happens. This is a an opera singer sided round because technically a five point game and a three point game is a win for opera singers out there. So. Uh, yeah. Congrats to Zen. I would have to say at least mitigating the point difference because now it is a 3-6, which is not so bad. So there is a potential to get that game number three if they're able to win round number two. So again, uh, it is GH to win round number one, but the battle is not over yet, folks. Yeah, so it's going to be really intense BO2 that we might potentially see here since UL actually got that map selection in BO1 and unfortunately weren't able to at least tie, actually lost the advantage that they wanted to get in their map selection. Mm -hmm. Let's just head on to our match stats first. We do have the first kiter being Little Boy, the 85 second kite. So it's really not too bad. And he manages to kind of down, actually fly out when three cyphers have already popped already. So it's yeah. um, comparing situations wise, GH survivors definitely had it better compared to UL survivors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the the strength of Opera Singer, right? And if mm. you we were talking, me and Eli were talking yesterday that this map isn't meant for Opera Singer, but the fact that you get a five point game and a three point game, uh, that just shows how crazy she is. And she got reworked, right? So even though she was changed. She's still a dominant force. So uh, if you guys are going to be in with us for the long haul when it comes to Call of the Abyss, round one opera singer is going to be very much present in the in the current meta of Koa 7. It will be the era of opera singer. Just like um, a couple years back, it was the era of the breaking wheel. A few years back, it was the era of the dream witch. So now it's uh, opera singer taking center stage for Koa 7. Yeah, so I think there's something that we can really anticipate coming of uh, going forward, and also uh, anticipating anticipating what they're gonna ban is probably gonna be the opera singer as well. It seems like GH survivors are mm -hmm. also struggling quite a bit with the opera singer. Um, yesterday they did face an opera singer, ST's Hunter, but yes. uh, they were still able to get a three escape regardless. Mm -hmm. But this time around with Zen, oh, it definitely showed that showed a new side up to Zen, oh, that he's actually yeah. still very strong and keeping up with the meta that is ever changing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. And that just, that I would say elevates the the three-man escape that GH was able to get up against the Opera Singer because they work, you have to work extra hard to get points out of the Opera Singer. And the fact that they were able to do that was an amazing performance because this, ladies and gentlemen, these match stats are usually how Opera Singer matches go. The mm. most you want to do is what GH did, which just get at least one person out and just negate the five-point game. And the real meta, the real counter pick to opera singer is ban her that's it that's the only yeah. way you could do it <laughs> yeah and i think also one thing that you've mentioned is that yeah gh survivors right even in very rather unfortunate situations like just now they were still able they were still able to concentrate on their main priorities their main goals which is like you said the one escape instead of giving them the giving the opponents the five point lead so yeah i think that's still a very good job well done gh survivors and mm -hmm. i think um GH-wise, they are able to really adjust according to how their opponents are playing when it comes mm -hmm. to different characters too. So I think this might be slightly a bit lower from compared to our expectations, but I think they mm -hmm. will come back better in BO2. Yeah, but I like this because once again, we want to find the best of the best when it comes to those qualifiers. And yes, GH is you know synonymous to taking center stage, but you got to love it when you see another team take it to push push other teams to the limit. And actually, with that, you create like this synergy. You create this scenario where steel sharpens steel, iron sharpens iron, and we want we want SEA to flourish, right? In the in the big stage. So this only makes the teams get better. And I can't wait to see how they're gonna try to continue on this uh, this win streak, hold on to it, or trying to face more adversity in game number two. The advantage Cho Cho that GH does have is they have map selection. So yes. maybe Chinatown, if we're really gonna go from the script from yesterday. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't want to spoil myself because I know they gave us the script. I don't know. They emailed you. We're at page 53 right now. So you say. Yeah, that. yeah. Actually, I went yeah. forward. It's, it's, okay. it's actually. Oh, uh, yeah. Hopefully, oh, we good. won't be seeing another end. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the Chinatown <laughs> yeah. is um, possibly like about 80% okay. that I do see like China, but I didn't finish the word there. But. Uh, oh, okay, cool. Don't spoil it. I don't want to get spoiled. So don't, don't, don't spoil it for the script. Maybe <laughs> Melpai has um, <laughs> Evo Reptilian. Oh. We didn't really see very successful Evil Reptilian yesterday, so maybe today. Can I just say that, to show us? that Evil Reptilian match you and Nell commentated was just so crazy? It was Dude. just so, so <laughs> scrambly everywhere. It was up and down. Like one moment, like the survivors are having it. Next moment, Hunter was back to survivor. Mm. 
and also I think Amori's match uh, yesterday was very intense as well. Mm. Like in one moment it looked like the server had it all, then it went to the hunter and then oh. back to the servers and okay. back to the hunter. Okay, chat. I'm gonna ask you a favor if you have time right now, waiting for this one. Pull up another tab and watch the match from yesterday. And I don't know if anybody has the timestamps. I know the real kings and queens out there put the timestamps there. Look for that match and try to stay seated because it was just so crazy. It was so intense. And then it was just going back and forth at one point. I just actually, I told Eli, I'm like, man, I wish you commentated that match because it's like, wow, we don't know what's happening. It's so crazy. But you got to love it. I love seeing those type of matches. Yeah, it's really, really intense. And it was, even though it was a 2-0 curse yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. But the matches itself were so intense yeah. back and forth mm -hmm. between UTP and Amori. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's something that I would say a highlight. You guys must watch. And mm -hmm. uh, it, it really, like you mentioned, keep you at the edge of your seat. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we get, I'm sure we're going to get some more highlights uh, coming from this matchup with GH and UL. GH yesterday, if you want to check out the match, it was just a masterclass of how you're, so, I mean... They really took it to the... It, I would say, usually, you have to work like 100% hard to be able to win a match of Survivors. It's like they had to go like 200 to go up against the, an opera singer, and they had to pull out all the tricks in the book. So you could check that out as well um, in 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 the VOD. So do follow them. And also, shout-outs to uh, Gift. She did clip one of the things I said that the fact that um, GH Survivors were able to three-man escape uh, opera singer, they could put that on their CV and they can apply to any job and they'll get it. Oh yeah, I saw that. Sorry, <laughs> I would put that on my. I put that on my gravestone. I was able to three man escape an opera singer. That's how impressive it is. It is very impressive. It, it mm -hmm. like it really challenges on a single survivor's kiting skill. And fortunately mm -hmm. enough for the side of GH survivors, individually they are all very skilled in mm -hmm. the characters that they play. So it's very rare for them to slip up. Even just now that match, it was only a sin a minor slip up coming from there. Mm -hmm. Gardener, but after that, they were still able to come back, get that one escape still. So, mm -hmm. definitely good job, well done. And we, I'm anticipating a lot more from Narukun, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. And look at that. Okay, so Ever Sleeping Town is going to be the match, uh, map GH picks. You know what? The meta I've noticed also in round one, round two, we always go big maps. But there was that match yesterday that you commentated was Arms Factory, the first match. So, yeah. kind of interesting that the the ban actually from UL is Sacred Heart Hospitals. So Ever Sleeping Town could change a couple of things. We talked about how Meow kind of goes risky with how he picks up his hunters, uh, breaking wheel. I don't know. He, he has a lot of hunters to his belt. I don't know. I kind of want to see God J come in, but if Meow Pai is going to also come on in, I welcome it. How about you, Chocho? Mm, to be honest, I'm also kind of expecting God J. Just now we saw the stats, right? It was 100% four man elimination, mm -hmm. average <laughs> eliminations 4.0. So <laughs> this is this is that perfect hunter that we really want to see, right? And Goji has a lot of fans. I think all of us do want to see him at least a couple mm -hmm. of times during the COA stages that we'll be seeing. Yeah, but what I do also want to see is UL perform their best because this could actually break the 2-0 the streak that we've been seeing. Right? If they're able to... Whoever wins this match and wins it in game number three, they definitely deserve to be in grand finals because both these teams are definitely taking each other to that limit if this pushes to that game number three. And I would have to say, uh, UL definitely bring the fight to GH with uh, with Zen uh, as opera singer because we mentioned his, his go-to hunters and he actually went with the opera singer, which we haven't seen yet. So he still has that to boast in this map once they ban the opera singer. So we just have to wait and see. And uh, I kind of missed it, but is it uh, UL's hunter coming first or is it their survivors in, in, the, sec in the first half? I believe it's Meow's, uh, Meow's coming in first. Meow is G coming in first. Yeah, mm. so GH is actually the hunter side, I believe. I have to yeah, look back at the script, but I don't want to show the script on yeah, but actually, you're, you're if turning we... the pages on the script. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm just looking back. Uh, currently, mm. Mel Pai's average kills in uh, these two days of our qualifiers actually mm -hmm. at 4.0, four eliminations Jesus. every single match. That's so, crazy. yeah, we'll see whether <laughs> UL Survivors actually breaks that streak, or if not, he's just gonna be. Hey. Mm -hmm. Holding on to that 4.0 win streak all the way to his finals if he does make it then. 
You know what? We'll have to wait and see. I, I like that you you use the emoji of umbrellas and water because hopefully you all can make it rain and just break the streak of GH and the the drought of two O's and take it to that um, that game number three. They can play it conservatively. Maybe that's the play here because um, they also have the I don't know. They have lemon line up their sleeve, so oh, that could yeah. play into factor in game number three. Because we also have to admit that the survivors of UL, they performed all right. It's just that I think when it came to the drafts, it's like they, they didn't really have any harassers. The map was huge. They only went with solo kiting. But now mm. uh, we uh, the big test is the second uh, the second draft with how well they're going to use Ever Sleeping Town to their advantage. And let's see how they're able to synergize more because Meow Pai will not give them anything for sure. So the most that they could do is actually take the fight to Meow Pai. Yeah, and I think one thing very interesting that you've mentioned also, they don't have any harassers, right? But we have to look back at GH survivors too just now. They didn't have any harassers too, but I think because their only goal was to get that one escape, one, they were a lot yeah. more focused. They know when to just sell, when to mm -hmm. when to go for that rescue. So in that aspect, I think um, this two side survivors, in terms of condition-wise, it seems like they are kind of evened out. And mm -hmm. we'll see how your survivors is going to tackle against Miao Pai's other hunter. And the thing is that Miao Pai has such a huge character pool, right? How can yeah. they pick a team com that can counter all this possible hunter picks from Miao Pai? Such that it's not easy for him at all. Oh yeah, it's definitely not. It's a... I don't know, it just seems like a puzzle that you have to kind of go with your gut and, and also go with the the what's on what's good on paper. Because I mean, you have to admit that Miao Pai, even though he he knows the meta, he kinda he can afford to throw it out the door because of how good he is. He picked he picked Anne in Chinatown, which is you don't really see that. And uh, Eli yeah. asked, like, why did you do that? Because he was actually aiming for a tie. But he went above and beyond and continue on that four four man elimination streak. So that just that's talent, I would have to say. And he he can afford to actually throw the, the meta out the door and trying to and, and like you said, he can actually use whatever hunter he thinks would be best for the situation. And I like how GH is actually using uh well, the whole drafting system to their advantage and making Meow Pai go first to be the playmaker in terms of setting the tempo for them. And it's the survivors that adjust that, all right, you know, we just need to get a safe tie. We need to get one person out or we need to uh, pull pull the pull the weight of the points. We can do that. And I think that's one of the biggest strengths of GH. And that's how they also supported God J before Meow came in. Yeah, I think, now that you mentioned, I think it's just really GH, Hunter's confidence. Mm -hmm. Not just Mel Pyre, right? Even there, at this point, in, at one point in time, there was this ever slipping Town match, and G just picked out a Poland and went, mm -hmm. the breaking wheel went. The servers had a huge advantage given to him in the first half already. Right. So, I guess in some way, GH, the Hunters do have this kind of level of confidence okay. with their own Hunter picks. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they need to be sh they need to be careful when it comes to picking certain hunts like this, right? High risk, mm -hmm. high rewards. Will it bite you in the right. back? That's mm -hmm. the question that we really don't want the answer to be unfavorable for the side of GH hunters. So we we can't really predict how GH mm -hmm. hunter is gonna pick because considering to, we've seen their BO two and threes, yeah, it's really crazy. And to add to that, I feel like the confidence also comes in knowing that your survivor team has your back. So You're I'm right. gonna. I'm gonna ask you, Chocho, because you competed before. Did you ever like kind of boost the morale of your hunter player? Like, how did you how did you get get the you know the the morale up? How did you, what did you do? What, did, what kind of inspiring speech did you tell the locker room when you were competing? Um, I think one way right, that and... is very I wouldn't say I would recommend for everybody because some of you guys can't do it. It's like to really try to make the tensions not too high. It's very common for you guys to be in the voice call nearing the competition time and everybody is just silent and not talking. Mm -hmm. When that happens, it gets gets you more and more nervous. Yeah. Try to talk, uh, laugh, and also, you know, give each no, other encouragement. You, you, te you tell a joke? Oh, you have a joke. Tell us a joke. <laughs> just kidding. You don't have to if you don't have one. <laughs> but like, how, how did you, how would you break the tension? Like back when you were competing, what would you, how would you... Say like, this oh, is gonna break my line. image if I'm gonna what? say, but I'll I will do it. Uh, actually, I just cursed a lot. Oh, yeah, like okay. just, just to kind of break the. Tensions, the... You get okay, I mean? all right, cool. Yeah, I, yeah. I can see that how that's really funny because it's very uncharacteristic of you to curse. On it, yeah, uh, so okay. I'm just, I'm trying to build up your image here, Jojo. Just go with it. So, 
we are going to head towards the next match, ladies and gentlemen. First half of round number two. Already global bands on the side of um, Team UL. It's going to be the Gardener and the Patient. Meow has already locked in his first bands, which is the Priestess and the Aeroplanist. Ooh, so two very strong support and kiting characters that we see here. Yeah, Meow Pai, it seems like GH survivors have kind of made Meow Pai fear this aeroplane is correct though. We're seeing this get bent out every single time Meow, Pai's co Meow Pai comes out. And now from the side of the survivors, they actually responded with the Sangria being bent out and the Acrobat and Mercenary being picked here. They're going hmm. all in with their Mercenary pick. Yeah, I mean, high risk, high reward, right? I feel like they need to gamble th now and think of the consequences of this gamble if game number three happens and they want to push for that. So I think it's a kind of like a really strong start and it's like, let's cross that bridge when we get to game number three. But right now we need to lock in some strong picks uh, to, to bolster our lineup. And it seems like Ooh. we're going to go for a cheerleader band, but we're going to have a psychologist pick. Yeah, psychologist for the first time since uh, the past probably or six, eight matches they've been seeing. We're finally seeing the first <laughs> psychologist coming through. Yeah. So hopefully this works out for them. And mm. me, I'm trying to think about what they're trying to play against. I don't think mm. picking a psychologist, you really want to, you're thinking that Melpa is going to go for a breaking wheel. Probably mm. a night watch, I would say, to try to prolong the Kai. The Acrobat does very well against a night watch. Right. Um, we'll see how Boyman returns with that. And now, Toy Merchant being uh, banned out, and finally, a harasser being picked. I like this. I like the, the cherry on top, which is the Antiquarian here, just to add that support, add the little stress onto the Hunter. And you know what? You could say that, um, yeah, Opera Singer is up there in terms of priority, but night watch is pretty darn good as well. Because you cannot provide enough distance uh, to really escape a night watch, you really have to, you know, drop pallets, go through windows, and just really play against his his wind abilities in this one. And Antiquarian can provide a little bit of that support with a really good kite, possibly from the acrobat and some support from the psychologist. So solid lineup throughout, but we just have to wait and, and see Chocho because we did build up Meow Pai to have different hunters, which is going to be the wax artist. Yeah, and yeah, very interesting. Where's Eli? Uh, where's Eli? This is fair. Yeah, where is Eli? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, this is very interesting. I was actually thinking what Melpai was going to pick because this huh. team comment actually kind of covered all grounds when it comes to, um, of course, uh, Melpai wouldn't be picking up picking well anymore. I mean, when it comes to end and mm. night watch, this, this character actually worked perfectly. And now Melpai returning with, I mean, responding with this Wex artist pick, I wonder how it will fare in this team comp. Looking on spawn locations, he'll be spawning at the first stop and he can potentially go for the Antiquarian. I don't see why not. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, chasing the Antiquarian kind of eliminates the potential for them to come for the harass. So yeah. we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I, I like how you built that up because once you get the harasser out of the way, you can just play your game. So that's usually when Meow Pai performs best once he is not being harassed. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to head to game number two. First half with Meow Pai on the Wax Artist. We had Yazin on the Antiquarian, Acrobat by Hatari. We got uh, Blue Name as the Mercenary and Boyman as the Psychologist. You got Chocho and Potch Spice on the mic for this next match. And we are into the match. Uh, yeah, he'll be straight, heading straight for that Antiquarian. Eliminate the potential harassing coming through. We'll see whether Antiquarian knows where the Hunter is coming from. It seems like she is in the right direction. Able to get that pellet boost as well. Does, did she bring 912 by any chance? I think that's something that we need to see. We just have to zoom in. Yeah. <laughs> see. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. I think it's... It's a 3-9. Oh, no, 3-9, yeah. So, unfortunate. We are going to see uh, Meow Pai oh. actually, sorry about that. Yeah, block out that Cypher and Yazin still doing a great job. You really want to break that line of sight away from this Wax. And I would say that the, the sticks gets a little bit nerfed because, you know, what, when the Wax Artist does get hit, you get that Wax on yourself as well. So Yazin not wasting any time, just constantly transitioning the kites here and just trying to mitigate as much Wax as possible. Yeah, I mean, he's doing an amazing job, uh, able to contain him for so long with this amount of wax. I feel like I'm kind of cursing a little bit, Ooh. but now Yasin will be stoned here, but 
he will try to kite this out. He manages to push me off high a little bit backwards, but will this help her extend this kite? That's the question. Okay, and now we see uh, you have to be very careful when you, you stun. You have to be very careful. Oh, uh, is that because the wax does build up? Gonna go for the regular hit here. I think he wanted to go for uh, just cornering her before the, the next hit does happen. But Yazin now needs to get on this tram and he does get a ticket to ride, folks. And wow. now I just missed the last train. It's 12 midnight, Chocho. Yeah, Yazin able to, because of that, able to establish so much distance from Miao Pai. And mm -hmm. I think if Into Korean can actually successfully get out of that area, maybe psychologists could come through. But it seems like Acrobat will be helping by putting on the pallet, giving Into Korean that potential oh. pallet boost. Psychologists right behind Into Korean. Yeah, they're actually kiting on top of each other. So now this um, this doesn't do well for Cypher progress. It seems like the tram is actually working on their side here. Yeah. Has to be very careful. And now, now it's going to block out the, the graveyard Cypher. We are going to see him, Boy Man, try to get the attention. And it seems like Meow Pai is going to actually go for Boy Man instead. And this is actually amazing. Psychologist has three, um, can, will need to eat three hits before she actually downs. So that's amazing. Mm -hmm. First skill not open just yet, will be open now. And able to block the psychologist, forcing that pellet stun. So now the blink will be expanded and psychologist locked inside this graveyard. I love how Meow Pai was able to block that window just because that would have prolonged the kite even longer. And Boy Man now about to get the third what? hit, but nice vault. Let's see if he's going to make a foot race towards the wall here, but then the wall is still blocked. Oh, oh, and now oh. Hatari. Oh, he's able to go through. And now can he actually block blocks? the hit? Oh, he blocked just... the wall again. Amazing teamwork coming through from mm -hmm. CL survivors over here. But now changing targets once again to the Acrobat. Acrobat trying to cut for his life here, but it's kind of in a sticky, sticky situation over oh, there. Yeah. yeah, Hatari does not have anything to work with and will be down here. And second skill is activated. So this is insane. The match has la lasted about 2 minutes, 30 seconds in. Cypher progress looking all right. But this is where the wax artist really shines. When you're able to camp and now you're kind of forced to go for the rescue. They need to heal up. They need to be very careful with their uh, their ciphers so that they can push. They can push the ciphers along accordingly. Usually wax artist is synonymous to ties, but a backdoor rescue. Able to get the acrobat off the chair. Yeah, and I think this is an like amazing backdoor rescue. Now that Mercenary got that free rescue, right? he can come for that second rescue again without right. any additional support. And looking at the equipment, Antiquarian has a bot that is decoding that as pellet cipher as well. So cipher progress is going to be extremely fast. And this bot can be used mm -hmm. if enough energy. Go to the gate and open the gate freely. Wow. So it's... Oh, oh giving a terror shot. Places. Yeah, Psychologist <laughs> popping that Cypher and actually eating that hit. And now a Psychologist will be the one on that rocket chair. And like you pointed out, Chocho, Mercenary could still go for that second save. Two Cyphers <laughs> remaining. And this is the most stressful we've seen Meow Pai because last Cypher is already at 60%. I'm not sure where it is just yet, but it's going to be... Is uh, it that shack area okay mm. so it's definitely doable here but uh this rescue needs to happen flawlessly yeah you all survivors actually showing a different side to all of us showing that they actually stand against meow pai one of the strongest hunters that we're seeing here in this qualifiers now has to be very careful here able to get that rescue but unable to body block and will just run away so very interesting decision coming in from the mercenary but he's just gonna wow. teleport away Interesting that they, he didn't, yeah, he's really trying to go for the aggressive play here, but they're already opening up another Cypher. Yazin can't last too long here, drops the pallet and now goes down. So just like that, we were actually hailing the survivors to actually try to push for the end game, but Meow Pai taking it to that next level here and prolonging that from happening with a basement chair. Yeah, and I think the only saving grace that we're seeing here is that Acrobat has actually started that six cipher already. Mm -hmm. So, uh, progress-wise, it's looking pretty good, almost at sixty percent. Mm -hmm. And distance-wise, I don't think Meow Pai can shoot from this area all the yeah. way to that cipher too. So, Plug Name, he needs to make something work here. He has one last elbow mm -hmm. pad, but he doesn't have any tight turner. Maybe the best possible situation here is for psychologists to suck mercenaries' blood so that he can go yeah. for that safer rescue possibly or i don't know if they're gonna play like the conservative play which i think they might be opting for is that mercenary is just trying to be as close to tinnitus range as possible but that's the mm. thing like time is a waste in and we do know meow pai has got his crosshair set on that last cypher he's gonna go block it once again and this is actually oh th like you said it's actually gonna happen now mercenary is all healed up and they're gonna try to go for this rescue just so that cypher could be opened up yeah, and that Cypher is locked now, 84%. Getting that drop down uh -oh. hit, he can use his hot wax. Oh no. And it could be GG's. 
It could be. Mercenary has to go for this rescue. Gets the oh hit. Gosh. Oh my god. Unable to get at the terror shock. And it's actually still locked. And just like that, Meow Pai has changed the tides of the situation. They go with for the pop. Yes, with one single play, the basement play, and things just went completely opposite from what it was going. It looked like it was going towards the survivor's uh, uh, side, but now Boyman, I think, is his potential first share? This Maybe is second? Definitely, yeah, for uh, Boyman, I think second chair. You know, Boyman's going to eat this regular oh. hit. Atari trying to make his way towards the, the basement to get that rescue. But you have to worry about a, um, a wax artist with detention here. So, again, not looking too good. He gets the rescue, still has Tide Turner, but they need to rotate accordingly. The, the job is not done yet for Meow Pai. This can still go sideways for him. He needs to be able to be very careful and try to get at least and live up to his four uh four man elimination here mm, yeah so probably will be that next target here during that end game situation we're seeing here Ooh. uh we'll be down here already unfortunately mm -hmm. hatari is making way to what's the psychologist can he make it in time that's the question oh it's gonna be clutch oh no left lower left side of the screen he was right there and unfortunately he wasn't oh. able to make it, so it seems like Meow Pai might still be holding on to his title as the four-man eliminator. But Acrobat is actually going to open up the gate. Mercenary is chaired, so Meow is actually... Can he make well, it he to shoot stop it in the time. gate from open? <gasps> can he shoot oh, it in no. time? That's the question. He manages oh. to shoot it. Detention, 30 seconds, and he still escapes. Wow, the fact that they were able, that's the moral victory. The fact that they denied the five point game was still good. I was looking at the timer, ladies and gentlemen, 99% progress. The shot was made, but unfortunately the game does not freeze. He's able to go through. They still get one person out of the game, but Chocho, talk to me, tell me your feelings. That was quite the intense matchup. It was only the basement play where Meow actually got a foothold into that match, but it was Team UL actually uh, putting the brakes onto the momentum of Meow. Yeah, so uh, many things that we can really comment on. I think, you know, when Melpai decided to teleport to the 91% 91 per 91 cipher, right? I thought that, oh, no, it might be GG's for him. But yeah. turns out it is actually a blessing in disguise. He manages yeah. to down the, the survivor, chair mm -hmm. basement, and Mercenary couldn't get that very safe rescue off, unfortunately. So, um, very unfortunate situation that we saw there. And... I was just thinking maybe if psychologists, they don't wait for psychologists to get towards the gate. They immediately give that heal for that mercenary. And if mercenary could f successfully put pressure on that basement rescue, right? Yeah. I don't think Malpai could have potentially kept throwing that wax over and over again to that right. thicket cipher, locking mm -hmm. it such that it couldn't be decoded. Yeah, that's a good point to bring up because that time stalled, I think, was able to allow Meow Pai to compose himself and come up with a game plan, right? He was basically playing defense and like a moth to a flame, he was waiting for that mercenary to come on in, but he was basically stalling out the game and he knew how precise his his aim was and just stalling out that end game pop to happen. And it was very unfortunate that the mercenary wasn't able to get that rescue, the drop down hit, the cancellation, the hot wax, and unfortunately the terror shock kind of forced them in that spot. So yeah, I think a little more tightening. They had the right game plan. I think the execution was, I, I think they were kind of in a standstill. Should we not go for it? Should we go for it? Should we fully commit to it or not? Uh, at the end of the day, I think it's just, and th that's what's so impressive about Meow that I want to bring up is this, that one small hesitation and he was able to turn the tides into a three point game. It looked like a three man escape, but the fact that he was able to uh, manage the basement chair, stuff the rescue, the teleport was on point as well. It just shows that, you know what, even though he didn't live up, live up to the four-person elimination streak, he's still really good when the plan doesn't go in his favor. Yeah, he, he did an amazing job, considering that he didn't have the most amazing start. From changing targets from the antiquarian, then to the mm. psychologist, then to the acrobat, that was a total of three changes, two minutes, 30 seconds before the first person was chat. So, um, not a very amazing start, but he ended it pretty pretty amazingly mm -hmm. yeah we have to give our flowers to him and yeah coming from a wax artist also i think that's really really <laughs> impressive yeah and usually wax artist players would kind of play defensively they just kind of stall it out but yeah i think you hit the nail on the head there chocho with the teleport which in hindsight i mean 
in hindsight was the good move but when we were calling it we we're like oh man he might be getting a little overzealous and he wants to push the action but that was the the start of the the ball rolling and the snowball turning into an avalanche for his team still i would say a flawless performance because this is still a win on the hunter side and now uh, all is up left to GH's survivors. If they can tie the game, they they get a fast pass to go to the grand finals to see who's going to be able to, you know, secure a position in Call of the Abyss 7. But Zen, with uh, with his amazing performance with the opera singer that will get banned, he can bring out his, his greatest hits, which we mentioned the Nyad, we mentioned the Dream Winch, the Geisha. So that's something to worry about. Yeah, so we'll see how that's going to be played out. But now, the pressure is on to UL's Hunter to have to get this 3 kill as well, if not better, the 4 kill. There is no uh, tie and they try to prolong this because BO1, GH already got that win already. And now in BO2, GH map selection at Ever Slipping Town. Um, I wonder what Hunter he's going to bring out. Whether it's going to be Xeno once again mm -hmm. or is it going to be Lemon Lime? Yeah, and okay, so if we do some math here, Chocho, if they get, if Zen or whoever Hunter in UL side gets 3-1, they, they still have to chase the three-point deficit, right? Mm. At the at the end of the game, because, yeah. I mean, you could still push for that game number three. So, uh, yeah, this is quite the predicament that they are in. Uh, yeah, Zen has to, or whoever it is, Zen or Lemon Line, they need to perform out of their mind because... Yes, they're, I mean, a tie is not the passing mark for him. It's actually a three-point game for them to keep things going. And and we know GH, right? They won't force anything that's not too, uh, they, they, they won't force any situations. They just, they 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 have this excellent way of flowing with wherever the game is going and whatever is it, they can favor in. So if the tie presents itself, they'll go for it. I think they what they're so good at is they try to shoot for more than a tie. And if it, if uh, plan A doesn't happen, they have the ref, they have the rest of the alphabets to fall back to. Yeah, so um, hopefully things do happen according to their favors. And I think one thing that, we, you know, we're just going to go back to that match itself again, that first half. I think these survivors, right, not just UL survivors, but also if I recall Omori survivors yesterday, they showed so much potential in the early games. But when it comes to the mid and end game, right, the execution wise is not the best. Mm. They had so much potential in the early game, but somehow, somewhat, these hunters manages to catch onto certain points that we ask people watching and also commentating, we don't really see it. So it really shows how detailed and miraculous these hunters are actually performing in these stages. Mm -hmm. And considering it's still pretty survivor sided game, right? Mm -hmm. I think um, it's amazing. I think, I think, okay, I think it's hunter sided in round one. <laughs> And then yeah, it goes okay, yeah, Survivor United. <laughs> Round two, three onwards. So here we have the win countdown uh, conditions, folks. Again, GH just needs a two-person escape and they win. But one-person escape or zero-person escapes, then the game resumes. And in an ideal world for UL, they want to get zero escapes. Uh, a passing mark for them, one escape. And uh, two and more is unacceptable for them if they want to uh, move on to the grand finals here. A lot of pressure definitely on Zen or Lemon Lime's side. So pressure is definitely on to UL's side. And um, yeah, we've been seeing this 2-0 customs yesterday. Hopefully this time round, it wouldn't be the same case for UL. So much potential from the side of the survivors. Hunter especially, Zeno showing us his opera singer just now, which I'm pretty sure will be banned out this time round. Oh yeah. Don't think GH will be giving that opportunity for him to pop off once again in Ever Slipping Town. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so if we're going to try to relive the greatest hits of, or the greatest hits of Hunters of Zen, what hunter screams four person uh, elimination or at least negates a tie are we gonna go are we gonna go big because we did mm. i mean I, I at first i thought dream witch but you made a good case that you're going up against gh who has scrimmed with one of the best dream witches out there which is god j and i'm pretty sure god j is also in the vc with them and he's gonna give his words of wisdom how to be able to counter dream witch here so uh, well, Hunter, because uh, I would say Dream Witch, but it has that huge caveat. 
I think UL now they really have to go big or go home. Mm-hmm. Right now they really have to break a leg. So I'm thinking or possibly hoping for a potential breaking wheel to be picked here. Ooh, I like that. Uh, high risk, high rewards is if they're able to snowball successfully against your survivors, mm-hmm. then there is a possibility they could get a three kill, four kill when it comes to the later game. Breaking wheel early game is not too good, but when it comes mm-hmm. to the end game. Mid, mid to end game, he's actually a lot stronger. So hopefully, um, we are on the same wavelength with the UL hunters. But if we're not, we shall see because uh, very unexpected picks coming from certain hunters, and mm-hmm. surprisingly, they can get four kill with those unconventional picks. Yeah, uh, but I like the bars. Have to break a leg. Let's go for the breaking wheel. Hopefully, they'll be breaking some ankles with the the turns that we see. We did see uh, who's the breaking wheel we saw yesterday. It was just, uh, I think it was one of the match you commentated, but it was just an excellent understanding. It was also on this map, by the way, like the, I think it was the mercenary that was just stuck in the middle there that forced the breaking wheel to change targets. So hopefully for UL side, that won't happen. But for GH's side, I wouldn't be surprised if they're really good at managing how to go up against the breaking wheel. Cho Cho yeah. checking the notes while I check out chat. Horton it- Hines is giving away some water, guys. Do stay hydrated. What's up? You got something? Yeah, I I feel like I remember there's a breaking wheel match yesterday, but I don't have it in my notes from oh, yesterday. Don't? Oh, don't. So I'm having like a little. Did it happen or did it not happen? Was it no? Because the matches I saw yesterday with Eli, it was it was in Chinatown, so it wasn't. I- I'm going crazy, probably. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Uh, if you guys know in chat, let us know as well, and we're gonna let you know that we appreciate each and every one of you. My apologies, I hit the mic stand, but. Corey is here. Steam Bun's still here. Uh, Griffin is here. TT Griffin. Uh, Cursed Pumpkin is also here. I saw Nell in chat as well. Shoutouts to Nell. Him and Eli will be taking the mic after this one. So do show them some love. And continue to show some love to the teams as well. Want to see those green hearts and those blue hearts for their respective teams. Again, green color for GH because that is their team logo with a glory leaf clover. While we put the umbrella on the Rainmakers team UL. Yeah, any, and any shout out any any words you want to say, Chojo? Yeah, um, you know we might be having a potential interview with any of these team players, right, right from oh, GH or UL who wins. Okay. So I mm-hmm. kind of do want to hear from the live chat audience, like what who do you want to see in that um, post match interview? You know what? I actually interviewed Skyfall. He's actually a pretty funny guy. Hopefully, hopefully we we'll interview Skyfall. I definitely oh, so him. personally, you would host Skyfall. Yesterday, yeah. the interview with Meow Pie was super, I would say, cute. I think a lot of people were like, oh, so cute, so cute yeah. and everything. I mean, yeah, Meow Pie is also, yeah, I would say Meow Pie is, I, I was scared because I know Meow Pie is a man of few words. So, yeah, but Meow he was Pai. actually really, he was he was actually pretty game to talk. So if we get Meow Pie again, I don't mind. That's going to be awesome. Uh, Yeah, but chat, let us know who you want us to interview, if it's going to be GH, and also let us know in UL side. But how about you, Cho Cho? If it's uh, GH, who would you want us to interview? Jiao Khan. I feel like we don't really see Jiao Khan very often because he can't come for offline stages. Right, so I think right. everybody is kind of curious to see how he possibly sounds like. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. you know, the way he talks, the way he presents himself. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, wait, I, th- I think I saw something in chat. I really need to... Uh, you Go know, fun it. fact, Cho Cho is taller than Miao Pai, sit by Nello Mello. I am not oh, dude, taller than Miao Pai. Cho Cho is taller than Miao Pai. So tall, like please. seven foot? What, what are we talking about? Yeah. Can't teach that, folks. Jojo I'm has so sure ears. that Eli was shook when he first saw me in Thailand last year. Dude, Cho Cho is taller than Eli. What are you talking about? You're capping. <laughs> no, I feel like me and Cho Cho. Well, you're taller than me, right? Or No, no, no. No way, bro. No way, no way. Same height, at least? Or what? I, I'm, I'm like 161. Well, you're you're six one. I, it depends on the time of day for me and how tall I am. Like oh, I don't time know. of day, huh? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's what I'm feeling. <laughs> like I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling five five right now, you know, or maybe some five four. It, it gets shorter, longer, whatever. Depends on my confidence. Anyway, hopefully, Zeno is very confident with this next match because it's potential do or die for him. Banning out the seer and the antiquarian, leaving open the aeroplanist and psychologist for GH to pick up. Mm. So they'll be okay with sacrificing their psycho and ever plainness when it comes to BO2. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it seems like it's a pattern for GH to actually sacrifice the ever plainness when it comes to BO2. So hopefully we'll be seeing a very impressive play coming mm-hmm. from GH survivors using that ever plainness. And now psychologists being picked too. I think 
Yeah, Psychology is a pretty versatile player unless it's yeah. against probably like a Bond Bomb, Breaking Will. These characters are not too good. But other than that, she's a she's a very versatile character when it comes to kiting and show, giving that support through that Wi-Fi heal. Now, bending out the forward. Mm -hmm. I think Narukun could definitely go for that Prospector. I think that's one thing that we really anticipate, but oh. she's gonna go patient for. They're gonna go. They're gonna be patient and pick uh, uh, the mercenary uh, first. Coach with the bars today. What is going on? Oh. She's on fire, fire on the fire in the mic. So, uh, like you said, mercenary being patient for now. I don't know if the patient will be banned, but like you said, I do want to see some, some of that prospector, that signature prospector come out. Cheerleader gets banned, so this is a very big opening for them to pick that up. Unless they want to kind of go for that defensive strategy and continue to bolster the support, the kite to go along. But Ooh. we are actually going to change oh. things up. Howdy's oh. in the chat, ladies and I'm gentlemen. Excited. Howdy. There was a cowboy yesterday, right? We were able to see from, a cowboy. From MX slash Rain. Hey, his name's Rain now. His name's Rain. Rain, right. Rain. My name is so, Rain. This is very, very unexpected. I don't think any of us possibly expected this cowboy pick coming from GH Survivors. Mm -hmm. So now MX, um, sorry, Rain. <laughs> Rain, um, I'm not sure if he's watching this, but I think this is very exciting for any one of us who have been mm -hmm. anticipating the cowboy. But since we are anticipating, we do see the potential dream wish mm -hmm. being picked here. Go against this team call. Well, like you said, Zen's got to go big or go home with this one. And he is really known for that dream, which uh, we did factor in the, the God J factor here with how GH scrims with God J and has his insights in the matchup. So they will have to put that into the put that into fruition and put that to the test here as they go up against Zen. Again, same hunter, different character, different player. And we've seen amazing moments out of Zen in IVA, IVC. Hopefully he'll be able to pull out a, a, a really big victory here to push for that game number three. So Chocho, talk to me about the spawn points. Yeah, it seems like Zen was picking that corner house, right? I think he's trying to make that that graveyard cipher locked so that it kind mm -hmm. of forces them to rotate out of that area. I could see him potentially rotating towards Narukun for that chase, um, considering he does have two followers later on when it went uh, later on. So I think it should be if he's able to corner Narukun, there is a high chance that um, Narukun may slip up and an instant down situation. Fingers crossed, because that's what Ner um, Zeno needs right now. Mm, 100%. And what you need right now, chat, is to spam your support in chat for either UL or GH, because this could be the potential last match we're going to see. Once again, Chocho and Potch Spice on the mic for the second round of the second half. Heading into the match, yep, going straight for Cowboy. Uh, aer aeroplane is always just be going the Geisha instead of rotating away already. So Narukun trying to get into a better kiting area, which is around this area, I believe. So yeah, we'll be using his first hook. And yeah, Zeno really wants to put the spawn location in front or at least cornering Narukun. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Narukun just knows what he wants to do and just getting out of that area. Yeah, he just knows that the, the transition is going to happen, not wasting any time dropping a patroller here. He does have the access to the pallet. Is he able to go for the bite? Oh, wow, able to get him. The 180 no look on that patroller. I thought he didn't know if the cowboy was going to be there. So now if he's able to get a free hit on the main body, this is going to be huge. So let's see if he's going to be able to do that. I think he wants to go for just the regular body hit and the leech remains. Yeah, so able to get that hit without removing that leech, right? That's really important now that leech will be following Narukun towards that graveyard area. Second patroller successfully bitten. Will he be able to get this hit before oh. he enters that graveyard area though? That's gonna be a bit of a headache. Yeah, he used flywheel to try and negate it, but he was still able to cancel uh he was still able to catch up. So now it's a down onto the cowboy. Again, Cyphers are looking good, and I would have to say the tempo is definitely on GH's side, but a basement uh, a basement Kevin here is going to be a little tough to rescue from, so not sure how they're going to play this one out since a tie is uh, a victory for them. 
Yeah, I, I can potentially see how they may want to sell, but it seems like Jao Khan wants to go for this rescue. He has that tight turn now. We'll mm -hmm. see how this aeroplane is goes for the rescue, or at least buy some time before this rescue happens. Okay, gets the hit Ooh. onto the cowboy. Wow, farmed a hit off to the leech. Aeroplanist oh. is actually leech, so now main body is actually just going to make sure that this uh, cowboy doesn't move so far away. Last effort is popped, a little, little presence there. Not yet at full presence, so I think Narakun's gonna hold on to this lasso until his second kite. But we still haven't seen the last Cypher just yet, but that just shows the Cypher rushing uh, that prowess of Team GH. Yeah, and also I think one thing to point out as well is that as a Dream Edge, right, you do this basement rest, basement chair, right, you want to get that double down situation, especially if it's not a mercenary that's rescuing. The fact that Jao Khan went in and came out completely, completely Unscathed, yeah. healthy is, mm -hmm. is just amazing. It just shows how strong this G servers are. And the this way is why all-star team, you want Zhao Khan as a yeah. rescuer, right? Sorry. So, yeah, Zhao Khan. <laughs> Zhao Khan, not Zhao Khan. My pick. And now we see that Skyfall also showing his rescuing prowess, able to get a pad and also eating a hit to prolong like just the attack recovery here. He, they need to body block here. They need to be able to save as much as they can since uh, Cowboy is on his elimination chair. Yeah, so yeah, I think uh, Mercenary could have not get gotten that hit and still be able to be a down the area, but I guess uh, a bit of safe play coming from Skyfall. Now, flywheel happens and Zeno, Battle of the Nerves, and Zeno wins ultimately getting that hit after that flywheel happens. Aeroplanes being a little bit... Um, yeah, he's playful persistent. Over here. Yeah, he, he, he wants to make sure that Cypher in. Has no detention yet, so he can eat this hit. He gets the hit onto the Aeroplanist, and now we only have one... Uh, we don't have any leeches on the board here. The Aeroplanist had to eat that hit just so the map pressure won't be good. So, this is what's scary. They have to worry about detention, but uh, Zen has not put any leeches on the map just yet, and it seems like he's going to focus on his Alcon here. Yeah, and that Wi-Fi here from Psychologist is able to help Aeroplanes be full health and possibly pop the Cypher a little safely, hopefully. Now, 91% on this Cypher, nobody is really coming around this area able to get that hit successfully mm. without that Terror Shock. Oh, how will he play this out? Can he pop in time? Oh, both at 99%, oh, no. Zalcon has to use the jetpack to move on away. It's too risky, but oh, no. this is where the last Cypher is at. It's at the corner house, folks. And now Zalcon has to kite for his life. <laughs> Mm, mercenary, I think he opened the chest. I'm not too sure what happened there because after he stand up, there was no item. So, Ooh, um, he popped curious. the cypher and he used the jetpack to move on away. Zhao Kahn so smart. making the so moves. Smart. Yeah, Zhao Kahn is playing this really smartly. And that's the thing about <laughs> him being my pick. <laughs> <laughs> See, you flex him. This is one of the best uh, rescuers and kiters out there. And now Airplanist gets a leech. Mercenary has already opened up the exit gate. Uh, Airplanist could actually uh, take a ticket to ride to go to the tram. And the tram will actually end up in the exit gate area. So now Zeno Ooh. has to be the one to walk towards that area. And it seems like they're going to get at least a tie game. Yeah, it seems like it's going to be a time. Mercenary figured out that, yeah, a little bit mm -hmm. too risky if I'm going to come and body block, especially with mm -hmm. that nerfed, where, like, Mercenary's blood actually depletes a lot faster right. compared to last time. So, yeah, they're going to hit, hit for that safe play, and they just mm -hmm. need a tie to win. Right, and we can call GG's here for GH. They needed to get a tie. They knew what the job entailed, and they were able to get it, and they will be moving on, folks. So congratulations go out to Team GH. You'll be seeing them in the Grand Finals to face off against either UTP or uh, Team RS to, uh, to see who's going to join Team Future in COA 7. Yeah, so amazing stuff coming from GH. Um, I, I would say Jao Khan, that play by Jao Khan at the end, a little bit um, mm -hmm. too close for comfort. Yeah. <laughs> um, the True. way the, the, the Dreamer was just focusing on Jao Khan, but Jao Khan somehow plays around that area mm -hmm. and still able to pop that cypher without any help from his teammates. So I right. think he's just he just knows what he's doing he's so clear mm. when it comes to what sh how it should be executed and i mm. think i have to give my flowers to him yeah we definitely do hopefully we'll be able to interview him and uh i think that just gives i i know that we have to go with stats but like the, if we're able to get bestie or like give mvp to moments that's definitely one of them because that was a dicey situation to be at you're one hit from falling down you're at the last cypher 
all pressure is on you and you think about rushing that cypher and then immediately using your jetpack to just fly up uh this is why the airplane is uh, gets banned like that's uh, that was an incredible play and the fact that he had the wherewithal to kite towards the tram and take a ticket to ride and still prolonged it just to make sure they did get that tie incredible performance on uh, on the survivor side of uh, team gh yeah and i think we also gotta point out the very safe rescue by jao khan mm -hmm. free rescue from the basement and also um great great call from the psychologist to actually get that wi-fi heal for jao khan mm -hmm. if not that cypher might have been that liability that they have to stay with when it comes to the later on when it comes to the end game of that match so mm -hmm. yeah they were very focused when it comes to getting the tie and um the cheers is just showing us why they are really on top of their game yeah yeah it's just that it was an incredible showing for gh yes they did have to go through adversity but that just shows that they were able to roll with the punches. I just want to give a shout out and a congratulations also to UL. I know they want to be able to, you know, make it to at least top three, but top four is still amazing. And uh, Chocho, tell us why you reacted that way. Or we're going to save it. 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 All right, cool, cool. I got a little bit excited there, but we're going to save it. Dude, you, you have to read the script. You don't have to go on ahead. <laughs> just don't just spoil yourself. You're jumping pages, man. Don't be a parts so skipper. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, but amazing stuff. I think there was a lot of like highlights that we can definitely see. Mm -hmm. But personally, I do have... You probably already know who my MVP is, but who is your MVP? Um, you know what? We have to give credit where credit's due. Nerekun did a pretty good job with the cowboy, I would have to say. He didn't kite on top of anyone. We didn't see any fancy like, oh, one tap lassos and whatnot. But he was able to transition really well and um, really provide that time. And... I think something to emphasize and that though it was a, a trend yesterday is that you had a lot of uh, survivors kind of kite on top of each other. But the fact that Nerekun like went unbothered, I'm oh, sorry, Nerekun, yeah, Nerekun was able to kite for as long as he did and not bump into anyone. Uh, that was pretty good. Uh, also, you got to give it up to UL. If we're going to go for UL, their survivor team was really, I mean, Hatari did really well. They were able to really manage the, the wax artist. I would say that wax artist match was really clutch. Uh, but the fact remains that the 2-2 was achieved by uh, the survivor side of Team GH and they will be moving on in the grand finals. Yeah, so congratulations to GH first, but they can't be too over the moon at this point in time because, you know, match three is going to be an even stronger opponent, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And yeah, with UTP and RS in the next match, it's going to be something really exciting that you guys don't want to miss. So mm -hmm. yeah, we just got to wait a little while. But while the post-match interview is, you know, getting ready. You're getting for excited. Us. I wonder why. I wonder why you're getting excited, Jojo. <laughs> just calm down. Uh, I, I do want to say I am very this, calm. <laughs> I do want to say this. Um, two schools of thoughts, right, before heading to grand finals. GH is going to have like a pass to kind of chill out and relax, which is kind of scary because you kind of want to be warmed up. While the, the winner of either UTP or RS, it's like they're not going to have a break at all. They're going to head straight to grand finals, right? So, I mean, you as a former pro player, a former competitive player, would you rather have the break or would you want to just go straight into grand finals? break of course but they do technically have a break for gh yeah you know in between that the second matchup that we have for today so mm -hmm. um, you know what's, and moving... what's interesting though in ivc the offline ivc that we've covered it's usually the ones that come from the lower bracket that actually win it that's what gh oh. did last 2022 that's what ft did in 2023 oh. so there is something to be said about you know what, running mm. with the momentum, right? But again, this is different con conditions as the qualifiers for Call of the Abyss. Maybe there's that offline factor that comes into play when you get the support of the crowd from the lower bracket going to grand finals. We don't know just yet. We'll find out uh, in when Koa does keep on going here and also when uh, we do go to IVC. But the match stats are in front of your screen, folks. Again, it's uh, Zen really tried going plus ultra with this uh, this Dream Witch, and it really showed how they were able to manage that and kind of control the entire ever seeping town to contain this Dream Witch, as you can see with the containment time. Again, impressive numbers all throughout. A tied game, but ultimately that spells victory for GH. Yeah, you, you, mean, you went through the match stats already, but I think we, I kind of want to bring up that, like, you know, we haven't really seen God J, and mm -hmm. even today itself, uh, Little Boy uh, didn't bring out the Priestess at all, even though it was not banned. Mm -hmm. So, um, fingers crossed, hopefully, we do see um, 
it later on mm-hmm. in our third match. Actually, our finals for today. So uh, that's gonna be something that I'll anticipate and we'll be keeping a w- look out for. Right. So I think then again, maybe little boy has a lot more tricks up his sleeve with his priestess. That's why he doesn't really want to show it just yet. Yeah. He showed once yesterday already. Mm-hmm. So true. I think, like you said, GH is a type of team to really have a lot of um, tricks up their sleeve. But we have to, you know, give the best deduction, which is going to go to Meow. Again, you know what? When it, mm-hmm. when it comes to the wins and consistent performance, his lowest performance as of late is a three-person uh, elimination, which again mm. is really good because you're still getting points for your team. The fact that he's able to do that with unconventional uh, hunters, like we, we saw him use the Anne in Chinatown and the Wax Artist here, which you don't really see like in uh, in round two. You usually see Nightwatch, you see other hunters, but he was still able to make that work. Just incredible performance uh, from uh, Meow and a very warranted MVP position for him uh, in this matchup. Yeah, very wanted. And n- now suddenly I feel like um, we should have a Survivor MVP, but it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Melpa actually did a very amazing. Uh, yeah. And I think some of you guys would call him like the hard carry, but I have to still say that GH Survivors is one of the most coordinated team at mm-hmm. this point in time in SEA. So I think right. you still have to give support to each and every one of them such that they do play well mm-hmm. if they do qualify for um, from this SEA qualifiers. But if you guys are fans of GH and you guys still want to watch them, the third match of the day is something that you guys want to keep a lookout for oh, yeah. around what time would it be maybe 8pm 8 8pm PM 8 PM? PM UTC plus plus 7 or 8 wherever you guys yeah. are at it really depends on the next match but we have come to the segment that you guys have been waiting for we're going to head to the interview and we have a GH player on the other line so let's get to it Chocho and there he is Zao Khan Hello. Congratulations, first of all, on an incredible victory. I'll start it off. How are you feeling now that you qualified for the grand finals for the Koa qualifiers? Uh, For sure, I'm very happy. Yeah, it definitely does show. Chocho, I know you want to ask him some questions, so go for it. (laughs) Oh, all right. So, uh, yeah, you know, you guys have been playing very consistently from both your hunter side and your survivor side. But uh, I think... um, Are you guys prepared for your finals tonight? Mm, Yes, for sure. We are prepared. Okay. Um, One thing I do want to ask you, that last situation that you're in as the aeroplanist and uh, you were already hit and you you had to pop the last cypher. Tell me what was going through your head? What were you feeling at that moment when you had to pop that cypher? Were you you nervous? Were you like, oh, I got this? Like, how did you feel? I feel that I got this because I still have like uh, my item on my survivor. So if the hunter uh, like have chance for me to go back to the cypher, it's a chance for me to do that because it's li- really uh, random things to do. It's mm, out of sudden. Okay. Yeah. So, awesome. uh, in some way, you were very confident that you could have popped the cypher by yourself, correct? Yes, I am. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that, that that's great. So, um, if I may ask, like, uh, as as Team GH, you're either gonna face uh, our uh, that, R- RS? team RS or Team UTP. Um, between the two teams, do you have any predictions, or are you expecting a, a certain outcome with that match? Um, for both of the team, I think their power uh, is the same. Their hunter, I think, is uh, quite strong. So. Mm-hmm. I couldn't tell uh, which team gonna win either RS or UTP. Okay, fair. Mm. All right, Cho Cho. So before we end mm. this, right? Do you have any message to your Knicks opponents and also your fans? Uh, message for my next opponent: just wait. Uh, <laughs> just prepare for us in the final. And yeah. the message prepare, for my fans: okay. just uh, yeah, good luck, have, have fun. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Zao Khan, congratulations once again. We can't wait to see you perform in the grand finals. And of course, good luck and have fun out there. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you very much. GH, just uh, a men of few words. Men of little words. <laughs> How do you feel? I'm, I'm good. Okay. Thank yeah. you. <laughs>
But yeah, cool, calm, and collected. As as we, uh, I would definitely love to hear the voice comms on that because I'm pretty sure we were freaking out with like, how is he gonna do it? But he still got that jetpack. So, man, was a lot calmer that. than we thought. Yeah, we're mm. very confident with his end game play. Mm. Honestly, I was a lot more nervous <laughs> when I was interviewed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I get nervous too. So there's that. We need Zhao. We need a little Zen from Zhao Khan in our lives. Like I think the GH members are just super Zen and just calm. G God J is just like he's so Zen throughout everything. And when he pops off, that means it means something, right? There's mm. that. Yeah. So uh, you know, like calm down a little bit for myself, <laughs> but because that was uh, yeah. I would say that was the closest we ever got to a game three. So I understand yeah. why we were kind of excited for that. Uh, Zhao Khan again shout outs to him for giving us amazing moments I know Meow is MVP but you gotta love how the MVP uh, the, the the survivors are also given their their kudos and their justice on these interview segments but that about does it for this first match ladies and gentlemen Chocho any last words before we cut to break uh, yeah, we do have an exciting matchup coming right after this. We'll be having Nello Mello and Eli O mm -hmm. on the mic so stay mm -hmm. tuned for that and we'll see you guys very soon again. Alright, see you guys scales broad range and strings crescendo in an instant the stars fell from the sky and the musical notes sprinkled to the ground we are going to find out Close. who wrote the rest note Here we are.
This is... Finally. opinionatedness. In the quest for the unknown, we may have a glimpse of the brave new world. The rest note is announcing the advent of the greatest masterpiece. a minor, so shall the sun. If you want it, come and get it. I once thought the same. Je 
Hello, everybody, and welcome to the second match of the second day of Southeast Asia qualifiers. I'm Eli O, joined here with Nello Mello, and we will be bringing you the commentary for RS versus Utopia, the second semifinals match of today. The winner of this, of course, will go on to play GH in the grand finals, and uh, they're going to fight to claim their spot in the Call of Abyss Global Tournament. Very exciting, though. Yeah, very excited to share the mic with you as well. And like what you said, stakes couldn't be any higher. GH has always been in the Koa stage, right, all this while uh, for the past few years. So it'll be, I mean, it's basically a lot of stress coming in for GH. Yeah. But you know what? Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later on because right now, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you in the chat, uh, thank you so much for staying until now. We are here. Um, basically, I mean, I, I still see people asking which channel are we, can we watch this on, like on social media pages. So just to clarify, it's on YouTube, on Facebook, on X, on where else is it in? Twitch? Uh, I don't know if it's Basically, on that's it, right? It used to, used to be on Twitch. I don't know if it's still used to is. be on Twitch, yeah. But we're basically, yeah. yeah, we're basically watching the YouTube chat right now. So, hey yeah. guys, Tuber Rose Kisser said hi to you, Eli, earlier on. So, oh, what's up, Tuber Rose? <laughs> Rad as well, um, Sublime, Jofel, but hey, very excited coming into this game, but I feel like to, tonight we're going to have a little bit of surprise um, for you guys. We'll probably be explaining a little bit, Eli and me, uh, yeah. regarding UTP versus Reason. Yeah. But, but before that, well, Eli, how do you feel uh, <laughs> about the outcome? I really want to <laughs> put out a, a fun question out there, like, how do you feel um, about this matchup coming into this game, UTP versus Reason after... I mean, you, you've watched Reason, right? Yesterday. Yeah, so if this were... Unfortunately, we will have, we'll have some news for you guys in a minute about this, but 
In a normal situation, I would say that UTP versus RS definitely would be a good matchup. I think on paper, UTP, of course, has the edge uh, being uh, a previous tournament competitor, right? They have a lot more experience in this competitive scene. A lot of these players have been around for a while. You can see the lineup here. We have Run, mm -hmm. uh, Shiza, um, what is this one? Xiao? Xingxie. Huh? Oh, Xiao Ji. Okay. Oh, Xiao Ji okay. is the hunter. Crimson, uh, Rain, and Maple. Uh, Rain, uh, I believe, also known as MX, right? So... Uh, mm -hmm. That will be uh, a name that's familiar to a lot of you guys. And yeah, this is a team that's that's really had um, a lot of tournament experience. Here we see Shaoji the Hunter. Uh, overall, four elimination rate is 66%, 3.33 average elimination. Mm -hmm. So definitely well above the average here. Um, the fact that this Hunter is winning most of their games, uh, of course, very impressive. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. He got a three man elimination yesterday. So uh, that's definitely a factor into his stats right here. I mean, uh, Selji is not. There's a fun fact here coming in. Selji is not the only hunter of UTP. Uh, they actually have another two more hunters, Crimson and Maple, making this the most hunter <laughs> hunter participation in a single team, right? So yep. we are talking about Crimson right now. Next, we're still trying to figure out if Crimson is actually oxygen. So if anyone, any one of you guys in the chat can let us know if Crimson is actually oxygen, because you know. Bane, Breaking Wheel, it, it screams oxygen right here, right? But yeah, yeah. But yesterday, Breaking Wheel, 4K. Oh wait, sorry, was it? I uh, it was. It was a Breaking Wheel with a I draw. I, I don't think it factors into the stats because yeah, it's doesn't... two games here. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. And but... we have uh, the Invisible Hunter. <laughs> Uh, so, um, yeah, so this is the ghost hunter, uh, yeah, okay, and they're just like that, they're gone, so, um, anyway, so moving on to the next player, we have Run, uh, I believe, most likely the team captain of this team, Run usually, uh, has been, uh, with this, uh, back with ZT, also on the Utopia team, um, we see the average team time, 68 seconds, pretty good, um, uh, unfortunately, you know, around the average, they're 53% escape rate. Overall, we see as a Dakota, 148% on average per game, um, which would be uh, pretty typical of a decoding player, such as a potential lawyer. I know I said today there was a chance I would uh, pull out the lawyer hair, but uh, <laughs> I did not. Um, so I apologize for that. We'll consider that for next week. Uh, yeah, next week, COA qualifier, uh, qualifiers, COA group stage, COA finals, <laughs> anytime. You I know. have the glass. You know what? Maybe I'll maybe I'll pull out the the lawyer glasses because I have those somewhere. If I can find them, we'll we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, from IVC twenty twenty two. So <laughs> so yep, guys. Up next in the lineup of the UTP survivors, CZ, um, a very formidable staple player of UTP, I would say. Um, used to main and still playing Antiquarian, but right here being highlighted is the batter. Uh, of course, he he's a really good kaita in general. The supports are coming in. I still remember his debut when when he was picking up Antiquarian and doing a lot of OBing for his team, which led to a lot of um, victories back in the days. Yep. Yeah. So amazing player to watch out for. Black. Um, yeah. Uh, we have the next player. Remind me of this player's name again. No, I. It's a uh, Xingjie Z. Xingjie. You know, oh, Z. Z. Xingjie. Z. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Z. We're gonna say that. Okay. Eighty-five seconds of containment time. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Above. Uh, well above average here. Uh, Forty-five percent escape rate, which means this player is probably getting first chase a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. um, 0. 0.7 on the rescues, which is actually slightly higher for a kiting player, but that also would. Um, makes sense if we see a harassment type player such as Prospector. Obviously, every time you get a stun, the survivor is rescued from the balloons. That does count towards your rescue statistics. So that is one way to add to that. Um, and that would make sense with a potential Prospector. We've also seen Antiquarian um, in previous tournaments at some point. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, that's also an option too. Yeah, plays the Seer yesterday and apparently stuns the Hunter more than when he was playing the Prospector. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, a lot of fun. If you guys missed the first day, you definitely should check it out. Um, <laughs> when he was playing a Prospector, he accidentally resetted the Hunter's attack recovery. But a lot of harassments... Uh, harassment is the name of the game for Xingjie, right? But things do happen. Uh, comes back with a Seer kiting, Redemption kite. But up next, the man of the 
hour yesterday during the interviews this guy was around if you guys know him from the video cam shows during the interview this guy rain is mx as pointed out by eli as well plays the cowboy yesterday uh, mentions that he actually made a mistake with the spawn location resulting in him spawning in a bad area and getting first chase by the lizard god uh six hua from team omori so let's hope to see him doing a little bit 1v1 in this matchup today hopefully yep you yeah. also have maple as the last player here not a lawyer 65 seconds of containment time uh 39 overall escape rate 65 seconds uh 65 blah, blah. 65% of the average decoding process <laughs> and 0.45 number of rescues. So uh, unfortunately a bit um, suboptimal on some of these statistics. So uh, I'm not really sure uh, what characters we will see here, but that is Team Utopia getting into Team RS now. We did see this team play yesterday. We have Mukyo um, as the hunter. We saw lead with the Naiad yesterday and going to AN. Mm in the second round so two interesting hunters to see in the first and second rounds usually we wouldn't see those till round three but opting to lead with those and as for the survivors we have kage fall midori sky and ayane yeah i remember yesterday there was a lot of buzz going on right um i i caught the i caught the moment when you know naya in arm factory with the back-to-back -back. <laughs> i saw your reaction with shows yeah. like back-to-back -back terror shots that's yeah. one way to turn the tides that's what it is uh yeah not something that happens every day and especially because there was one point during i think the first rescue where the mm -hmm. hunter or like the survivor could have rescued because of the bees right but they didn't let the bees push first and there was a terror shock but excellent timing from the hunter there anyways you see the here we do have 81 percent for elimination rate uh, I mean, that's that's crazy. So based off of the statistic, about every four out of five games, this hunter is winning with a four elimination. That is kind of ridiculous if you think about it. It is, actually. Like, it says a lot about the hunter yep. as well. Like, playing Nyad and getting that kind of stats is actually really crazy. Yep. But moving on to the survivors as well, Kage taking the duty of the OBR, uh, playing as a forward, um very impressive time as well like even with even with the deduction score of 87.2 like almost finishing a cypher but the containment time in itself so har the containment time coming from harassing coming from kiting itself well that's one person you have to depend on on team rs and that's kagi right there and we also have rs fall uh 1.03 number of rescues per game which means that this would almost most likely be the rescuer player uh, obviously that rescues, you know, for rescue player, you're gonna have about 0.9 or above uh, average rescues per game. 65 seconds to average containment time with 54 escape rate, about 50% on the escape rate, which does indicate a potential rescuer because rescuers, as we know, don't often get chased first. So if any survivor's making out the gate, probably the rescuer. Um, and we see overall mm. decoding of 132%. But yeah, those number, the average number of rescues being at 1.03 would indicate fall being the main rescuer. And of course, we have seen Aeroplanist actually adapt into the meta as a rescue style character. The fact that you're able to, you know, use your jetpack to fly through the air, you can make it all the way up to the chair without being injured and get the rescue is very strong currently in this meta. Yeah. I mean, definitely love a pro Aeroplanist in the game. Like, like just moments ago, we just witnessed Chao Kahn on Aeroplanist kiting the longest time and popping ciphers against the Dream Witch, right? But up next, we have Midori playing the Antiquarian and also the Mercenary. So not only an OBR, but also a Rescuer as well. So Midori right there, impressive stats as well. Finishing at least one cipher containment time. You can bet that Antiquarian is really useful, especially when you are trying to support your hunt, your teammate to kite even longer. Absolutely, we also have RS Sky with Gardner here, 84 seconds of retainment time, 53% average escape rate with 0.56 number of rescues. Uh, 84 seconds, pretty solid, well above the average here as well, so um, expect some good things from RS Sky. Uh, we did say yesterday when RS was, uh, you know, did have their match, mm -hmm. their survivors actually did play uh, quite well, especially in that second round, they created a position in which against a bloody queen they're able to get a win against a bloody queen which is not easy considering how consistent of a tie hunter bq is where the bq had no option in the end game who to chase it was either airplanist which can kite bq mercenary who had elbow pads or the embalmer which could use the coffin to get to dungeon um they had a really good uh combination there and last over we have ayane as well 
63 seconds of average containment time, which is uh, slightly lower than average, but not too bad um, overall. So, yeah, I mean, I still remember you playing lawyer, and I remember one quote actually. Some a fan actually clipped you uh, and Chocho while you were together commentating. They clipped that. The reason why you choose lawyer mind's eye is because you want to take the first kite. So yeah, I feel like. <laughs> so I mean, I don't know. Is, is it because uh, you know the character is just that strong or just that attractive? For the well, to chase. Lawyer is really good because people will chase lawyer just because it's a decoder, right? And lawyer also can mm -hmm. be a good kiter as well because every time you vault a window or a pallet, you get an extra speed boost that it'll build up and add to your vaulting speed percentage. Uh, also, every time you run a certain amount of distance, you run faster over time. Uh, you have no terror shocks, which means you can rescue, you can vault things safely. Um, you can get a veteran speed bonus when you get hit. Uh, you decode faster uh, after you finish a uh, full cipher machine. So many things about lawyer that's very strong as for mind's eye mind's eye is absolutely atrocious however <laughs> uh if you play mind's eye 95 percent of the time the hunter's going to chase you first so if you're worried that your randoms may not kite particularly well it's like mm, okay i'm just gonna play mind's eye and hope that the hunter chases me and uh maybe that's gonna be good enough for uh for us to do well in the match yeah and what happens in most of the matches when you play mind's eye um the well, hunter actually come for you they they do usually yeah uh, now to be fair when i play mind's eye I usually Try to play mines on a map like sacred heart hospital or leo's memory so i can spawn in the factory or the hospital and then that way i can actually kite really well because i have the really strong kiting areas to work with uh but if i were to play mines on something like arms factory or red church i i don't think that would go too well unfortunately yeah i mean i i like the idea that you're taking the initiative like hey i'm playing solo game i i want to take the burden off my random teammates yeah but do you ever face a situation where you're already the mind's eye or, or the lawyer, you're kiting, and then the teammate, they, they decided that, oh, well, mind's eye, doing, mind's, mind's eye is doing really good. So I guess the hunter must be really bad. So And then they decided to ditch the ciphers and come to give yeah. some sort of unwanted help. Yeah, <laughs> I, so I, I literally have the, um, I have the focus on decoding button and like the get away from me button like near the top of my pings so anytime okay. i just have it ready now for solo queue so every time someone comes up i just start spamming it but then they don't listen the most frustrating <laughs> thing about solo queue is that no one listens nobody listens ever ever like if someone dies really really fast and maybe it's like a bon bon or something it's like okay we're just not gonna rescue so we can tie it's like don't rescue exactly. focus on decoding something like that right and yeah. Nobody listens. Nobody listens. <laughs> Everyone just goes for the rescue. I'm decoding and I see two people go for the rescue after an instant death against a bon bon and I'm just like... Right. What? That's the way to go. I, <laughs> That's I don't the understand way what happened. What is... What? Do we not know what... Yeah. The, I don't know. They... I mean, they probably figured out how to kite the bon bon and they think <laughs> from, they from think a YouTube can... video guide somewhere. You know, you know <laughs> what it is? Is I think that um, to a lot of the teammates that I get, don't rescue me. Don't rescue me. Translates into let's just all go rescue and nobody to code. That, that's that's what mm -hmm. that's what it. Yeah, I don't know why that happens. But <laughs> anyways, we have our map selection here. Uh, this is going to be UTP's map selection. Now we do have uh, some unfortunate news to bring you guys for this match. Exactly. Um, and unfortunately, RS due to some unforeseen circumstances, the survivors are actually unable to play currently, mm -hmm. which means that uh, it's actually going to be a five to zero. Uh, for the Utopia Hunter side, which means that Utopia gets to start out here uh, already five to zero lead. Um, and I believe it will continue through the rounds as long as the survivors are unavailable. So um, at least for now, five zero Utopia is leading and the survivors will be coming out to play on Chinatown here. And they're just gonna go ahead and aim for, you know, at least one survivor escape here to, to win this round. Yeah, I mean, that's a very unfortunate news due to emergency, yep. survivors couldn't make it. And I wonder how it will feel like for <laughs> For I mean Muhyo, right? From Team Reason, because you you know that you're already down by five points before you even play. So let's hope that this doesn't affect um how Muhyo plays because I mean you if if you play long enough you might you might end up all the way up to BO3 and then your teammates might come back and then you know you might be able to do something about it. But yep. Eli, knowing UTP, how likely do you think 
is it for Muyo to perform a 4K onto UTP survivors in well, Chinatown? I yeah, I will say that uh, because of this hunter statistics, they do have a high four kill percentage, but um, obviously the Utopia survivors, I imagine, are, are pretty well prepared for this. I don't think they're going to fall that easily, especially because they're not really worried about Opera Singer or Dream Witch, any of these four kill hunters. Uh, they don't seem to be available to, um, you know, this hunter for RS because they played Nyad and Anne, right? None of those are four kill hunters necessarily, right? So it's likely that Utopia is not really phased by this. I think they'll be perfectly fine playing <laughs> um, into this uh, into this match here. Um, just to address something in the chat, Lawyer is not trying hard to be S tier. Lawyer is S tier. I'm just going to point that out. Lawyer is actually S tier. And I'm not saying this from a biased opinion. Uh, Lawyer is actually a very, very strong character currently. I believe Lawyer is S tier. Mind's Eye is not. Just so everybody knows, Mind's Eye is the worst character in the game. Like, there, there's actually no character worse than Mind's Eye. I'm just going to let everybody know. This is this is an analytical thing, okay? <laughs> so anybody who's who likes to play rank and is like, oh, okay, what character do I play? Don't play Little Girl. Don't play Mind's okay. Eye. Don't play Doctor. Those are the three worst characters to play in rank. <laughs> Uh, I'm just saying. I, I I explained it yesterday, but just so we're, just so everybody gets an understanding, you know, for the future. If you guys want to do well in rank, I would highly recommend not playing those characters if you want to be successful. Just All right. Okay. There. So there you have it, guys. Top three picks on what not to play in rank. Play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then one might argue. Okay. Um, what about? playing the forward like okay um i'll play forward i'll play walling i'll play batter um but the thing is guys i'm just testing this out in rank <laughs> what do you think about those characters uh, i i so <laughs> my one of my least favorite lines is don't judge me i'm trying i'm just this is the first time playing this character <laughs> okay I, I for some reason that always triggers me guys listen okay if, if you want to learn a new character or test out a new character go to quick match Please don't do it in rank. That is rank. We play rank because we want to win. We play quick match so we can learn new characters and have fun, right? Um, rank obviously ranks also about having fun, playing with your friends, stuff like that. But if it means that you're playing a character you don't know how to play, and you're playing with random teammates, and you might be bringing the other teammates down because of that, maybe it's not a good idea, right? So uh, if you want to, if you want to learn new characters, 100% try it in customs, try it in quick match. Rank is not the place to bring it. I, for me personally, uh, no, I would never play a character that I'm new to unless I practiced mm -hmm. it already and, and understood how it works, right? Nice, so, nice. Yeah. Words of wisdom there. Never try it in the real thing when, when it's your first time. Do it in quick match yeah. first. Yeah, so practice it in quick match. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, by Eli O. But right now, we're heading into the band picks phase. Yep. Chinatown. So Muyo, he's already taken out the Priestess, Antiquarian. He, well, that's already very two strong bands to start with. But seems like UTP is going to pick up. Well, that's the silhouette of the Gardener and the Acrobat. Maybe they're anticipating an Opera Singer. I mean, Gardener is not exactly good against Nyad, or is it? Um. Yeah, I don't. I think it's not great. I mean, Gardener is just kind of. I mean, obviously you can take the first hit if you force a basic mm -hmm. hit. That could be pretty good. Um, I guess maybe they're just going with this strategy just in case they're worried about, okay, maybe this hunter might try to actually play Opera Singer or something like that. Because considering the circumstances, this hunter has to get a four kill, right? Because it is already mm -hmm. going to be a 5-0 um, based off of uh, what we've been told for this situation. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I, Nyad, obviously, they were able to do it yesterday, but that was due to the fact two Terra Shocks and unfortunately, while that was very nice to see on the Hunter side, that is pretty luck-based, right? When you're able to get a Terra Shock on the chair. Um, so mm -hmm. the chances of that happening again, that repeating in this match, pretty unlikely, especially against a strong survivor team like UTP. So I would imagine um, the game plan is the survivors here, not really worried about a Naya. They're gonna focus a little bit more on Opera Singer. Characters such as Acrobat, characters such as Gardener uh, will help mm -hmm. them uh, be prepared for that Hunter. Yeah. I mean, with this lineup, it's really looking like it's going to be a pretty hard game. Um, for Muyo, like there's already a harasser coming in, and Mikey, uh, it's so hard to chase an acrobat, right? I, yeah, this is this is already looking really hard because, ladies and gentlemen, again a reminder: all UTP needs to do is just get one person out of the exit gate, and that's it. But hey, Galatia, Galatia seems to be in the mind of Muyo right now, and she, Muyo seems to think that this is the 4K hunter that 
might be able to make it happen. What do you think about this, Eli? Poker is interesting, right? So we don't, if for those of you obviously who play rank a lot or, or watch tournaments, we don't really see a sculptor a lot in rank. We don't see it a lot in tournaments, right? So it's very interesting to see sculptor come out here. Now, I will say this, I don't think Sculptor is very strong and not very consistent as well, but Sculptor does have win potential, right? When in a situation where you have to get a four kill, it would make sense to go with like a, a do or die hunter like Sculptor. Uh, I think Sculptor obviously used to be a lot more consistent in the past, but nowadays Sculptor mm -hmm. is more of a, it's a, it's a high risk, high reward hunter, right? And this obviously, in a situation where you have to four kill, it makes sense, right? It makes sense to, to pull out a hunter like this. Looking at this team composition, obviously you have some pretty good targets. Sculptor actually is fine chasing Prospector, uh, and mm -hmm. is also fine chasing Gardener as well. So um, I think Sculptor is not a bad pick at all here. It's just uh, Sculptor unfortunately is very inconsistent currently. Yeah, and when you want to play in this kind of situation, consistency is what you kind of need. Um, but uh, hey, who knows? Maybe this is the Hunter that he needs to get that 4k maybe muyo thinks that this is the hunter that will allow him to get 4k because one mistake by the survivors of utp i mean they're probably having it laid back a little maybe if they ease up a single mistake if muyo is able to capitalize maybe that's the opening but there you have it ladies and gentlemen round one first half of today's match number two bringing you the commentaries is me nello and eli oh All right, here we go. Looks like uh, already an immediate rocket share break from the gardener here. It's gonna go ahead and rotate towards hotel. We have the sculptor is gonna head over towards the tunnel area looking for that prospector. Prospector's already rotated through middle here. Um, we looks like we might have a target change. Really nice setup from UTP. So essentially what they did here is they had the prospector mm -hmm. rotate through the mercenary and then the mercenary take the be the distraction, right? Leave the trail for the mm -hmm. hunter to go after. And obviously, Mercenary getting first chase is the most ideal situation for survivors. But Prospector huh? runs back huh? into the uh, the hunter. Uh, this is not at all what uh, they would have liked to see here, unfortunately. And also, Prospector is going to run through the acrobat as well. Um, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, UTP a couple of missteps here. Yeah, Xinjie is not playing like Xinjie, unfortunately. Uh, like that first chip wasn't supposed to happen. Run running into your teammates ciphers well at least Xinjie is able to rotate far enough Muhyo, oh wait Eli Muhyo. oh uh, my god what just happened well that's gonna be pretty impactful uh yeah so Sculptor I think he does see the trail here but a lot of distance is gained in the no. process and he doesn't get the statue. He's gonna blink through this pallet. No, he's gonna just walk around here. Um, keep in mind, Prospector still has flywheel, so um, this could potentially last a little bit longer. Two cybers will already pop, but Mercenary Cypher a little bit slower here. Gonna go for the stun. Just trying to delay the delay the blink as long as possible. That's really the strategy here, um, because the blink is of course inevitable. Can he flywheel the blink here potentially? He's gonna go for a statue. Oh, he gets the statue down. Doesn't actually need to use it. Which is nice for the hunter side, but two ciphers already down. Mercenary at 50 here, so already yeah. the survivor is uh, very, very well positioned to, you know, not get four killed. Yeah, I mean, not too bad. It's a two and a half ciphers huh? kite. Gardener is right. Gonna... Gardener is gonna take that cheap damage. Yeah. Very uncharacteristic, right? You definitely like... don't want to stand still. <laughs> yeah, against the <laughs> against the soldier ship. Oh, free rescue! Oh, okay. oh my god! Yeah, free rescue run can definitely come back again, but. Very uncharacteristic, I say, because one, you don't usually see UTP survivors um, getting damage from a, from a no presence sculptor, right? Like, yeah. Hmm, it's, yeah, especially when you have a magnet to help you propel even more. But no! Yeah, he's just waiting for the time for last effort to go down. He's pretty much gonna be sitting in the same chair again, Eli, but Cyphers are moving pretty healthily, right? Almost yeah, cyber progress. Cyber progress is good here. Uh, there's also no full detention. Uh, sorry, full presence just yet. So um, that means the sculptor's, you know, chipping ability here is not good. Oh, this the, the acrobat just takes the chip again. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on oh. here. Um, whenever the sculptor uses that chisel, especially with not full presence, you really just want to move around in the open. You can't really do anything if you stand in the open. But so I was playing a little extra greedy here, trying to finish those cipher machines. Now they do have enough progress to potentially win here, but there will have to be some sort of rebound kite. And the sculptor is holding Blink. Oh, they have this ready. Oh. Goes for the swing. 
Oh, the scope, the rockets. For sure, but they get the rescue wow. on custom time, but he hits through the mercenary and Prospector never used the flywheel. So uh, that's unfortunate. Prospector's gonna go down here. Mercenary at uh, a chip away. We have full presence available. Still trade swap available. And you know, it's interesting now that first kite looked pretty good. He's gonna disrupt the healing as well. That first kite looked pretty good, but uh, already it's UTP's having a bit of a difficult time here. Actually gonna ignore the mercenary it looks like. Maybe worried about the last cypher machine. Yeah, I mean, they're playing yeah. pretty... Uh, I, I'm not really sure what I'm saying. Maybe a little bit oh. laid back, right? Playing a little bit laid back. They have to be very careful because all they need is just one person escape. But at this point, even though it's one cypher remaining at 50%, giving... When you give chance to Hunter, I feel like you shouldn't give those free chips, free hits to them. Like, now look, Run's gonna go down pretty soon. Uh, Caesar is left with half health. Do they really want to make this? I think it's a, <laughs> a draw. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's likely to be a four kill at this point. And see, imagine yeah. if those survivors didn't take the chip hits earlier on, right? Yeah. So, for example, if you look at the the gardener, right? Gardener would have needed to take two full chips before going down there, right? But because Gardner oh took a chip early God. on, then he was one chip away. We're gonna see the full person statues down. The acrobat as well, and that is looking like a four kill here with a sculptor we haven't seen sculptor being utilized for a long period of time mercenary's gonna get up but i don't know if this is gonna matter at this point yeah rain's on the chair um acrobat if muyo chairs acrobat well wait i don't think he's gonna chair right he's just gonna mm. you think he's gonna chair i mean no that's always the dungeon option right yeah i think he's just gonna stand over the merce or over the acrobat look for this mercenary yeah, uh, and he's just waiting for his trade as well. He doesn't want them to self heal. If he if he waits for his trade, he can go for this new survivor here, then teleport on the survivor that uses their self heal, right? So for example, if Acrobat uses his self heal, goes to this, like right now, he's gonna go to the cipher machine to code. Okay. Okay. You can now down this mercenary, then teleport to that cipher, right? But if teleport was still on cooldown, oh. you wouldn't be able to do that, and maybe Acrobat could pop. So that's what he's waiting for, I think. Yeah, Run does not have exit path anymore, so she has to be yep. really careful. Uh, has nothing to work with anymore. No more pads. Uh, CZ, uh, trying to complete that 50% cypher, but will Run be able to last that long? Run is still making that run, Eli, oh, with no, no pads and just a sliver of health. Ah, uh, yeah, down this mercenary. mercenary essentially needs to live until this... Oh, he's gonna TP, oh? actually, which is also okay. fine. Keep in mind, Acrobat doesn't have self-heal, so if you down this Acrobat, then all you have to do is go look for that mercenary. Um, you know, so it's just a matter of time at this point. It's like, what is he Acrobat okay. gonna use that bomb here? It's gonna be able to avoid this statue, but... Uh, Acrobat essentially needs to kite until Mercenary pops a 20% Cypher, so, uh, that's gonna be quite difficult, and we're gonna see... Oh, yeah, we'll avoid that statue. Avoids the swing as well, pretty good here, but he's only down to one bomb remaining, I think, at this point, so, unfortunately, not long for this world, I think. Uh, never mind. Oh my Swinging god! At the, the... UTP's making this work! If CZ is able to cut a bit longer, Muyo has no trade to work with. He cannot teleport to that cypher. But CZ, wow! And he actually gets another red bomb too. So he can use this wow. red bomb to, avoid, to prevent the statues from activating here. Then he can use the red bomb again. Uh, um, and the sculptor misses the, uh, the chisel. So he might actually be able to kite and somehow until that cypher is ready. Uh, he needs to use his last bomb here on this statue. Here's the statue. Now he needs the bomb right now. He joins the bomb. Uses the stat. Uses the bomb. To avoid Beautiful. the statue, and he actually, it's, I, 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 uh, I gotta correct myself there. He still has another red bomb to work with as well. Cypher oh machine, ninety percent. He's actually he's making this work. What's he's gonna get the entire cypher till prime. Oh they my pop, god! They can, they can just pop. I think right here. Uh, 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 just take the vault uh, and pop. Just take the vault and pop. Just take the vault and pop. Yep, there you go. Nice, nice. But he still had, he, he got injured by one chip, right? So. Yep. But that's already a very good sign, right? As long as he gets the acrobat down, he can instantly teleport to the gate. So yeah. Muyo is still in this game. He, if he gets CZ down here... Oh, oh he bolts into the hunter! Okay, uh, Mercenary <laughs> needs to get off the exit gate here. Oh, and that's going to be a four kill. Mercenary, unfortunately, took way too long to get off the gate there. I think uh, as the acrobat should communicate as soon as the they're going to go down, they're going to say, you know, I'm going to die within the next five seconds. Oh he needs to get God. off the gate, use that time to get away, maybe search a chest, but uh, unfortunately, uh, a little bit of miscommunication. I mean, a really good first kite from the, uh, the, the was it the Prospector, Prospector, right? But then I don't know what Oops. happened. Just a free chip here, a free chip there. 
no Flaglo on the second rescue. And I, I uh, felt like I felt like the acrobat kited way longer though. <laughs> the acrobat kited really, really long. We'll have to look at the match stats later on. But yeah, it's just very unfortunate. Um, the early first chips. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, the highlight of the entire game. Um, <laughs> is he like combing his head? <laughs> <laughs> I tried to sneak but, that one through, but I don't think it worked. <laughs> I think Most everyone knows this. Yeah. yeah. But seriously, though, I, I feel like the the early chip damages was very uncharacteristic of um, Xinjie. Because yeah. he's, his kiting is actually really solid. So I'm not really sure if it's uh, something going on. Not used to kiting uh, Galatea. But um, it definitely didn't help that he went down two and a half side first. Which is yeah. still pretty respectable. But everyone else, you notice, Eli, everyone else was getting the chip damage left and right. <laughs> the Gardener. Yeah, I think the problem is, uh, well, okay, so one, Sculptor can use the Chisel to slow down Cyber Progress when she doesn't have full presence, but you never want to give a chip to a Sculptor when she doesn't have full presence, right? Because the statues at that point are so easy to dodge. You really have so much reaction time. You just run in the open. There's not much a sculptor can do if you just stand in the open, right? Um, but uh, I think what happened is the gardener stood still, tried to get a bubble while being chiseled. I, I'm not really sure the mindset there because obviously you don't really need a bubble to avoid the chisel. And if you stand still, then you're gonna get chipped, right? So you never really wanna let that happen. Acrobat just continued to decode when the chisel was there and took a chip that way. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, UTP just um, maybe getting a little mm. a little too comfortable. I'm not really sure, but um, unfortunately, uh, it works it's hard, It works out really well for the RS Hunter here. Yeah, exactly. Muyo has to be really happy because that's the best start that you could give to UTP. And UTP being a finalist, I mean, most of the members have been to the Grand Stage. They've been to IVC. They've been to the Grand Stage of Koa. RS coming in with a five points deficit and getting that 4K, I, I feel like, yeah, you're probably right. Um, probably the engines are not warmed up yet for the UTP survivors, but well, considering we are not going to be seeing RS survivors, well, it's round two. And hopefully, um, Muyo from Reason will be able to have this continued success. Whereas UTP, for the side of UTP, they, they gotta stop giving chance, <laughs> I feel. Yeah. <laughs> Stop getting a chance, bro! And what's gonna happen here is I believe it still will be another 5-0 in the second round, right? So UTP yeah. again is just uh, in another situation where you just gotta get one survivor at the exit gate here. <clears throat> um, but, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you know, we saw uh, Muyo's 4 kill percentage. 4 mm -hmm. out of 5 games, approximately, is very, very, very good. And, you know, it really comes into fruition here. We saw it in the first mm -hmm. match yesterday. Mm -hmm. So let's see if uh, this hunter can keep it up. Now, something to keep in mind is for someone who has a high four kill percentage, they play very non four kill hunters, right? Like we see Sculptor, yeah. which has win potential, but it's like, okay, but it's Sculptor, right? And then we see mm -hmm. Nyad, which is like, okay, it's a tie hunter. And then we have Anne, it's like, okay, it's a tie hunter, right? Um, so I guess in the second round, we'll probably see Nyad again because it has the most four kill potential. But then after that, what are you gonna do? Play Anne? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That doesn't seem like you're unlikely to get a four kill with Anne, but I guess it is possible. It is possible. Um, I mean, it's probably them getting ca caught off guard, but ultimately, I, I just feel like, yeah, it's just a case of, you know, um, staying aware, staying alert, you know, not, not giving any chances. And I, I feel like giving the best is also a sign of um, a sign of respect to the game, despite the circumstances that they're I in. I agree. Yeah. Right. So, Absolutely. like, hey, you you know your opponent's down. Come on, just go all out. Give it a good go, a good game. Give it a good game. Make it a good game. Don't don't give us the <laughs> don't don't give us the chip damage single no presence thing. Like even even Eli knows. You know, right? Like, uh, you pointed out that. Yo, um, not even full presence. And mind you, CZ kited the full presence sculptor. Ran kited yep. the full presence sculptor. So, yep. uh, yeah, I feel like the whole team needs to come together because you're facing the champions uh, from Thailand, GH, next. So you definitely don't want to let up right here at this point. Yeah, if you make mistakes like that, uh, that's unfortunately not going to work out very well in the next mm -hmm. round. Um... 
So, I mean, uh, looking, yeah, looking into this next situation here, uh, again, I really think they just gotta, you know, it's, it's obviously it's good to have fun and, and enjoy yourself, but um, obviously you also need to uh, kind of turn things into gear here. This is Koa qualifiers, right? You mm -hmm. want to get to the main stage, you want to get to the global stage. They gotta figure out those um, those mistakes, right? And you know, if you wanna you wanna get to Koa, you gotta you gotta win this tournament. Exactly, you gotta. But then again, we we can make a case that well, getting caught off guard is one thing, but Muyo is a really talented hunter too. Yep. Like, Absolutely. yo, making making the four K with a non meta. It's so sad to say this about Galatia, right? Because Galatia used to be meta, and now you're saying Galatia is not meta. But uh, but then again, four K results are everything here, and he got the four K. So guys, we are gonna have a Bo three apparently. And uh, hopefully not till overtime, because that would be really tiring for whoever's going to face go up next for the grand finals. Like. Yeah, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, especially considering um, it's going to be assuming that you that um, RS Hunter manages to four kill every round, which is going to be five zero or five five mm -hmm. five 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 five. I know what you're trying to do there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how, how do you say five in? Hi again. So, uh, ha 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 ha. Yeah. Ha. Ha. That's why you see the five, cause yeah. it's ha, right? In Thai. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Okay. Um. Well, I I just have to say a lot of people in the chat are also asking, wait, who who's this talented hunter? Yeah, very deserving gala play. That was an amazing gala. Shout outs to you, Corey. Can't wait for the finals later. Yeah, we'll hope to see you soon later as well, Corey. Horton Hines as well. And I see we have a few Japanese names as well in the chat. Do you speak any Japanese? <laughs> oh, no. No. I don't know. Oh, how about hello? Can you say hello in Japanese? Um, well, it's situational, but... It's, it it's uh, not super K. Well, it's Konnichiwa is the normal. Konnichiwa, it's like, That's yeah. like the normal way, but there's also like so many different situations and grammar right. that depends on i don't understand the... or, you, or you could just say hello <laughs> hello yeah what's up bro exactly. what's up bro what's up, brother exactly yeah. those of you in the chat again uh just to remind you guys of the stakes of what's happening here the reason why we are not seeing team reason survivors because they're caught up in an emergency uh so it's gonna be Muyo carrying the backs of Team Reason um, throughout the entire game one so far, game two, and hopefully, um, I'm not sure if the survivors are gonna come back though. Like, but yeah, we're assuming that he's gonna be carrying throughout the game. But here yep. comes the band picks for the maps, Eli. Looks like uh, it's gonna be Arms Factory. So uh, UTV is gonna ban Sacred. Sacred, uh, pretty standard ban for a lot of teams. I mean, who wants to play Hunter on Sacred? I don't know. Um, actually, that's mm. interesting because UTP is the only one playing Survivor, so I guess they would want Sacred, in theory. Right. 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 But I guess they're just banning what would they would normally ban so they could get the uh, the extra practice and a more tournament situational thing. I guess. Right. Should I think that makes the most sense. Now though. Yeah, it used to be like oh, their man. that's their go-to map, right? Chinatown, Heart, uh, Sacred Heart Hospital. That's their favorite map, a survivor. Yeah. And what more to say? You're you're a survivor. You you want to have the best chance for survivor team, right? Because you obviously know that your hunter is already guaranteed. Utopia is already guaranteed a five zero through the hunter victory by default. Yeah. yeah. But to be fair, I don't think Aris was going to pick Sacred anyway. But uh, yeah. Because, I mean, RS is the one picking the map. If mm -hmm. RS Hunter is the only one playing in this round, I don't think they'd be like, mm, yeah, let me just pick Sacred to play Hunter. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever so heard anyone say that before. So, <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah I, I, we need that extra practice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But, hey, um, much love going on to the chat as well. Uh, yeah, I, I would totally agree. In this map, no Hunter would want to pose a unnecessary challenge by picking a survivor sided map aka the sacred heart hospital here so arms factory you think we're gonna see another naiad here like that's the map for uh, naiad right 
Yeah, I think so. Uh, we saw Sculptor in the last yeah. last round, so uh, I think they'll probably just ban Sculptor. I mean, obviously you have Anne okay. and Nyad available, but mm-hmm. I think that it makes sense for um, for the Nyad because we saw Nyad get a four call in Arms Factory yesterday. Nyad is also um, a obviously Anne is also very good on Arms Factory, but considering that again, it's got to be a four kill. Nyad uh, would make the most sense. Nyad, yeah. Let's see. Maybe he's counting on the, you know, the miracle of the double terror shocks again. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, yeah. 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 But well, that, we, but... we gotta see. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, it's kind of funny when we say like, yo, UTP, you just got, you, you just need one man escape to make that uh, victory, and somehow they just, yeah, you know what? We're not even gonna, we we we're not gonna meet up to your expectation. We we're not gonna get one escape. We're just gonna, you know. <laughs> all go down so i do not want to jinx this game but good luck have fun it seems to be the motto of every team in this tournament good luck have fun like they're literally having fun (laughs) at the expense of you know risking a loss so (laughs) i don't know what to say about that no eli what do you think like um yeah i mean i think it's so at least at this point um in terms of like the situation I feel like um, it's, I'm not really sure how this, cause we're not actually sure if the uh, RS survivors will come back and play. I think potentially not right from what we've been told, at least from what we know, mm. it's a, it's apparently gonna be a five zero every round, uh, yeah. which means that I don't actually know how that would work in overtime, but uh, yeah. I think- Kind of demoralizing. Mm. Yeah, it's a bit unfortunate, it is, it but. Is. At the end of the day, uh, yeah, I mean, at this point, the goal for Utopia is, uh, you know, you gotta get Survivor out the uh, out the gate. And because it is Arms Factory, this is advantageous for the Hunter. Smaller maps are typically easier to get four kills on because they're it's easier to press your Cyphers, right? Cyphers are closer together, the Exit Gates are closer together. The Hunter has more opportunities to win because you can pressure the Cypher Machines and you have better map control on a smaller map. I mean, would you... Um, I'm, am I stuck? Yeah, would you agree that Anne is a 4k hunter in this situation? Like, let's say he doesn't go Nyad. I mean, Nyad, I, I always thought that he was like a sort of like a draw hunter, sort of like yeah. the disciple as well. So, yeah. I mean, if well, you don't play both these hunters, what else can you play? Well, I would uh, play Dream Witch, but Dream I Witch. don't know if uh, this hunter plays Dream Witch is the thing. Um, mm. so assuming that my Dream Witch isn't banned here, I would 100% play Dream Witch if I need to go for a four kill, especially on Arms Factory. They're actually going to ban Nyad, mm. which means they're going to opt for the allowing the Sculptor to play again. I don't think this Hunter's going to pick Anne just because, like, even though it's a great map for Anne, kind of just like, okay, well, Anne four kill is extremely unlikely, right? Because Anne is not a high win potential Hunter. It's like Bloody Queen, right? You have good chase, you have mm-hmm. good camp. But you don't have good map pressure. Whereas Bloody Queen has good map pressure and good chase, but doesn't have good camp. So Bloody Queen and Anne have two strong because the three things that make up a hunter are camp, chase, map pressure, right? Or slash cyber mm-hmm. control. So Anne has two of those, BQ has two of those, and they also have very good chase. So that makes them very good tie hunters. But Anne does not have the cyber control to play for a win a lot of the time. So that's usually why she's a tie hunter. Um so I think mm-hmm. uh, we'll probably see Sculptor just because. Sculptor, while well, maybe high risk, high reward, Sculptor does technically have pretty decent chasing abilities if you're able to hit those statues, good camping abilities, especially at full presence, and good map pressure with the chisel, right? So Sculptor does have mm-hmm. those things that make up a win hunter. It's just that they're not quite as consistent as maybe something like a Dream Witch or an Opera Singer, for example. Mm. It's it's that I'm kind of I'm kind of surprised they don't ban out Galatia here because there's just so many walls that he can just chip damage survivors right i mean bit, i'm surprised that they don't pin sculptors because of the last round because nyad if you look at the match yesterday even though it was a four kill with nyad it was due to the fact of, that there was two terror shots, terror shock, right? right yeah exactly yeah. it almost never happens right so statistically speaking that's not going to happen again right so you don't have to you shouldn't really worry about getting four killed by nyad sculptor seems to have not only does sculptor have more win potential theoretically mm-hmm. than nyad um Especially after that last round where they had a difficult time dealing with the sculptor, I think it just makes a lot more sense to go for the uh, to go for the Nyad instead. Especially considering if you're going to win with Nyad, you're going to have to stuff those rescues, which 
you know, does not seem extremely likely considering that two terror shocks probably not happening again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you think? Do you think this has the fact to do with? their desire ego to redeem themselves like hey we can we, we can definitely do something against a, a sculptor let's let's go at it again i feel like this is going to be very very utp style ish because you know they they want to go up against something that they failed in round one you think that's the case like ego getting in the way um i they want to prove something you know like yeah we can do something i don't really want to comment on that i just i I do think that like nyad okay from a strategic standpoint i think i would ban sculptor right because it's like Mm -hmm. okay sculptor four killed in the first round let's get rid of that option like we had a hard time dealing with it let's we want to play safe we want to take a Mm -hmm. hunter with with that seems like it could be a tie like nyad and you know get ourselves the win for this round that's the goal right you want to win right you gotta you gotta at least win this round they already know it's a 5-0, so let's just get, uh, you know, let's get a tie here and win this round. But Sculptor, you know, it's got the potential to win the game. So that's something you got to consider here, especially after the last round situation. Yeah, I mean, Muyo's already starting to chase the psychologist in the factory as well. So it's a pretty strong kiting area for the survivors. So maybe the game plan is to get the chip damage through walls. But what do you think of this? decision to chase in the factory here oh we're gonna see the sculptor actually walks through wow uh the pallet and we're gonna see a pallet stun there from the psychologist gonna waste a little bit of extra time here yeah chasing in factory is not really ideal factory is such a strong kiting area right and we see this plenty of times here and actually psychologist is gonna use this time to transition farther away as well so i'm um, really utilizing this factory to their uh to their advantage all you have to do here is a psychologist just don't get chipped just force three basic hits and it's gonna be an easy kite yeah, CZ is actually really good kiter. Like even in last game as an acrobat against the sculptor, he's already did an amazing job. So with um this is not the full present sculptor. Muyo is still trying to get that first hit onto CZ and apparently getting that chip in. Well Oh, and a hit as well. And a hit as well, yeah. That, see, that's the problem, right? Is you don't want it. You never want to give a chip to a sculptor, especially as a psychologist. So the goal for the psychologist, run in the open. Do not give a chip hit under any circumstances here. Going th- This route is so risky right now uh, because you risk getting chipped and then blink hit, right? And we're going to see oh. the blink here. Um, and uh, yeah, that's better for the survivors, if anything, oh, because it's, yeah. it's a basic hit. Oh, Xinjie, he didn't push him far enough. Yeah, he's going to take that time to remove the ball because the ball is going to be really dangerous uh, in the long run for the batter, right? So now, trying to spot out where CZ is, but Tinjie from UTP is going to pause the game. So uh, a technical issue pause, perhaps, but Eli, uh, pretty good start so far, right? For for UTP, I feel like, even though he got the chip and the damage, I mean, the Cypher progress was almost three Cyphers there. So yep. yeah, that, that was pretty good so you think um what do you think going into this game like uh do you think that they should spend more time supporting the psychologist at this rate because cypher cypher progress is going to be slower right if everyone just decides to come in and support a psychologist yeah i think here um they already have enough cyber progress to what looks like possibly win the game right so you might as well at this point Mm-hmm. Allows psychologist already has distance, right? So if you're the batter, just just go to code, just run away. There's no need to support here. Um, you already have uh, your psychologist with a lot of distance. They already have two ciphers, one cipher done, two ciphers thinking mm-hmm. eighty five percent about something like that. Um, mm-hmm. And at that point, ciphers will pop. Just go for regular rescues, and you're gonna be as long as mercenary doesn't get stuffed, then perfectly fine, right? Yeah, as long as it doesn't get stuff. This is such a... I mean, the role is so important, right? Like, um, if you fail rescue, then, ah, oh, goodness, that's that's it. You, The game can be turned around, but... Yeah, I, I can't emphasize enough, like, kiting is really good, but if you go down and the survivors are not doing a good job of rescuing, then that's gonna be really, really big trouble for the UT... Uh, for the survivors. But right here, um, ladies and gentlemen, we are still going to wait for some feedback from the team. But guys, please do show um, some love and support for both teams. I see someone, let me see. 
I see someone saying that yeah, uh, RS survivors will not play at all today. Will thank you for well. yeah. I usually yeah, don't pull the chat. But we'll see if I can get it up on my yeah. phone here. Yeah. Uh, um, apparently, they're saying Midori is sick. Lollipop. Um, maybe you can tell us where you got the news from. Oh yes, Midori is sick by Li Hui. Yeah, probably that's probably the emergency they're looking for. But yeah, I mean, Muyo. Yeah, Muyo is just here to make a statement. I think like win or lose, I think he just wants to show that yeah, despite the circumstances, I can still get a kill. I can still I can still get 4K. I can still give pressure to show you how I play as a hunter, right? You're like yeah, yeah, for but, sure. Um, so I think. The thing is, when you go to Factory Chase, obviously, that's really challenging because Factory is the best area on the map for, it, for survivors. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of the time as a hunter, you're not going to go for that first one. So if you look at the overall spawn, I believe it was the L spawn, right? So you have the survivor shack, one middle, one mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. below near the dungeon and one in the factory. Yeah. Hunters have two options, right? Uh, so you can spawn at the front gate and then you can go for the survivor in factory or go for the survivor at middle. Or you can spawn in the top left corner and lock the, the factory cipher. And oh, we see the statue downing the psychologist. I think this will be enough cyphers for the win, though. So um, this is actually the correct play from the survivors not to over support. Um, and it yeah. looks like we're going to see. And psychologist does have borrowed time as well. So this is uh, really optimal. Yeah, the painter is the one yeah. without borrowed time. It's so near, though. Yeah. Rain is so near. His cipher is at 40%. So unfortunately, this is going to disrupt the cipher. Um, at the small house, but I don't. I don't think that's gonna be a big of an issue, right? Run is already coming in for the support. Uh, Rain is just continuing to decode and says, eh, "It's none of his business. He just wants to finish the cipher as fast as possible." But Run has to be very careful, taking that hit, taking one chip damage, but managing that rescue. Oh, CZ still nah, has a window to vault through. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, still has this window here. He's gonna get a speed boost. Not full presence just yet, uh, so don't have to worry about the full presence statues. You're gonna have to mind game up here at this. Uh, uh, this area oh. actually just gonna go ahead and run away there. from the cypher yeah. machine. Yeah, just trying to get as far away from the cyphers as possible here. Um, and I think what can happen here is the survivors can pop this shack cypher and then they can double rescue. And that means they can go for a win here, right? So, uh, but they're not decoding. They actually, okay, there we go. They're gonna finish the cypher here. Um, and I think uh, Painter can come for the rescue. Painter has flywheel. Maybe he could potentially try to get a painting in the process as well here. Yeah, um, I mean, what do you think of Painter in this kind of situation? Because you kind of have to look at the the hunter, right? And yeah, before you can actually make a oh, painting. And look, the statue. Statue. He needs oh, the okay, he's gonna fly oh, with one. Okay, statue's on cooldown. He's got one more statue. He needs to hit the statue right here. Oh, he actually wasted it. Unfortunately, oh, the okay. hunter did waste the statue there. And Painter can just go for a painting. Gonna take the hit. Gonna get the rescue off in Beautiful. time as well. Cypher Machine is 60% of the way done here. Is there a painting available? Oh. He's gonna drop the painting. Psychologist needs to run through the painting without getting chipped. Or actually just make some distance as well. Nice. That's also okay. Yep. Yeah, nice. Rain! Oh! The hunter saw right through it. But it doesn't really matter. He's already bought enough time for CZ to stay alive and running. Run is already coming in. But Xing Jie as the batter getting the first chip. He's the one on the last cypher. So there's, they're already not wasting any time. They're already starting a new cypher here. Xing Jie is the one taking the kite in the end. The cypher is at 81%. Very unfortunate. It's almost primed. But it looks like it's up to Zed, Xing Jie, to make this kite happen. Oh, beautiful ball coming in. Again, Enrage uh, breaking the ball. So he only has one cricket ball left. Xing Jie, what will he do in this situation? He's just going to play stare into my eyes at this point. Yeah, he's just gonna waste time for them to, to heal up here. As long as you don't give a basic, a, or you oh. do give a basic and not a chip hit, that's exactly yeah. the ideal situation. This allows them to start a new Cypher and potentially heal up here. One chip away, uh, Sculptor does not have any statues available. Yeah. Though, so uh, it's just a matter of time here. We do see, of course, the Batter does have Flywheel and Broken Window, so no borrowed time here. So Batter getting chased here is not really ideal because if they go for a Cypher pop, you know, Batter's not gonna be able to get up. We're gonna see the Charge Attack does secure the down. Cypher Machine is going to be primed, but uh, Batter, again, still does not have borrowed time, so they need to be very careful uh, about how they go about this rescue. Yeah, I mean, Painter still has one painting for the late game, but he has one to hold her onto him. Cypher's already primed. CTA is in on his first chair. Run is just one hit away from going down, so Run has to be very careful not to, you know, go down go yep. down from the chip hit but the first chip damage onto cz one hit is he gonna hit no he's just gonna wait 
Oh, wait, uh, no. But okay. he can chip around. If he's able to, he needs to chip right here. Uh, I think they oh, should just beautiful. pop. Because batter doesn't have broad time, so you might as well just pop. Oh, see, now that... Yeah. As soon as the psychologist took the basic hit when rescuing, they should have just popped the cypher. Because psychologists can run up, get the rescue, and the batter does not have broad time anyway, so there's, you might as well just pop there. But now, that played right into the... Um, uh, the instant down, right? And the survivor's dead on yeah. chair. Hunter can teleport here, but they have to get all survivors out the gate. There's a painting waiting as well, so the survivors can actually get away from this. Yeah. I feel like this all is a very... Down. Yeah. yeah. This is a very intense game. I feel like it's not just Muyo. <laughs> Muyo's not the only one very stressed, Better. but what? Xinjie going down from the perfect statues! Eli! <laughs> This is why giving the sculptor is so risky, even though it seems like, you know, yeah. it was such a good start for the survivors. It looks like a win. Sculptor does have that win potential, that map pressure. Mercenary looks like will be able to get out the X gate. So they're guaranteed at least one yeah. here. And I think the painter is going to follow up behind here. Um, painter needs to be really careful that they don't get chiseled here. So they're going to use a chisel. Oh, he throws the chisel too short, yeah. So that's going to secure yeah. two survivors out the exit here, which means that Utopia is going to win this round. This is going to be a 7-2 to two victory for them here. Um, yeah, and uh, exactly. it looks like a kind of been a winning position, but instead we're going to have two out the gate here. Excellent job from the Hunter side, though, with uh, with M Muyo to get the, um, the, mm. the tie here. Because considering that it was a slow start for them, a long early kite, it looks like a win for survivors, but you know, the sculptor is, uh, well, it may not be a main meta hunter because sculptor mm -hmm. does get kite as you saw. It's hard to hit those statues against good survivors, but still has that map pressure, which uh, was pretty impactful throughout that game. Actually, Eli, I don't think we'll be seeing a best of three. Don't you think? I think it's already uh, settled, right? Because yeah, it's already a 5-0. Well, yeah, so zero technically, in, yeah. yeah, so technically it would be a tie for the first round, 7-2 for this round. And then if it's an automatic 5-0, it means that it's impossible for... Them to come back, uh, right? Yeah, it would be impossible. The best they could get is for 4K. Yeah. So I'm not actually sure what's going to be the ruling yeah. on that. I guess we'll have that news in a moment. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so for the time being, that is a 7-2 victory for uh, Utopia in this round. And of course, exactly. that will secure the victory for them in the long run, considering that... Uh, the survivors for RS unfortunately are not here at this point in time, mm -hmm. which means it will be a 5-0. And even if the hunter side of RS is able to get a four kill, it would only be a tie for the last round, which means that Utopia would actually win um, one to zero because they won the second round. So yeah, there you go. one to zero. And regardless of the results in BO3, because it's already guaranteed 5-0. So a draw, even if Muyo gets a 4K, doesn't really matter. It's still going to end up as a draw, one win. So yeah, I mean, Points aside though, like uh, any any particular highlights you want to point out in that game just now, like um, the gameplay, um, any moments you want to highlight there? Uh, well, first sight kite from psychologist was quite good. You know, obviously forcing the basic hits as best as possible is, is usually ideal. Um, then the batter was able to, to help with some distance, which was also pretty good. Um, and for the survivors, yeah, it looked pretty good at that point. You kind of see why um, having no, well, one, having no bar time can be a bit of a downside because the batter doesn't get that heal, so he went down to the full present statues when they use the chisel. Now, I think batter is a character that usually doesn't need borrowed time, but um, it also can be a backfire because borrowed time technically is the best survivor trait, right? Sometimes it's optimal not to bring it, but because it is technically the best survivor trait, you really want to have it. It gives you the end game, the end game heal, the speed boost, and that heal could have been very important for potentially winning. Um, and then also I think the biggest mistake from the survivors was not popping the cypher when the psychologist got hit. When she got hit during that rescue, she should have, uh, they should have just popped the cypher because batter doesn't have yeah. broad time. And that way psych won't get down by any statues, right? So there won't be any no attack recovery plays. So they should have just gone for the, the pop at that point, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. And that could have potentially been the win. But again, they only needed one out the gate, managed to get it. And uh, Utopia winning this round, there you go. Yeah, let's hope that UTP uh, will be able to rest up. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, the hunter is definitely very, very well rested because oh, he, he, he the hunter didn't get to play right in this matchup but yeah for the survivors it's been quite a struggle finally ending it with a note of a draw uh yeah i mean 
technically, I, I'm not. I'm not so sure what's going on, but technically, it's already. Uh, yeah, we, we, apparently, we are going to see a round three, Eli. So, I mean, my math is not mathing, so <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Um, is it because the survivor will go first or the hunter will go first? Um, I think. Well, obviously, it couldn't. Okay, it could not be. Let's see. It could not be Wait, it was... Utopia Hunter first. Because if it was Utopia Hunter first, then it would for sure be over. So it must be Utopia Survivor. Even though we already know the result, we can already see the future. It looks like they're still <laughs> going to go ahead and. But it uh, was. Who chose this map? Who chose Arms Factory? Uh, Arms Factory was chosen by our Reason, right? Yeah, RS, yeah. So technically, Reason should be the one. Oh, maybe that's why they're playing it because Reason is. Faction, yeah. Yeah, choosing Hunter to go first. But even if he gets a 4K, it's still a draw, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, maybe uh, that's the format. Yeah. The format going in, yeah. But hey, who doesn't love to see more Hunter action, especially when it's Muyo? Um, after these two games, you think you think UTP is finally going to seal the deal, ban out his Galatea, or I? Don't know. <laughs> I guess we're gonna find out. Um, I mean, we did see. Let's see, we saw Nyad, Sculptor, and Anne from them so far, right? So this Hunter for RS, those are probably the three options I think they have, right? So. Uh, mm -hmm. That must be the um, the game plan. Is play one of those hunters. Whatever hunter doesn't get banned, we're just gonna go with that one. So oh, yeah. let's go with that one. Uh, yeah. Of course, it would, a lot if of we saw an opera singer, that would be pretty cool. But uh, pretty I cool don't too. Think yeah. that's gonna he be plays. <laughs> yeah. But you but you know what else is cool? Like the chat being really supportive. Yeah. Hopefully this emergency settles soon. Yes, Nico, we share your sentiment as well. Mainy's in the chat. Hello, regular. Being the regular Hanako as well. Muyo actually wonders if they didn't have auto 5 points. Uh, GG's to Muyo, he's actually really good. You know what? You might be actually right. It might be closer than expected because, you know, having two factions play at the same time. But hey, uh, people remember Muyo for his place with the sculptor. To be so, fair, also, yeah, I mean... We'd have to look at the Utopia for... Hunter as well, right? That's the other thing. Because, yeah. because it's like, it's you know, it's anyone can say, yeah, you know, RS would win, but... What if the Utopia Hunter also, you know, okay. is able to put up that <laughs> exactly right? So exactly. I, I mean, know. I mean, there's um, the Xiao Ji, the Xiao Ji, that's Crimson and Maple. He, reg he Maple was registered as a hunter, but during the team introduction, he was introduced as the survivor. So, well, that's a lot of hunter. They, they have no shortages of hunters uh, yeah. in Team UTP, right? But yeah. Many, but this match will go round three, no? Because BO1 draw, yeah. Uh, apparently, we will be playing round number three um, because it is Team Reason's turn to choose a faction, and obviously, Team Reason is going to choose to have the Hunter go first. But results wise, Eli and I, yeah, we, we, we kind of do the math already, and uh, it's going to be in favor of UTP, I'm poor. Yeah, so. Hey, <laughs> Tuber Rose is saying, Eli, drink some coffee. <laughs> oh, I actually, I have, um, uh, what is this? Caffeinated tea, right? So that's mm. my, uh, that's my caffeine. I decided, so I, I actually don't really drink coffee because sometimes I feel a little, like, sometimes it makes me feel, like, kind of sick. Uh, maybe, maybe I just, I don't know. But every time I drink coffee, like, it never really, like, goes down that well. So, um, I've been, uh, drinking tea. Although today I did actually have... Uh, what's the one with the water and the Americano, right? The water and Americano. the... Americano. Uh, yeah. Water and the... Uh, the, the what is the that bottle. thing called? <laughs> the, where they, what is that thing called? That, oh, it's, espresso. Am. Espresso, right? Espresso. There it is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, used I have to, no idea. The, the funny thing is I used to work at a coffee shop and I used to know all the names for these things, but I kind of forgot. Right? So okay. they put two shots of the espresso, the water... Americano. There you go. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. since you worked in the coffee shop before, here's a question: um, What's the difference between black coffee made by a barista or you know in a in a cafe, proper cafe, mm -hmm. and and coffee made in a coffee shop? Um. Well, for the <laughs> most part, it's just 
In most Christ. places, at least, okay, at least in the U.S., at least in the U.S., at the at least in the U.S., black coffee is basically just like at most places, you just take the beans, you put it in the machine with the water, and it turns it into coffee, coffee and <laughs> that's it. There's really not much behind it. Now, I will say there's big differences between things like lattes, cappuccinos, americanos, things like that, right? That everything there is different. Like the latte, you use the uh, the milk, and then you you make it kind of like more. Mm, milky <laughs> and then a cappuccino is more milk. like yeah, yeah a cappuccino is more like like light okay right it's more light light yeah i i i, Frothy, I never I can know. tell i can yeah. never tell the difference but i stopped going to starbucks so i mean are you a fan of starbucks like you no, like the coffee, i yeah. i uh i don't go to starbucks anymore so. yeah yeah me too yeah. for the right reasons <laughs> Yeah. exactly yeah well um yeah i mean i like to make my honestly, own coffee you know if i'm gonna drink coffee if you okay. make, bring it home and make i don't drink coffee a lot but when if i do make a drink coffee then uh you know just make it yourself it's a fun little adventure and you can mm-hmm. can be a barista at home a home barista you know so home barista yeah yeah buy yourself a thousand dollar espresso machine you can make your own coffee <laughs> do you need to go there i don't know about that i don't, I don't got money for that but... there you go just use the hot water kettle and the a thousand dollars whatever that thing's called i don't know yeah so you drip the coffee drip it yeah yeah yeah. yeah. things there like that yeah. yeah actually i have a question for you yeah are you mad am i mad <laughs> <laughs> what Cause, did cause, someone say that is that what yes. code <laughs> says eli looks so mad <laughs> eli looks mad, mad today now. i don't know made me mad i don't know mad i mean oh my god my, even my dog's mad what's going on yeah, yeah i mean now the dog the dog's mad the dog's, the dog's mad yeah. the dog's like why are you talking about my coffee bro yeah what's that what's that, what's that? What's you know what it is it's if you've ever if it's for some people you know how some people when you wake up in the morning you're like oh mm-hmm. i'm like so tired and until you have your morning coffee it's not like this for everyone but for some people it's like they're always like in a bad mood, right? Until they get their coffee. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's kind of yeah. like that. Not for me, but yeah, for some people, it's, oh. it's like yeah. Um, hey. I actually, I actually had my morning tea already. I have it right here, even though it's not morning. Wow. Anymore, but... Yeah, I mean, you're in Thailand now. It's not morning. <laughs> it's not morning anymore. No. Yeah. But next but week we're gonna reason. need it. We're gonna need it next yeah. week for NAU. Oh yeah. For real. Yes. For real. Like, is there is there a reason why? Okay, if if you take coffee and your heart beats really fast, is that a sign you should stop drinking coffee? Um, because sometimes I get that, like when I drink coffee, like coffee really... and stuff. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not. Uh... Do you get that though? Do you get that though? Yeah, yeah. No. yeah. I, I, you I, um, I don't think so. Maybe it's happened once before, but. I don't know. This is why I'm not a doctor, so uh, right. I don't know. I don't know these things, unfortunately. Right. Biology is not my. I'm, I like physics and math, but biology maybe not ideal. I understand. I understand. Biology. Uh, yeah, that, that's one of the subjects. Like, I, I don't know if we're if talking about subjects here will remind the some of the audience about their schoolwork project or whatever they're doing. But honestly, I dislike biology a lot. So I don't know, man. Anyone else dislikes biology here? <laughs> Please do sh- show of hands in the chat. I think the uh, the most like um, you know how like it's always like s- different smells or different noises will like trigger like certain memories, right? Yeah. For me, it's the alarm on my phone that reminds me of high school when I had to wake up at like six a.m. or seven a.m. to go to school in the morning. Whoa, you know, you know when you get the alarm on your phone and you hear that alarm. Yeah, I hate that. I hate that. Even not even, and it looks like uh, we actually do have Utopia um, picking uh, Moonlight River Park here. But it's not even like when I hear it in the morning when it wakes me up. It's like if I hear it any time during the day. Like if I'm at school and one of my friends has an alarm on their phone to remind them to do something, and I hear the alarm, I'm just like, oh, I feel like I'm back in high school waking up in the morning. I hate this. You know, it's like yeah, I understand. It's one of I understand the feeling. Yeah. yeah, sort of like a reinforced reinforce is that called a stimulant like 
when you hear this, it's like ah, uh, it gets associated with some memories in high yeah, school. Yeah, I forgot the yeah. word, but yeah. Mm. But here we are, ladies and gentlemen, back to the win conditions. I do not understand this table at all. Can you explain it for us, please? Uh, uh, two so escapes and the game resumes. I, well, assuming that the survivors were to be able to play, that's how it would be, right? Assuming oh. that the survivors of RS were to play, then they could get a four escape technically. Oh. But um, I don't, ah. as far as we know, they're not available to play and it's still so i think it's just secured at this point for utopia right mm. so uh, i think that's so, yeah mostly the case but yeah. yeah but two escapes and it resumes i really cannot math that's weird that's weird yeah but anyway we would love to see more action coming in i mean we are ahead of schedule uh grand finals is supposed to happen in an hour from now but hey um yeah i mean no i think your dog didn't have uh the morning coffee yet cause... yeah I, I don't i don't know can can we give dogs coffee <laughs> i don't think so but i'm not can sure they do they die do they i die would not I, I would not give the dog coffee i, I would i would avoid that but no, I, no, i'm not sure. i i'm unfortunately not sure about that there you go stop licking me no oh no one wants to see the doggo so here it is a doggo wait there you go. Uh, he's really cute, but unfortunately, he is three-legged. Okay, go back. Yeah, sorry for the barking noise, guys. Um, dogs get irritated when they don't get their coffees, apparently. <laughs> but, but yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, love Jess as well. Thank you so much. I love Nello and Eli, oh, best commentator duo ever. Thank you so much for um your kind words. We really appreciate it. Sometimes, you know, it's not, it's not oh, for... <laughs> <laughs> what? Did you see the something? Dog, what? The do no, the dog. The dog. When the dog barked, I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> was it? Is it very loud? I'm so sorry. Uh, only one time. Only one time. The other ones were fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I don't know what's wrong with them. Probably because it's raining. But yeah. Uh, I do apologize, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, IDV broadcast, not coffee with dogs moment. But <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. But. Okay, let me just Eli, please. Oh please yeah, do. I got you. Yeah, we'll yeah. Talk about the match I, a little bit. So yeah. Um. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, getting back to the match. Uh, it's likely that we're gonna see. Um. Obviously, because for Team RS here, um, the two hunters that will get banned are probably Nyad and Sculptor. I would imagine, although it because it is Moonlit River Park, I guess this would be the one instance where actually banning Sculptor is not warranted, just because Sculptor is actually not particularly strong on Moonlight River Park. Uh, it's a very open map, right? Because the map is so open, uh, it's very difficult to hit statues and things like that. Um, so, well, now they're actually gonna ban Sculptor. So we're gonna see Sculptor ban and Nyad ban, which does leave Anne open to the Hunter side here. Um, I also had a little bit of information here that um, uh, they didn't ban the Sculptor in the second round um because mx respects hunters that play off meta so they were going they're giving a little bit of respect to the uh off meta character selection i suppose but um wow. so that's pretty cool but yeah we are gonna see they're gonna give the an right and they're gonna play prospector so this is definitely the best way to you know go about this situation just gonna go ahead and give an on moonlit and then just kind of play as much counters as possible and uh just deal with it that way yeah i mean uh, Moonlit River Park, Muyo, what can he play in this map? I'm just, keep, I just keep thinking and then I sort of want to see, um, you know, if if it was Liu Hua from Team Omori, he would be a pick lizard without batting an eye here. But Muyo, he seems to have a knack for picking non-meta characters, right? Maybe, yeah, I, I'm not really sure what goes on here, but we'll just have to wait a little bit longer. But one thing's for sure. Aesop's gone. Aeroplanes is gone. Uh, and lucky guy's not gone, I guess. <laughs> he's there. <laughs> he's he's there. there everywhere. Yes. Everywhere. Um, yeah. I, you know, I actually think lucky guy's not like terrible. Like lucky guy's actually like good against. Okay, lucky guy's actually playable against opera singer, right? Because you have veterans bonus. You can get items like pocket watch that can help you against the the opera. Now against Anne, I don't know about that. Because uh, what are you gonna get against Anne? Uh, elbow pad maybe it's probably your best option 
I don't really know what else you could get. Uh, also, the end can cancel the abilities. Oh, oh. actually, Geisha, which, Mama, uh, yeah, very good on this map and pretty good against this comp as well. You can chase Lucky Guy, you can chase Patient. Uh, Prospector could be a little bit challenging, but because it is Moonlit, Geisha is still very strong here. Yeah, I mean, Geisha, I, I, I guess that's the best bet here, right? Because Geisha's the only one that can move uh, distances that far. And the catch-up potential is really high. I mean, there's Breaking Wheel and stuff like that, but it probably doesn't play that. But I like this, but you think it's going to be a little bit of a harassment here? Because Geisha, you know, Geisha mains, they, they tend to suffer from pilot mukbangs. So yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, right? I right? Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess the good news is, is you know, Miller River Park is, is really good for Geisha. And Geisha actually spawns into Patient, which is pretty good as well, right? Because Patient is a character that's usually good against a lot of hunters on moonlit not geisha though because geisha can actually just dash as soon as the patient hooks and the hook is pretty much uh worthless at that point yeah there's just so many things you can do like i i remember you saying like okay this is a new spawn that people uh do right like they no longer spawn directly on the fourth station and the first station right so um is there a reason why they're no longer putting patient directly on top of the fourth station here? Um, so there's a few things that... You, so sometimes, like, you want to... If you spawn four stop, sometimes it's ideal, sometimes it's not. Because if you spawn four stop, you kind of trap yourself back there. So then you're forced to kite at four stop. But because it's a geisha, she can actually just dash across the platform and kind of ignore the, the hooks altogether. So this way, if you spawn closer to 10, you can actually rotate potentially behind the tent. It gives yourself a few more options of rotation um, that might be difficult for the hunter to deal with. At least it opens up other possibilities uh, instead of only using that four stop area. Yeah, four stop area. But you know what? More of that after this because right now we are heading into the game it's me Nello Melo, and Eli O bringing the commentaries all right and it looks like lucky guy immediately searching a chest here and I think that was a flare gun and a mechanics doll so far so pretty good start actually flare gun obviously very effective the mechanics doll as well we have the hook ready to being used here not gonna use it just yet nice job from the patient not to use it a little bit too early here good discipline from the patient good discipline from the geisha though she's gonna wait for the hook and then dash Oh, he actually dashes. He hooks the Ooh. other way instead of going to the pallet. So beautiful job from the patient. And uh, Geisha getting a little bit mind game there. Can he make it to this pallet in time here? Geisha's got to... Uh, she's going to swing through the wow. pallet. She's got a dash. Oh, wow. he dashes through the wall. Misses the dash, though. Misses the swing. Patient needs to use a hook right away to avoid this. And oh, Whoa. actually just takes the vault instead. Wow. And uh, very risky, but uh, it actually works out quite nicely. Yeah, paid off for CZ. He's been doing this big risk every day, all day. And it, it seems like he's extending the kite so much. It's yeah. already close to a three ciphers kite. And it's just one minute plus left. Just break line of CZ has not... What is that dash? <laughs> <laughs> Diagonal blind wall dash. CZ, baking angles. Yeah, he also uh, baits the window vault there as well, which is pretty strong. He's going to get the next pallet oh. there. We'll have to take a hit here, but... That's okay. That's going to waste the Geisha dash there. Still has a hook to work with. The Geisha is actually going to teleport to the mechanics or to the... Uh, oh, wait, there's no mechanic. The lucky guy's doll here, which is actually not good for the hunter because now they don't have a, uh, a, a survivor to chase. And now the lucky guy actually drops the doll and picks oh. up the football, which means that that dis does not reveal the location of the lucky guy. So the hunter actually doesn't know where anybody is at this point. Oh, wow, what a play coming into this. I mean, it's really looking very good for UTP so far, but I guess Muyo has no choice but to dash right across the the White River going after Xinjie. So Xinjie has to yep. be really careful here. Yeah, I, I I think they're already used to hunters trying to hide the red lights, right? And they just decide, yeah, we're not going to play this game with you. We're just going to, you know, rotate away. So that's what they did. But Xinjie... He's going to pull Geisha in. Muyo taking that first magnet stun. Still has another magnet to work with, but is he going to use it here and risk? Wow. Yeah, he's just going to get hit. So I think saving that magnet could have been a little bit more optimal there, but... Oh, oh. misses there. He could fly. Fly makes it to the window. Actually avoids the hit because Geisha missed that swing there. She's going to go ahead and dash down, but the ga dash is canceled. Still four survivors up. Nobody on chair just yet. And look at that cypher progress. Almost ready at this point. Yeah, I mean... Things are just going really, really well so far for UTP. Like, um, Xinjie is just... No one here is falling yep. fast, right? Yep. Uh, Muyo still trying to hide the red lights. Xinjie... <laughs> 
Lucky uh, I actually gets another item. Uh, what? So he's got a flashlight now. Where wow. Charge Attack does secure the down onto the Prospector. Now, I guess the only downside is Prospector does not actually have borrowed time, right? So that's something we're going to have to consider here. Uh, but, lucky guy, too. Yeah, lucky guy as well. Uh, lucky guy gets a... What is that? The fit? Wait, let's see. Doll, the perfume. Doll, perfume, perfume, flare gun, flashlight. That's five items now. Wow. Oh, beautiful dash from the Geisha going through the wall there. You're going to get the pallet stun, but uh, excellent job to get that hit. Although, again, I don't know if it's actually going to matter um, considering the cipher progress at this point. Oh, nice. Yeah, I think this is a really strong area to kite the Geisha, right? You can just keep circling, 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 anti-dash. And then when he comes close, just dash away. So Muyo does not want to play this Ferris wheel game. Yep. He's going to change targets straight away. UTP is not UTP is not safe and clear yet because the last Cypher is nowhere near done. Uh, Muyo is just trying to maintain a little bit of Cypher control uh, map pressure at the moment. But I don't know how long this can keep up because... Oh, <laughs> Rad! Uh, get stuck on the, the ladder and then elbow pads into the Hunter here. They're going to be to the pallet. Swings through the pallet to get this hit. And I guess this game isn't over just yet, right? We have yeah, Mercenary going down. Two survivors are injured here. I don't know if chasing Lucky Guy is ideal. Lucky Guy will have a lot of items by now. He's going to perfume wow. that hit. And gets the flare gun as well. So Lucky Guy's got a flare gun and a flashlight to work with. Has flywheel. Can go into flashlight. Flywheel into flashlight. Forces the Geisha away here. Really nice job from the Lucky Guy. And survivors will stop and heal up, it looks like. But Geisha yeah. has caught wind of the heal, it looks like. But no, he's going to go back to the lucky guy. Yeah, he really wants to play Thief, right? He, it doesn't, it doesn't he, matter what character he is. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, he really Geisha, wants to play. Geisha can't really do anything about the flashlight, right? If the survivor has a butterfly, yeah, you, Geisha cannot do anything about it. So That's true. Yeah, I probably good. should change target here. They're yeah. already using that time to heal up. And CZ is starting another cipher behind the two stories. So that's the seven cipher being decoded. Um, at 32%, Muyo is going to dash back, uh, has, has, has a sight on to run. Run still has one elbow pad to play, already pinged the help me, but you know what? Oh, Ooh. beautiful dash, right Eli? Yeah. Back to back beautiful dashes coming in. Yeah. Excellent mm. job from this hunter here. Mercenary's going to go down again. This will be the first chair, but the second time on the ground. Uh, Mercenary is with one elbow pad remaining. It's like Prospector is going to try to support this actually. Uh, I don't know if they can allow for a struggle free. Um, he may actually just leave the mercenary on the ground. Let the mercenary expend the self heal. Go for the prospector here. Last cypher machine is prime. Geisha does not want to expend teleport. They know that two cypher machines are probably almost ready at this point. So you might as well save your teleport for the end game. That's you want to get at least true. one survivor on the... Ch oh, misses the magnet here, unfortunately. Can he pull? Um, can he pull? So oh! I thought he was with the pool. Oh, wait. Yeah, he's just gonna prime straight away. It doesn't really matter because you saw the the match <laughs> the match requirements to win, right? 2% yep. escape and it's... Uh, yeah. Wait, run. Oh, beautiful dash right away. Realizing that the pallet slam failed. But CZ, not the target you want to chase because you stopped the last hook. He's gonna buy so much time. And the other gate. Everyone's running to the other gate. So, no. Uh, at this moment, Eli. Yeah, so this should be a three escape at least. Dungeon is here as well. Oh, but he runs into the wall, unfortunately. is gonna try to dash to the wall. Misses the dash, but is gonna be able to secure the down. Exegate only, yeah, only 10%, so no chance for a dungeon escape here. But the three survivors already to the other Exegate. And Utopia, uh, yeah, no more messing around. It looks like able to secure this three escape here. Um, after that last round, they were really like, you know, we gotta come back and win this one. Um, and uh, they really pulled together for this last round here. Three survivors out the exit gate. Lucky guy with five items, and uh, it actually ended up being five good items, I guess. So yeah, well, he he, he is pretty lucky. Fortunately, it's not the flashlight, right? He is pretty lucky. Yeah. Well, yeah. Both sides um, are paying their respects. Yeah. Yeah. Green, you know. Okay. Kneeling there down to Mama Michiko. Yeah. And that's it. Eli, the winner, yeah. congratulations to UTP, uh, securing a spot in the Grand Finals of the Sea qualifiers right now. So, Eli, beautiful performance by both teams. <laughs> uh, I, I cannot say that about RS because RS Muyo is practically playing... He's a one-man army at this point. <laughs> the Survivor's yeah. team could not show up. He's, he's playing out of his heart. So, guys, uh, do show 
your love and support for Muyo as well from Team Reason. But please do join me and Eli to congratulate UTP for moving on, facing GH next. So, wow. And what? what's interesting as well is that um, considering that this Hunter uh, Muyo has played really well, obviously yesterday, and has a really high four kill rate, and the survivors of Ut Utopia, you know, they're able to to win one of the rounds in this last one here, able to get a tie in the other round, pretty pretty strong. Uh, you know, we talked about it in the first round, if they want a chance at taking down this really strong GH team. They've got to step it up from that first round situation, right? And they were able to mm -hmm. do so, uh, almost able to win in the second round, and were able to win, at least on the survivor side here, in the third round. So that's very crucial for them. Again, if they want to be able to take down GH, survivors are going to have to start winning games, right? Because you're going against a very strong hunter like Meow Pie, very strong survivor side like GH. You know, you gotta, you gotta, definitely gotta step it up here. I think we'll have a very exciting finals, uh, finals for sure. But um, yeah, I think uh, Utopia. That's true. They worked out those, remember we talked about, you gotta work out those mistakes, and I think they figured it out in these uh, last two rounds. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely not easy uh, coming this far, but GH, like, I, I have to agree with you, they have to do more if they want to come, come out as champions, because GH versus UTP, so far, what do we know? GH, they, their survivors made little to no mistakes, right? And... Zhao Kahn, very steady, very stable. Um, little boy, very steady kiting as well. Basically, everyone in in that team, survivors, they're superstars. Here in UTP, you have MX, you have uh, CZ, you have Run, you have... Um, who's that person again? <laughs> oh my god, this is so embarrassing. MX, MX CZ, Run, and Xingjie. How could I forget oh. about Xingjie? So... Yeah. Yeah, I think it really comes down to which survival factions is going to pull over, like stop the hunter from getting a 4k. But yeah, I, I just have to say, uh, very well deserving grand finals finalists, uh, these two teams. But you know what? Before we move on to that next grand finals, Eli, um, that last game, Geisha, right? Beautiful wall dashes, beautiful yeah. wall dashes, beautiful chase. I, I love the art of dashing, you know, like. People, a lot of people told me in the past, we play Geisha, we main Geisha because of the beautiful art of dashing. And that's exactly what he did. But what do you think he could have done? What happened there? Like, that could have helped him a little bit more. Is there anything that could have been done differently to change the outcome there? Well, I think the uh, patient did kite really well. Um, you know, your mindset as Geisha is like, okay, well, I'll just chase patient because patient. Can chase up. <laughs> yeah, it's not really that good against Geisha, right? You just wait for the hook, you go for the dash. But the patient did an excellent job because on a few of those hooks, they hooked towards an area that the Geisha kind of didn't really expect, right? So if you saw that one, uh, I don't remember if it was the first or second hook, they go for the hook off the pole, right? And the Geisha's like, okay, I'm going to dash to this pallet because that's probably where the survivor's going to go. But then he actually hooks and jumps to the side, right? And avoids mm -hmm. the Geisha dash, which is really impressive. And you see here, 131 seconds kite uh, for the, the patient overall, which against a Geisha is really, really good for a patient, considering that Geisha actually usually counters patient. Um, also, the lucky guy usage with the, um, the, the flashlight was pretty impactful. Um, and five yeah. <laughs> items, five items, maybe a little too much. And maybe that's why the ciphers were... <laughs> Slightly slower, but they also have the bot to improve Cypher Rush as well. So, um, yeah, five mm. items. If you guys want to play Lucky Guy, maybe five items is not it's ideal. A little much, but he was yeah. able to utilize items that were important, right? Things like flashlight and the uh, mechanic stall as well, and the perfume, right? Those were, I think, the three most exactly. crucial items there. Yeah, it, understanding what <laughs> items to use against what hunters is really important. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. When whenever I play Lucky Guy, I don't know if this happens to you. Uh, I would search for five chests as well, but the sad thing is, you I would end item. up with syringes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, how yeah. unlucky do you have to be at playing as a lucky guy, right? Yeah. Do you face this situation like. Well, it's syringe. in the name, lucky guy, right? It's a luck, lucky. lucky character, luck based character. Luck -based usually, luck based character. characters are unfortunately not ideal because, uh, you know. It's either it works out or it doesn't. And actually, what's kind of interesting is like, I feel like the game, sometimes I feel like the game does this on purpose. You get a perfume when you're half health and you get a syringe when you're full <laughs> when health. When you're full health. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's just like, it's just it's like, 
it's trying to mess with you. Yeah, it's trying to mess with you for sure. Yeah, it, it's like, it's like, hey, dude, I wanna eat, I wanna eat, you know, Pizza Hut, but they give you Domino's. Oh wait, that's not a good comparison. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, I want an Americano, but then they're like, yeah, sorry, bro, the only thing left here is. It's a lot. Lipton tea. tea. Or a little Lipton tea. tea. <laughs> Yeah. It's like you sort of get that thing, but it's like not really what you expect. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, well, you guys gotta have to be very lucky to play Lucky Guy. Would you recommend Lucky Guy as a rank suitable character in this situation? Uh, I feel like Lucky Guy is not really a great right. rank character. Lucky Guy is kind of situated because, like, Lucky Guy is good against Opera Singer, and then it's good against some situational hunters. But I feel like usually in rank, you probably don't want to play. Because like, the thing with rank is you just want to finish your cipher as quickly as possible, right? If you're stopping to search chests, things like that, it's like, well, there goes the cipher rush, right? And in some that's situations at tournaments, like, oh, okay, that's good. But here in, um, but in rank, maybe not so much. You just want to rush ciphers, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But hey, uh, guys, we are uh, going to head into an interview very, very soon. Uh, still figuring out who we will be interviewing next. But guys, if you have any idea who you think the person representing UTP will be interviewed by us, please do let us know in the chat. And uh, yeah, I mean, I see you, Lacrimosa, in the chat. Hello, bestie. Long time no see. Glad to see you here. And Mani as well, Kazuri. Hanako as well. Thank you guys for still being here. Uh, don't go Absolutely. anywhere because we are still going into the grand finals. And mind you guys, stakes couldn't be any higher. GH or UTP? Who do you want? Who do you think? Who do you support? To take that championship title and go to COA group stages. Because Absolutely. That's, it's a, that's huge. It's a big right? deal. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. That's what this whole tournament's about, you know, is seeing who's yeah. going to make it. And also, of course, everybody who's keeping positivity in the chat, things like that. It's really enjoyable. Mm -hmm. You know, when when me and Nell and Poch and Chosen, we come out here and commentate, um, you know, seeing all the any positivity in the chat is always really nice. We love That's what true. we do, right? Being able to commentate, it's... I. You guys know, like, Identity 5, like, I don't actually play a lot of games, right? But I play Identity 5 because I love this game, right? And that's the thing, like, a lot of... You guys gotta understand, like, we come out here, we commentate this game, you know, we love this game, we love to see these teams play, we love to give you guys uh, a good shot, and I'm I, I, I'm always so honored to be here, um, we're always so honored to be here, we're super happy to be here, but um, every time you guys are bringing positivity, it so much makes our jobs so much easier and more enjoyable, and it makes it more fun for everybody else, so everybody who's keeping positivity, absolutely amazing, and it, it, exactly. it makes it so much more enjoyable for us to be here, and it's, it's awesome, man, it really is. Yeah, I totally agree with Eli. End it with a comb. <laughs> End it with a slick comb. But guys, uh, thank you so much. I think Eli, well, couldn't have been said any better. Uh, thank you, Eli, for that. Uh, I share the exact same sentiments, guys. Um, of course, it's always enjoyable uh, to have you guys here. And of course, giving your cute comments, having your insights. And of course, just to say hi, I feel like I feel like it's our culture now, right? In English chat to to give shout outs, to, to say hi to everyone. To the point where I think like we can name a lot of people in the chat actually. Yeah, yeah. But, right? To that point. Yeah. So I feel like this belongs to us. And I really hope that it will continue to belong to us because you don't see it anywhere else. You don't see it in other leagues, IBL, IGL. I, I believe we don't because well, they're, they're focused on the game. They don't really look at the chat, right? So thank you guys once again, right? Uh, gaming a live shout out, Domino's is peak. I don't know, seriously, because I don't eat Domino's. Do they have a, <laughs> do they have it in Malaysia or? Uh, they do, but it's in Kuala Lumpur. So yeah, mm. I it, it's not here. And besides, I, I, I don't take, I don't go to Pizza Hut. I don't go to KFC. I don't go to McDonald's. I don't go to Starbucks, not anymore. Understand uh, for for a good reason, yeah. We but do back have to the, the game. yeah, we do yeah. have the uh, the match results here. It is twenty to eight, the final score. Of course, wow. um, we did see the uh, five zero on unfortunately for the uh, 
uh, against the RS survivors. But Utopia going out and putting up a good show against the RS Hunter side. And we did see tie in the first round, 7 2 in the second round, and an 8 to 1 in the third round. Really good job from the Utopia survivors there. That's the kind of show they're going to have to go out and put up against GH if they want to win this event. It all comes down to this next match now. It really does. You know, we talk about mm -hmm. how FT's already made it through in IVC. And it's a really big deal for GH because GH has qualified through IVC every year. But this time mm -hmm. they were dethroned. And so now they have to go through this whole process of exactly. core rank, top eight. They're in the finals, but they're up against Utopia, who's been playing well so far. So, I mean, this is uh, it really comes down to this match. A lot, of, uh, a lot of pressure. Exactly. A lot of pressure because this is their final chance, right? It's here. It's it, it's here. If they cannot make it, it's going to be the first time in history that they don't make an appearance in Koa stages, right? And obviously, there's a lot of things going on in the IDV community, professional teams world. And trust me, we all know a lot about it. Uh, we just prefer not to share it due to privacy. But... You know what? If you guys follow us on Instagram, Poshpice at Poshpice at Eli O I D V at Mellow the World at Who's Chocho, you know we might be Who sharing a little bit Chocho? of stories. Who is Chocho? I, Who is I have no that? idea. I don't know. App Who is that? Apparently, she is the tallest among us. So. <laughs> five apples tall. <laughs> Taller than five apples. <laughs> I don't know why someone was saying as tall as five apples. I don't even know what that is. refers to. <laughs> yeah. Gotta be a really it, that's an interesting unit of measurement, but exactly. I don't know. We, we, <laughs> yeah, Eli's definitely not five apples. Uh, he's probably five, but watermelons or something. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Tall. Right? What's the what's the tallest fruit? The tallest fruit. Uh, tallest fruit. Pineapple. Maybe <laughs> pineapple. It? Pineapple and watermelons are pretty tall. There's got to be another one, though, that we're not thinking of, right? Like, uh... Sorry? There's got to be another fruit that we're not thinking of. I don't, I don't really know. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Words. Let's just assume it's pineapple. But Probably. Five pineapples, like that. yeah. yeah. That, that's the word apples in there, right? Stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of comments going in as well. Right now, C has a lot of very capable teams. Yes, Vanilla kind of agreed with you. IDB Revel as well. Nano as well. Um, it just shows that, you know what? We, I did something with Chocho, -Cho, right, uh, yesterday. I feel like I can do it with you now because we didn't get to finish it. We were talking about an all-star fantasy roster thing. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, C team. C, C team. Best C players. Seven players. Um, that could have a very huge fighting chance, regardless of whether they're from Thailand, Singapore, Vietnam, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, Philippines. Who do you think fits into the role of rescuer the best? Like, mm. like name a name. It doesn't have to be true. It's just like your opinion. Who would you want in your fantasy roster? Mm, rescuer player from Southeast Asia. Um, maybe. Dang, I'm so bad at this. Uh, maybe Zhao Khan. I would say is good rescuer. Zhao Khan, nice, yeah. nice. Oh, best OBR. Uh, Panda. Panda. Unfortunately, guys, if you follow Panda on his socials, ah, this is a sad news. I wonder if we should say it though. I mean, it's not. Well, it, the, I think the the most we can uh, we can bring up is unfortunately, yeah, just not playing with the FT team for this Call of Abyss tournament. So, uh, yeah. some roster changes, yeah. but Panda. Um, yeah. Best Kiter. Hopefully, see him back in IVC. Hope. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. Not too late to see him by then. Best kiter. Uh, little boy. Little boy. Noise. Um. Hmm. What else is missing? Supporter. Best supporter. Uh, support. Wait, isn't that OB? Or I guess it, it could be like a different. Oh uh, yeah, Dub double. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess you have a priestess player, but that's also a little boy, right? Also plays priestess, so. Okay. Uh. American. <laughs> I don't know. American's uh, pretty good. For hunters, yeah. I would say I mean I personally really like Kuga. I think Kuga is a very good hunter. Okay. Um but uh, obviously yeah, there's also arguments for uh Pai. Meow Pai. Um there's arguments for uh you know obviously God is good but Godjay isn't really playing as much right now. I'm not really sure what's going on with that. So mm -hmm. um but I would say Kuga 
I, I think Kuga is very consistent. That's why I like Kuga. Because Meow Pai is a very good hunter because Meow Pai can get a lot of four kills. But then mm -hmm. Kuga, on the other hand, Kuga is also very consistent. Like Kuga doesn't lose very often. He, he secures draws. So both sides, there's an argument for both sides, but mm -hmm. that's hard to say. Yeah. Um, but you know what, guys? We are going to put a pin on that because we are heading to the moment, the interviews moment. So let's see who's going to be interviewed by us. Yeah. Whoa! Surprise! Actually, not really. <laughs> Hello, Rain from Team Hi. Utopia. Hello. First, yeah, first of all, congratulations for being one of the grand finalists for the Sea Qualifiers. How do you feel? Uh, very happy. We all feel happy. Uh, this time, really happy. Get to fight against GH finally. Yeah. Ooh, nice, nice, nice. Uh, you. You tired? You need any break before going to the grand finals? Um, or are you ready to go? <laughs> is it is it allowed to have break like maybe a minute? Um, <laughs> you can you have to ask the admins about that. Um, okay, okay. I, 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 think we'll, uh, I think we'll have a short break. You know? Short. Yeah, okay. yeah? Sure. I will ask them later. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, yeah, so going into the going into the grand finals, obviously, uh, this is going to be uh, probably the most difficult match you have to, to deal with against GH. Um, are, have you, before this tournament, uh, practiced for playing against GH at some point? Uh, no, I think because we're kind of a little busy and I think our time is like not suitable mm. for both of us, so yeah. Mm. No. I see. Yeah. What happened to, if I may ask, what happened mm. in game number one? Because uh, uh, everyone was getting was a, hit left and right. <laughs> uh, well, because there was a community communicating uh, problem, I think, yeah. Like, oh, everyone was like saying, yeah. hey, I want to kite there, then I want to kite here. Then was like, we all, all like, not, oh. how to say, it's just like having fun. It's like, hey, I want to kite here, let me decode here. Like, you go away, I, I will oh. decode here. It's like, yeah, so do not, do not play, like, in the Serious? 100%? best mode. Not oh, in the best, not see. not that not serious that not in the best mode because we was like I want to decode this cipher I want to kite here why you did not go away <laughs> so <laughs> little yeah, little yeah. communicating problem but yeah we we, we, so we you go ahead yeah, uh, yeah we, ask, in the bo uh, two oh, yeah, we get back ready sorry yeah you can if I, okay if yeah. guys. <laughs> I was gonna say uh, important question going against GH in the finals do you have any message you want to say to GH um um uh is it everybody or just like can i just say to Mel Pai because i can't represent my hunter go ahead is it okay Mel Pai, okay. i will four escape you all right Whoa. there you go nice. I will use my 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 uh the the easy characters the the new new uh, new player characters gardener thief lawyer doctor lucky guy <laughs> I will use I mean, this fight and just for escape though. you Lawyer's meta no, no a good every character, character is good, good for me I will for escape <laughs> team okay oh yeah, right. declaration by MX from <laughs> Team Utopia so thank you so much and good luck in your next game uh, for the you. grand finals thank you thank you. All right, there you have it, Eli. Very confident words. Uh, yep. Very specific to uh, their friend, Miao Pai. Mind you guys, they're all actually in the same group, in the same team before. So, uh, I will four escape you, Miao Pai. So, Miao Pai, you got the message. If you're watching, you got the message. That's so funny. So, <laughs> yep. well, let's see. Uh, let's see what's going to happen here. But, you know what? I... Couldn't be a better pairing for the grand finals, I would say. Like, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, yeah. I think this is. Uh, we talked about some teams we expect to be in the finals. St, but they played against GH first, and the other team was Utopia versus GH, right? And mm -hmm. because both those teams got on the opposite side of the bracket, definitely mm -hmm. a good finals match, I would say, uh, ahead of us. Now, something you have to consider is that the. Uh, Utopia Hunter did have a long break here, right? So they had some time to prepare for this. So let's see what the Utopia Hunter can come out and do here. That's going to be, of course, very, very important. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also very important for the survivors of Utopia to stay in top condition, continue that momentum from that third round into mm -hmm. and translate it into the finals. That's going to be 
very crucial for them here. Um, exactly. They want to win this event. Going up against the best team, GH. See how GH, it goes. Yeah. But GH has been looking really, really strong so far. Haven't seen a lot of mistakes coming in. I mean, Omori put on a really uh, good fight. Um, the, the Hunter, right? But hey, we gotta leave some of the action for later on. So don't go anywhere. Suspense is going to be right back after this break. So see you guys later on. opinionatedness. In the quest for the unknown, we may have a glimpse of the brave new world. The rest note is announcing the advent of the greatest masterpiece. Once again, I knew the time to make a choice. 
had arrived. The people around me often say music is my mission and glory. Their empty words intertwine into chords, and the notes played by them sustain the prosperity of both dynasties. Some offer their kindness, while some stop the music. I wish to respond to that kindness and hear the melody of peace once more. If heavy shackles stand in the way of it all, then let me remake them. Let me compose this movement myself. If the father is a miner, so shall the son. If you want it, come and get it. I once thought the same. Poverty is the worst curse. But sometimes there are ways to make a change. Thank you. 
Hey, hey, welcome back from the breaks. And hope that you guys have taken your drinks, well rested, and ready for the grand finals. But before that, look who I have here. Wait, wait Oh my wait. goodness, it's Nello Ooh. Mellow and Posh Spice on the mic for this grand finals match, folks. I'm so excited to be sharing the mic with Nell because we will tonight we'll be crowning another representative to go with Team FT to represent the Southeast Asia region or division in the uh, Call of the Abyss 7. So that's huge. And you know what? On one corner, you have GH, a team that I would say that are the Goliaths of the, the whole division or the, of the whole tournament. And you have uh, Team UTP, which we have seen iterations of them in the past. So mm -hmm. fair to say they're the David in this battle. Exactly. David versus Goliath case. I mean, uh, we, we have to agree. GH has been really, really consistent. Yeah. I mean, close to flawless performance by not only the survivors, but somehow, if you notice, like Meow Pai, the new mm. addition to GH making magical moments work. Like oh, yeah. from a draw into a win, from a possible trick, uh, from a lose turning the tides. So mm. definitely going to say a lot is I at think, stake here. Yeah, Cho Cho kind of broke it down. It's like there's no... If you just slip up once, that's when Meow Pai really can sink his teeth into the match yeah. and find a way to just turn it around. His worst performance in this tournament, folks, <clears throat> is that he got a three-man. Uh, he had a three-man elimination, which is huge because usually, wow. uh, you know what, getting a tie or like even lower is what would be a worst performance for a hunter. But Meow Pai, you know what, he sets the standards differently. The elimination rate here, the, based on the percentage, I don't think that's accounting for what he performed here in the tournament because this stat mm -hmm. should be a lot higher. And Nell, not to mention, they have two hunters in Team GH. It's not just exactly. Meow, it's also God J, which is another, you know, it's an, it's another can of worms you have to open up if, you're, or if we're going to try to unpack uh, the, the implications of God J is going to be hunting for the team. Yeah, like fire and ice. If you mm -hmm. say God J is the calm ice, he, well, <laughs> Meow Pie is the fire. But speaking mm -hmm. of ice, God J. Uh, wow, lizard performance coming in. 100% uh, win rate, probably due to the fact that he's... Um, Hasn't made an appearance yet. Probably the secret weapon this time around. But hey, got Jay. Um, who doesn't know him? Well, he, the the OG, the OG, the the unstoppable God of Zen. Mm -hmm. Um, with with his characters like you know, uh, Bon Bon with Galatia. Uh, I mean, even with Hermit, and now with the addition of Lucino. I mean. Mm -hmm. This guy, legend right there. Very terrifying, yeah, God Jay. Yeah. And uh, speaking of names that we all know as well, Skyfall, you know, another yeah. known stable rescuer of different teams and also from Team GH. He did take the coach role at the start, but now he is playing and he has been very consistent as of late. We talked about how, mm. you know, rescuers, they really get to test their metal if they're the ones chased first. So we have to see mm -hmm. if they will go for a, uh, a Skyfall chase at the start. Yeah. So far, he's been safe, but someone else who is not safe and an amazing performance just mm -hmm. now as the aeroplane is, is Chao Kahn. Wow, kiting as an aeroplane is not only juking the Dream Witch, but popping the Cypher and still escaping with the tram. Mm -hmm. Classic legend right here. Um, GH Chao Kahn, ladies and gentlemen, not only plays the aeroplane, is also plays the cheerleader. So yeah. basically like a support base rescuer mm -hmm. at this point. I'll tell you this wow. right now, if you can make Chocho -cho fangirl and get impressed by your performance, that means you're doing something right. So the fact that he was able to get in like an MVP position from Chocho, -cho, that's a huge win in your book. And hopefully we'll get some more Zalcon moments, but we have to move things along to <clears throat> Little Boy. A lot of people are talking about Little Boy's performance yesterday with the Priestess. And uh, he did bring out, I believe, the, the patient in the first match. So we have yet to see like that Little Boy magic that he is known for and that amazing mm -hmm. kiting that he brings to the table. Exactly. Speaking of another magic, um, Narakun, also a very, very strong kiter. Loves, absolutely loves high risk, high reward kind of plays. Mm -hmm. um, well, you can tell by the way that of his characters, he plays the batter, he plays the prospector, he plays the forward. So another amazing kiter in the form of Narakun in GH. Well, one of the pillars, I would say, irreplaceable Ooh. in the team so far. Um, I would say yeah. that, yeah, when, it, when we talk about the pillars of GH, Narukun was definitely an amazing addition to that, especially when he first uh, joined Team GH and he's very impactful, right? Mm -hmm. And 
maybe I don't know. It could be this tournament iteration or this uh, lineup that they have, but they've been quite stable. So this is going to be a huge test for them because if they can go in this tournament without dropping a single game and perfecting two O's, that's going to be legendary. So we're going to move on to their adversaries, which is UTP. UTP, once again, you know, it had a, a pretty rocky performance yesterday, but still managed to get the 2-0. And today, also, we only saw the survivors come on in, but we have yet to introduce the hunters now. Yeah, I mean, plenty of rest, definitely. Um, Cell G. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cell G uh, representing UTP's hunter. Well, mm -hmm. we, we saw him with a 3k yesterday, and hopefully we are going to see him in best of one. It seems like the strategy for UTP right now is best of one, Cell G. Best of two, mm. Crimson. So... Um, maybe that's the plan that they're going with today. Um, yeah, Papa we can Singer, only hope, Sergei, right? Especially yeah. Since, yeah, especially since you mentioned that uh, they are coming from a really... This is their first match, technically, and it's Grand Finals. Exactly. In the last match, I'm sh pretty sure the survivors are actually pretty warmed up. I hope... Shout out to Rain. I hope he got the break that he wanted. Uh, but yeah, yeah exactly. no, talk, <laughs> talk to me about Crimson, because we have this ongoing investigation who this Crimson person is, Detective Nello. What are your findings? Yeah. Do you think this is Oxygen? I think it's Oxygen, but then again, now that I think about it, there's also another player who plays Bane really, really well. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure if the name's King Crimson, if that's the same person. Ooh. But but yeah, regardless be of mm -hmm. that, yeah, could be, could be. But regardless of it, Bane is definitely one of the favorite hunters that I love to watch, uh, simply because it takes skill to mm -hmm. hook someone into a, a dead spot and whack mm -hmm. them. So that's my favorite part about Bane and getting survivors trapped. You know, like the trapper getting it trapped mm -hmm. and then just whack. True, true. Beautiful yeah, stuff. Yeah, very territorial, just being very. I mean, there was. It's very hype to see a, a Bane performance uh, for any hunter. So hopefully we'll see that. But what we're seeing in front of our screen right now are the stats for Run. Uh, we know her as a very stable rescuer. We have yet to see if uh, they bring out the lawyer. But hopefully uh, Run will live up to that, you know, that standard of rescuing and see mm -hmm. how that one is going to play out. But now we're going to move over to CZ. Yeah, so CZ. That correctly. CZ. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's correct. That's correct. CZ, um, the acrobat player, the batter player. Well, I, I would say that he's one of the best kiters at this point, uh, despite what happened in IBS. But this time in the C qualifiers, he has been very consistently um, stable. He's been stable. He's been kiting good. He's taking risks, but he he doesn't get punished for it. So mm. would love to see more of that from him. But up next, Sing Tie or otherwise known as Zed, captain of mm -hmm. UTP, Posh. Yeah, this actually, if you guys could turn back the clock to, I believe it was IBC 2022. This mm -hmm. was actually the, the the team that, well, it was it was Zed, Run, and uh, Rain that were Rain, all together, Alex, right? CZ yeah. was an excellent addition in the future, but I, I mean, I, they they created big moments together, right? And 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 mm -hmm. Zed, we talked about how he improves over time. So hopefully, we get to see that improvement in this match and see it come to fruition because they will go up against the Goliaths. And not to mention this man that was interviewed the most in IV, <laughs> in, in, in in the qualifiers. Rain, exactly. he's got more screen time than us. He should be a commentator now. Exactly. He should probably <laughs> cosplay as Kevin too while he's at it. I, I, I would love to see him cosplay Gardener, not, not Kevin. <laughs> Since, uh, if you guys followed the, the stream that we did interviewing some of these players, we did see that, I mean, he does have a, um, a special place in his heart for the OG characters like the Gardener. Exactly. So wow. we're going to move things along to Maple. Maple uh, reminds me of game during my childhood but no, maple i believe <laughs> <laughs> but maple otherwise known as maple leaf if i recall correctly is, mm -hmm. he is a professional uh, maple is a professional player uh, used to mm -hmm. play in team adams so mm -hmm. i believe he's from right. malaysia malaysia mm -hmm. or singapore question mark but yeah he is a hunter registered mm -hmm. in utp i think he's a survivor main but Apparently, mm -hmm. they find him playing Hunter. Uh, they find him playing Hunter really well. So mm -hmm. they recruited him. Okay. And has yet to make an appearance, though. Yeah. Maybe that's their special trump card that they'll be playing. But yeah. we, have to, we have to see. Because uh, what was what got me to hope that this performance can go the full BO3 is that um, 
Oh, so you were just going to see that the red church is chosen by GH while you mm. can Bad Moonlit River Park, which is a strong change of pace from what uh, GH is known for. But what I wanted to say was Rain said that they were kind of uh, just testing the waters right at the start in the first game. But now All Fun and Games is over. It's time for business and business has to pick up for Team UTP here if they want to cement themselves uh, a spot in Call of the Abyss 7 to represent the Southeast Asia region exactly they have to come out strong here you know mm. like it's it's like it's like when you're going on a date you, you gotta make that strong first impression like uh -huh. hey it, hello okay i oh, okay. yeah mr Firm handshake, posh you know yeah Firm good handshake. hair yeah uh, and, you know make sure to open the door for your date and just be very yeah. polite courteous very, eye contact yeah. nice eye contact yeah. okay like staring <laughs> nice okay yeah, so i mean borderline stalking but <laughs> i like how you said yeah make a good first impression because um you have to come out strong man. yeah come out strong and also get the I, I would say you have to win over the crowd as well because southeast asia is going to be cheering you guys on and i hope exactly. you guys wherever you're watching whatever medium you're watching on facebook youtube x Please do support these teams because they're the ones who are going to represent us as well as mm -hmm. Team FT in, in Call of the Abyss. And if this is your first Call of the Abyss that you're watching, you're in for a treat because it is a global event. There's going to be talents from all over the world to represent uh, their divisions, their regions, mm -hmm. uh, to see who's the best in this iteration of Identity 5. And it's the seventh iteration of Call of the Abyss. So we have to really show up here as the Southeast Asian region and represent and show that we are exactly. united. Exactly. We've come a long way, right? Um, mm -hmm. Watching all these professional teams uh, coming in ever since uh, Call of the Abyss 3. I mean, I wasn't there during Call of the Abyss 3, but um, <laughs> coming in all the way until 7, going through all the different themes. And mm -hmm. if I may take a little time, which is your favorite oh. team? Like out of all the cores, which is oh. your favorite team? Okay, so I answered this yesterday, but Eli made me oh. think about uh, rethink my question, rethink my theme. But I really like the Great Race that was called the Deep Great Race because the intro yeah. was kind of crazy, where it just kept looping, and then Bane was there and Prospector, and it had one of my favorite Ooh. barmaid and acrobat skins. That's mine. But real quick, uh, how about you, Nell? Before we get to the picks and bands, uh, I like, I love this team actually. This is this one. It's, it's mm -hmm. yeah, it's getting more and more close to what wikipedia would describe as a 4v1 asymmetrical horror Ooh, game okay. right? it's living up to that yeah type of aesthetic uh, wait a minute hang on oh, for a oh. sec. <laughs> wow they're they're not hiding their intentions Posh. they're it's not like, i mean yeah. right it was uh you said it best right it was it was rain that said you know what we're gonna four man escape you meow and i'm gonna use yeah. thief i'm gonna use my og oh, characters <laughs> we're gonna start with the thief <laughs> The thief, and once it's banned, yeah, probably gonna slowly rotate down Doctor <laughs> Lawyer oh, yeah. Garden. The OGs, yeah. uh, the OGs for sure. But it kind of makes me wonder who's gonna play the magician, CZ, hmm. Singjie, because this is the first time we see magician picked in this uh, from Team UTP. So it's a pretty good kiter, though. It's yeah, I'd say uh, a, a Perfumer 2.0, or at least it has a little more mind games uh, when it comes mm -hmm. to the, the magic wand. But this mm -hmm. is actually interesting because Meow, um, we do know he goes Opera Singer at the start, and they have to know that he is considering this Hunter because he would bring mm -hmm. out Opera Singer in, in an unfavorable map. In a map like Red Church, it's not like Moonlit River Park. There actually are some structures that uh, she can just dash into and dash out of. So... Mm -hmm. um i wonder what the kicker is going to be because yeah you got to put um a run on mercenary so mm -hmm. what are we feeling here now an, an, an OBer or a, yeah. a supporter a healer what, what do you if they're if they're playing this to face off against an opera singer i feel like getting another agile character would be really useful maybe mm -hmm. acrobat mm. acrobat would be nice here as well the windows is definitely going to help them uh, if they're going up against an opera singer, mm -hmm. so that's good. Um, I, yeah, I like Acrobat in, in a map like mm -hmm. Red Church. Also, there's a lot of spots that you can kind of silence the hunter and force them to go into inside the church. But it <gasps> seems like still in, in the in the vein of agility, like we have the Aeroplanus with the the jetpacks, and I think the most impactful Aeroplanus was Zao Khan as of late because 
uh, in this tournament, we have seen Aeroplanus be you actually only be put on band. Mm. We haven't seen it be utilized all the way, so they pick Aeroplanus here. Yeah, I mean, I love this too. That's mobility as well, and you've seen how well. Um, basically, the teams that picked Aeroplanus, their their players utilize Aeroplanus really, really well, right? Charles was mm. used to perfection. Like even right. Zhao Kan used it, used it um, to kite, to rescue. Like we, mm. we've seen it happen. So maybe it makes sense that it was banned, uh, usually in tournaments. But here, Miao Pai is going to allow it, and mm. he's going straight for the opera singer. So, yeah. Can I just say yeah. also with, with Miao Pai's bans, he bans out the gardener second. So it just really shows <laughs> that he respects the gardener of uh, rain here. Exactly. However, this is the, the era of the opera singer. She's taking center stage. So they have to mm -hmm. be very careful. And we have seen uh, Miao Pai use this opera singer in a in a lineup that has no OB or harassers, and he performed really well. You can make the case that Thief is a harasser, but walking backwards or moonwalking while an opera singer is chasing you is really hard. It is. It's very hard. Uh, maybe that's why the magician makes a lot of sense, because, you mm -hmm. know, when you think he's about to hit, whoo, one mm -hmm. magic one. I mean... <laughs> It's not going to give the Hunter an attack recovery, but the miss swing is going to buy some more time to make mm -hmm. it to the next pallet, right? So I I like that pick. Mm -hmm. But one thing one thing here is no one is able to support except MX Steve. Mm. And, and because, I don't know, I don't know if this works or not, but if you're the Thief mm -hmm. and you shine your light uh, towards... The opera singer long enough, mm. you, you silence her, yes, that's for sure. But the opera singer can still easily come out and hit. So, True. you know what? We're getting into the game and bringing the commentaries. It's me, Nalo, and Posh Spice. Yeah, it seems like a magician will take first kite here, and it is rain. Oh, no, sorry, the thief, my bad. The different costume. So, yeah, shining the light already in a good spot, but Meow can utilize the dashes to try to mitigate the distance being gained by rain so this is what uh rain wants he wants to take oh first my God. he wants to harass and it seems like it's working out so far as the 30 second mark is passed he's gonna side oh that was so close yeah he's just gonna utilize the pallets here utilize mm -hmm. the, the the immobile flashlight and rain has no speed boost so mm -hmm. wow he just waited oh he just waited no you're waiting Fire uh, he did not use flyway as well. That was very naughty of him. Naughty, naughty. That was. He was very persistent, I'd have to say. He was um, I, I, he was really forcing the stun to happen. But Meow, like you said, these two these uh, two players have history together. And he knew he had to bring excitement just to exactly. counteract that. And it shows the respect that Meow has for him. Band the Gardener brought excitement just so. He just brought him for this character because there's no harasser besides the thief. So now exactly. he's going to try to cut off CZ. Yeah, uh, the attack recovery is going to be super Whoa. fast. Oh no, in invisible form, but it's fine. He's probably mm -hmm. going to make it. Um, just be careful not to get the double down. CZ's already running away. Rain! Oh, went Palette for the slams. drop. Yeah, oh. but then the exchange was not fortuitous for the thief in the long run. Goes for a flywheel. Uh, <laughs> tried to flywheel that last hit but now we're at full presence opera singer rain now transitioning towards the red carpet area ciphers are still at four but one is about to pop so it's looking kind of decent but we know how opera singer operates right you want to be able That's to have true. an excellent first kite but here this you're really letting it snowball at this point because she has full presence and now she has control at the top part of this map yeah utp would be very fortunate if they can get a draw out of this because right. this is GH map selection, right? And mm -hmm. getting a draw against an opera singer is very, very good, um, especially when you're up against GH Miao Pai. Magician has already been healed, wasting no time. Uh, Run is going to rescue, has Tight Turner to work with, but Rage is going to play with no. Oh. Oh. Oh my god, no! and the excitement once again. I mean, he played that skill to a T, like with the rotations and the cooldowns of it. Uh, shout out to um, Run, though. That was actually an excellent rescue, but like, uh, just oh. as we said, <laughs> a very cheeky play coming from Rain here. Still able to get the stun off Meow, but this is his first survivor that he's going to eliminate from the game. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I like that he's being very proactive and, you know, <laughs> stunning with the flashlights. But you have to mind you, though. Aeroplanist is the only one finishing two ciphers at the moment. There's still three ciphers remaining, and though there are around half... It's around half. The progress is around half, but... Mm -hmm. If you let out... Like, we already know, Miao Pai is good at capitalizing on mistakes. If you just let up a little bit, it's gonna be wow. really hard to come back. Good transfer oh! of remnants in the... Oh my god, the terror shock now! Oh, you still I have to watch, and you yeah, do that risk. That was uh, a slow vault, unfortunate. And like you called out, you said it, Mystic <laughs> Nell here, look into his crystal vault. Once Meow finds an opening, he will tear into it and capitalize on survivors' overextensions. And oh it's looked from a uh, from a potential tie to now. This is a <laughs> solid performance because IDV Maths dictates there are three ciphers remaining, two survivors left. It's not looking good for the survivors with Meow, um, with the momentum that this hunter has already put on the table. Yeah, but I like okay. that they have three tight turners, right? So mm -hmm. Magician still has two ones to kite, so CZ cannot afford to make that mistake anymore. Okay. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Nice. Just wait, just wait. Okay, nice. Fast breaking, but... Oh. This kite is very detrimental and now hit, gets the hit behind the pallet. Uh, they're actually pushing for the end game. So now uh, the last cypher is at 61%. I believe now they kind of, oh, they're both pushing it. So this is going to be a little tough. It has to be the mercenary that has to go for this uh, last rescue on the magician. Yeah, 61%. I'm not sure if uh -oh. Cynthia can make it that far away. Run's going to be able to avoid. Nice. Mm -hmm. Still has one more elbow pad to play with. Run. Uh, doesn't matter if he gets double hit. Meow Pai has to be really careful. He's just looking at the last cipher. Which one is shaking? Which one is not? I, I don't think hmm. the, the rescue can happen. He's not even at the last cipher. He just reached. Oh, and now oh, the teleport. What? He knows. Wow, how fast. He, he saw it move from 61 to 67. And now he immediately changed he targets rescued. here. Oh my god, he rescued he did. The, the rescue last did minute. happen. True. Oh. Wow. Oh my it's god. It's not over just yet. I think they got to open up another cipher. But Zed. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Jinjie still has the still has the boost from the arrow There we go. Okay. Pew pew. Oh my god! Look at how much the distance. <laughs> Amazing Hi. distance that's covered, and Meow is actually on the back foot here, trying to chase after. So there's a lot of time being bought here, but the cipher has they haven't opened up a new cipher just yet, and the airplane is, has fallen down. So Meow Pai still fighting back here in this matchup. Yeah, still fighting back. Magician is at full health, so that's good. Uh, Masonary is probably going to start... I'm not sure if they're going to start a new Cypher here. They probably yeah. should. Yeah, lower they're, left, they're starting they're at the graveyard. And I do see uh, Nell at the lower left side. The Mercenary is inside the church. So just feeding that tinnitus. He probably knows that another Cypher is shaking. He's monitoring the Cypher here at top broken part. But this is just buying time to decode, right? So they're they're making an agreement here. All right, objectives are moving. But Meow, by oh. using the mobility here just to try and um, establish the territory that he will be guarding this uh, chair. Yeah, I love what Run's doing. She's hiding close enough uh, that gives tinnitus, but mm. not making a sudden movement. Like, she saw Melpai going the other direction, but she's she's patient. She knows she cannot get hit before the Cypher's almost done because she's at Ooh. half health. She's actually okay. extending already. Meow, is he going to catch it on? Oh, wow. Oh. He's already making presence felt, and now we're still at 78%. Has to make it in time for the pop. Oh my god. Hang on. Run. Nerves of Steel gets the hit and now gets the okay. rescue. They can definitely try to go for the win. Uh, well, for the pop here. Gets the hit and now. Oh wow. That's a detention hit. Oh my god. He's able to hit him. Again, a, yeah. uh, I think a little obs, a uh, little stutter there. But yeah, that was actually a detention hit and the mercenary is down. And now we see that oh, the aeroplane is God. down as well. Yeah, he used the dash a little bit too late. Mm -hmm. And Meow just lunges forward, takes him out, and Run is on the floor waiting to be picked up as well. But teleport. no, he's gonna... Oh, oh no, he's trying to pick teleport. up someone. Okay, yeah. all right. So now Meow, I think this is the, the moral victory, right? That at least they were able to negate the five point game. But yeah. wow, it was actually an incredible performance by Meow is how yeah. well he was kind of able to roll with the punches. And even though the harass uh, 
Because he was basically playing with, I mean, once once uh, Rain was actually sent out of the game, he was kind of holding on to the the excitement because no one else could use it, right? So exactly, um, exactly. it was um, it was a valiant effort by the team, I would have to say. But like you said, it's a bit of a you know, moral victory also getting the stuns on the the, uh, the, the hunter. But ultimately, real. this is an, this is an objective based game. You want to pop ciphers, you want to be able to lead them in a different area. But yeah, yeah uh, three to one. I feel like they they know each other so well. That's why Miao Pai IMAX has already made his intention really clear. We're gonna mm-hmm. force escape you, we're gonna use OG characters. He's already made his intention very clear. And when he picks the thief, his intention becomes even clearer. It's like <laughs> telling everyone you have pocket aces and you go all in, right? It's like, oh and I, not I folding. know exactly not folding. And not folding. The, the river. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, Miao Pai knows exactly this is how and next place mm-hmm. brings an yeah. excitement and all of a sudden boom there's so many mm-hmm. instances like for example the first instance when he got hit when he got hit at the graveyard mm-hmm. he could have easily used that speed boost the veteran bonus to run all the way to the window in the red church mm-hmm. but no he stood there and decided yeah. to stun the hunter and yeah. now I activate the excitement by mm-hmm. and that's it so I, I, I would have to say also aside from that it was just well when we we're talking about him changing targets to see CJ uh, I hope I pronounce it. I'm gonna say Z. Z. Yeah. C- no, oh. uh, Z. Oh, CJ. Um, Z. C- yeah. CJ. Um, he was able to get a terror shock off him, but he did have oh, a, a redemption <laughs> kite. Yeah. C- oh, was CZ. My bad. So yeah. yeah, he was able to get a terror shock off him, but the airplaneist was still able to kind of prolong the chase a little bit. Mm-hmm. So yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, coming off of uh, the the situation that Meow, uh, that MX created, and moving on to that. It was it was a bit of a scrambly situation on both parts, but at the end of the day, uh, Meow was even though he was kind of catching up towards the end there when he was guarding the last cipher, he was still in control majority of the match, leading to the three one uh, victory here on his side. So, again, you know what, Meow Pai is terrifying on this uh, Sangria. Exactly, terrifying, menacing, and he picked up on the mistakes so fast, like mm-hmm. CZ, like normal under normal circumstances, you have three ones. Mm-hmm. Two ones, uh, two or three ones at that point. You have two ones, you have full health. No mm-hmm. reason why you should risk that. I think CZ is just so used to doing it throughout the qualifiers right. and he wasn't punished for it, but mm-hmm. Miao Pai was there. And you betcha, he's gonna he's gonna punish <laughs> you so hard there, right? That's what's so scary. If you're playing with a hunter, like a very meticulous and detail oriented hunter like Meow, yeah. any mistake he's gonna sniff it like blood in the water and he's gonna capitalize on it and uh yeah eli sharing his uh sentiments also in our casters chat that like if the terror shock didn't happen it could have been a tie with how the things were going but this is exactly exactly. what happened in the previous match with the basement camping uh, that mm-hmm. the the team took a little a little time for the psychologist to heal the mercenary like they kind of hesitated and that's the opening that meow needed for him to capitalize on that um I would say that um, that hesitation, but here on the other hand, it was more of like an outplay with him switching remnants and then he was able to get the terror shock. So a bit unfortunate on the side of team uh, UTP, but it's not over just yet. At least they negated the five point game. Exactly. I'm just uh, on the bright side. This is good news for GH because Mm -hmm. they are not only playing for a slot. Like they're not really playing to become the champions of the C qualifiers. They, they're, they're playing to get to prepare their entire team to face mm-hmm. not just local teams here, but the international teams, the Chinese mainland teams, the Japanese teams. Yeah. And if they want to do that, they have to come in really, really strong. And it feels mm-hmm. like Miao Pai is doing just that. You want to make a statement, you got to make it now, right? Mm-hmm. You, you want to make a statement, you got to make it now. You gotta dominate in this stage. You don't dominate in this stage. How do you think it's gonna look like coming into the group stages? You're oh, yeah. you're gonna start doubting yourself, right? You're gonna have that moment where you think, mm-hmm. "Can I really do this?" You know, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I like what you brought up there because right now this is this is kind of a controlled environment, right? We just want to mm-hmm. find the best in Southeast Asia, and yeah, mm-hmm. you want to leave no stone unturned when you're here because mm-hmm. it, the the ocean's only much bigger than a small pond. So exactly. the big fishes are definitely swimming in the Call of the Abyss group stage. So it's going to be a big statement for whoever is going to win this, if they're able to win this in emphatic fashion, that yes, we did find the best of the best here, and we're going to join Team Future, which 
ideally is is the right case because that was IBC finals last year. It was it was team FT versus team GH. GH. So yeah. um, again, it's GH. I think this might be GH's. Everyone's uh, kind of gunning for GH to win, but UTP mm -hmm. can definitely play some spoilers here, especially. Uh, that's mm -hmm. what we also thought in uh, IVC 2023 that, oh, you know what? GH seems primed and ready for this victory. Exactly. But IDV has a funny way of trumping that logic over, uh, you know, team spirit and just preparation. So we can't just call it just yet. And I feel like GH learned a lot from that and they're not going to yeah. look past anyone. Exactly. I mean, I I love the way you brought up the the storyline all the way from IVC 2023 up until now and the learning lesson that comes with it. Mm -hmm. And and you know, I I think that was also the moment when Itaqua became an icon, right? Like <laughs> Kugas Kugas uh, Itaqua 4K in Sacred yeah. Heart Hospital. In hospital. That was crazy. Uh, and that's the thing, right? Kuga. I really set the bar high with how he performed there. And the best he could do is, um, well, bring that same type of ferocity and tenacity in the the, gru uh, the group stages of Call of the Abyss. Again, what he did, what he achieved, Kuga I'm talking about, in that, that moment in IVC 2023 will forever be celebrated as an amazing Hunter performance, especially with all the pressure of the, the hometown audience. But... Uh, again, I think that's when when you when you go through that as GH and you feel that 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 the that moment where you're supposed to win but you don't, you got to get better, you got to learn, and I think that's what they're doing now because they've looked flawless as of yet. But we still have to wait mm -hmm. and see if the if if they can continue on this flawless run streak and really denying any uh, best of three games to happen. Yeah, I mean, up next we are going to have UTP's Hunter coming out, and mm -hmm. that that's gonna be Cell G, either Cell G, Crimson, or Maple. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's gonna be Cell G coming up first in Bo yeah. One. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, no, I, com I completely forgot. Also, we gotta like give a sign like emojis for the chat. Sorry, chat right? out. you know we got too we got too invested in the storyline here again. Shout outs to Idia Shroud. I see Chu. I see um, uh, Isaac Rivel see uh, a lot of people saying hi uh, to us. Yeah. Any shout outs that stand out? No? Corey as well. Uh, Dante. I, I'm just trying to call out the new names. Uh, mm -hmm. People that just came in. Rad yeah. as well. Just a girl. Uh, the norm the usuals. Hanako. Um, Horton Hines. And Chantel. Our bestie. Hey Chantel. Mm -hmm. It's, it was her birthday. birthday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's her it was her birthday. Mm -hmm. Hope you had a great time. Um, yeah. I mean we gotta have the emoji right? And mm -hmm. you would be very surprised. I don't think you would be surprised, actually. Okay. Because both emojis are going to be the same color. Oh, they're both green? Oh, yeah, you're right. I believe that UTP from yesterday that you and uh, Chocho did speak about UTP's color or bamboo or greenery. Three. So, uh, yeah, uh, like a three. Uh, a, tr a tree. A, a tree. A so, tree. But, Let's okay, because we changed it up. Because uh, good luck, have fun. It's a clover leaf, right? Clover leaf, so, yeah. Hmm. Utopia. All right, let's let's assign let's assign. I'm gonna I'm gonna change things up here. How about we okay. assign food for the teams here? All right, uh, I love chicken, but <laughs> does it associate to Utopia? <laughs> I, I I mean, I'm just looking at the different uh, food here. There's uh, there's rice, <laughs> there's ramen, <laughs> there's. I'm getting hungry now. Oh my god! Yeah, you're right. We're just making ourselves hungry, but uh, let's just let's just go with How about ramen, past, ramen pasta. and pasta, ramen and, ramen pasta. and pasta. Okay, so ramen, and ramen, ramen for UTP and pasta for GH. I'm just yeah. like, hey, all right, yeah. folks. I'm all gonna, right. you know what I'm having for dinner tonight? Either ramen so. or pasta. Whoever wins, I'm gonna eat that. Wow. Yeah, GH ramen and pasta. pasta. Yeah. GH is okay. pasta, UTP is ramen. Okay, so it seems like they're going to go with the magician play here and a dancer, which we have. I bet we only saw like one dancer from yesterday. So now yeah. the dancer does come back probably by Little Boy. And yeah, uh, Xiao now. Ji. Tell, tell us a little something about Xiao Ji's performance yesterday, no? Uh, Xiao Ji, 3K, very. I think it was more like capitalizing in the end as well. I think Xiao Ji was kind of. Um, he was starting slow, picked up the pace, and turned uh, a draw, uh, mm -hmm. a draw into a win. 
yeah, from a draw into a win. Yeah, so I, I would say that he's probably a slow starter uh, mm-hmm. as of now. But so, if he if he if he mm-hmm. warms up into the game, I feel like he can pick up the pace really quickly. Okay. Um, but I'm not sure if this works because GH they're they're like F1. They're 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 like electric. <laughs> they're like electric cars. There's there's no torque. It's like yeah, just on the gas pedal. Yeah, that's yeah, true. So. That's very true. He's definitely gonna have to like. I hope he's warmed up ever since the the start of that match. And it seems like wow, they're gonna end it out with a gardener pick. Usually, you see the gardener at the start because they're expecting a uh, opera singer, right? Opera singer is like gardener is the closest to uh, uh, a counter to opera singer because with that bubble. But it seems like last pick on that gardener, so we're gonna see some global bands on the magician and uh, dancer side. So mm-hmm. I think yeah, little boy might be yeah, little boy on the priestess, Zhao Kahn on the magician, Nerakun on oh, it's Nerakun's on the dancer and Skyfall on the gardener. So. We were talking about Skyfall, right? Being the main rescuer. He's actually going to be Gardener now, now. He's going to be Gardener. And mind you, there's no rescuer at all. Ooh. So, I, it's kind of risky playing without a rescuer. I mean, mm-hmm. a Wildling would have been good on Skyfall here to yeah. ensure a more successful rescue. Mm-hmm. But uh, I guess they're putting their faith in Skyfall. I think this is one of the few times we see Skyfall mm-hmm. on uh, <laughs> on a different role than a rescuer. So yeah, looking forward to that. I am too. This is definitely gonna test the waters with what he has, and if uh, Xiaoji is actually gonna opt to aim for Skyfall, or will he actually go for either the the magician or the dancer before Nerikun can set anything up? But I'm super excited to see this one because this is very telling because Xiaoji is going to have to, you know, perform at his best. But right away, we're going to head into the match, folks. First round, second half, Far Spice and Nello Mello on the mic. So Nell, take it away. Yeah, beautiful setup by Nerukun with the, with the slow box here. This is actually a really good spot to put that. But once he's starting to break the music boxes, Nerukun should start considering moving away. But it looks like Selji does not care about the dancer hmm. going through a portal, trying to still look for his first target. But Little Boy is already very, very far away. He spots the, you know, the blood trails. But yeah. by the time he makes it out, Priestess will huh. be on the other side of the map. So Skyfall? Wow, Ooh. so he's actually going for Skyfall. So Skyfall is going to have to take this first kite. The bubble is actually there to just allow him to transition. Bubble is gone and oh. Skyfall eats the first hit. So this might be the first chase he is actually looking for. Bought a little time, but eventually he found the best possible target and it's going to be Skyfall. Yeah, he went through the portal. Wait, Skyfall, what are you doing? He's hanging around. Oh, at the back. And, oh, this is actually going to go for the play. Oh, oh my Skyfall. God. A, yeah, a little misstep there. I think he was trying to consider if he was going to break the portal, but then he saw Skyfall at the entrance, and now he's taken down Skyfall relatively early for an opera singer match. So now, let's see. No rescuers on deck, but the Magician and Skyfall do have Tide Turner. Wow, and let's not forget, opera singer is really, really strong when it comes to mm-hmm. teleporting back to the Shadow, which is why he can confidently break the portal without worrying yeah. that you know uh the the roach will cut off the horse <laughs> yeah but it doesn't seem like anyone's coming to rescue at least mm-hmm. not from what we're seeing here i feel like they're like okay skyfall um take you're, one for the you're team. on the ground take one for the team or uh-huh. yeah I, I don't see anyone coming and that's the thing you don't have a rescuer you don't have anyone that can close the distance instantly mm-hmm. and what mm-hmm. happens when 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 opera singer picks on your your teammates. There's nothing you can do except watch him fly back to the manor. Right. Oh. So this is a huge test for how GH is going to be able to pick up the pieces from this because that's going to be the first elimination uh, on deck for uh, Shaoji. So he can actually try and tie this one up. Little Boy has set up a portal here at the top broken area of this map. Dungeon is also here, but he's just going to break that one up and now he's just going to teleport back to see if he can catch anyone else. So GH is also known for slow playing the the mid to end game. So <laughs> let's see how he's good. They're gonna try to get the reins back from this match because they're opening up a lot of ciphers now. Exactly, opening up a lot of ciphers. And mind you, it's only two ciphers done so far. They're slowing it down, but but you have to remember, the more you drag the game, your resources are gonna dwindle for sure. Right. Like music box, you're gonna dwindle. But good thing is Chao Kan still has three magic sticks, so that's good. Mm-hmm. But 
you're not exactly touching Cypher's here, so... Mm -hmm. I, I I don't know, man. I feel like... Um, yeah, Skyfall should be on a different role, but that's something for us to talk about later, because right yeah. now, Nerukun is... Safely decoding while little boy is getting chased here. Yeah. Oh! No, look at the remnants. Wow, through the portal and they actually stunned him. And now this slow box is actually doing a lot of work. Little boy forced to transition away. So again, little boy just proving to be one of the best kiters in the business here. So he's exactly. going to be transferring away. And now Narakun is going to have to take this next kite being chased away. So they're really slow playing this one now. Exactly. They're slow uh -oh. playing it and they're not giving any more chances. Like, you can see the difference right now, right? Um, they're not Yo. giving free hits, but Zhao Kahn, very unfortunate. Um, Xiao Ji caught him in the middle of, um, you know, going through the pallet. But, oh, very decisive bling right there mm -hmm. onto Zhao Kahn. And this is one of the few moments you see that he gets caught off guard. Even I was mm -hmm. caught off guard, and like, boom, instant yeah. bling. Uh, no chance at all to to come back, but he's Shao gonna Ji? block this cipher as well. Yeah, yeah, just monitoring the area, putting some remnants down, just to make sure. But Chaoji is actually on his way to actually have a very dominant mid game that could actually translate really well. We can't call anything yet because GH is known for coming back wow. in really tough situations. But if they don't act and act now, it's gonna be really tough. Little boy uh, is transitioning away. Uh, one Cypher is at 80%, uh, one is at 43 and the other one 15 And a backdoor rescue might cost Xiao Ji. Uh, he, is, uh, he was caught slipping there, and now this is going to allow Zhao Kahn to move on away. And he will not have this area to focus on. But he spots Nerukun. Oh my god, but he lost Zhao Kahn in the process. And mm -hmm. now the Cyphers are already going really, really fast now. The last mm -hmm. Cypher is actually at 43%. Um, right. But fortunately, 4 UTP Xiao Ji. Uh oh. The 80% Cypher is in the graveyard. Yeah. So they're they actually healing up. This is how slow play they're going to do it. They're not going to rush anything yet. They know they have to heal up. Uh, he's going to just clean up some portals here. He's going to try to go through it and see if anyone's going to come on through. <laughs> so now you have a healed up magician and priestess while the, the female dancer is at the at the back exit side. So let's see if they can uh, divide the attention of Xiao Ji so they can push the last two ciphers. Yeah, but, but Zhao Kahn is already oh. at full health. Yeah, he can do plays like that. Beautiful uh, fake, fake juke U-turn, pallet slam. Zhao Kahn, is he going to do the same thing? No, beautifully done. Oh, Zhao Kahn. He, he still has, has one, one more stick to yeah, work with. Yeah, he does. He's going to use it to transition away. Xiao Ji thinks he's turned left, but he actually went straight. Now trying to spot him through the pallet. And now good awareness by Xiao Ji. He's going to get hit. And now the last Cypher is already oh primed now. Yeah, it's already it primed. It. Yeah, this is going to pop it. They know that mm -hmm. they just need a draw for this mm -hmm. to work. Little boy is going to take this time. Um, oh my god, this is just impressive what they're doing here. Yeah, oh, going back and forth, little boy with the portal plays here, and now he has a pallet to work with. Xiao Ji needs to try and get and secure at least a oh! tiny portal away. No, no one's at the back gate. Okay, and Narukun is there, 29%. But then again, it opens up the opportunity mm -hmm. for for the other two survivors to go back to the front gate. But wait, the Terra Shock might change things. Yeah, uh, pretty fast down, pretty fast mm -hmm. down. Oh, he didn't put a remnant, or there was no remnant, so he has to travel all the way back. So this allows Female Dancer to actually heal up. Uh, yeah, he still has Exit Path to work with. Xiao Ji now is going to have his attention here, where Zhao Kahn is at. He's going to hang around this area to try and buy enough time for the back door exit to open while Female Dancer is healing up. Oh, yeah, he has to chair. He has to chair the... He has to the chair magician. the magician now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you, better get, you better get a draw at the very least. Yeah. Nerukun is about to be healed up, so it's safe to say that GH mm -hmm. will survive the onslaught of Opera Singer by Xiao Ji, managing to get two people off the back gate. Can I just say that was ridiculous? Because at one point, he was actually about to get a three person uh, elimination, and that just shows GH, right? Uh, and let's exactly. explore that thought because. Uh, we talked about Skyfall being an excellent rescuer, right? So it was really interesting to see him actually pick a gardener instead of another rescuer role, which he's actually known for. And it was, um, he, the, the rotations did happen on the Hunter. And once he spotted Skyfall, unfortunately, he just waited out the bubble and then he got the hit. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. And any thoughts on the, the curious decision on picking up gardener? 
I I feel like they're trying to confuse Xiao Ji mm-hmm. by putting him on a character that they think, oh, what is he? Is he Kaider? But apparently, you saw that he brought a uh, Tide Turner. You saw yeah. that he brought Tide Turner, right? Mm-hmm. So apparently, they're trying to make him do the rescue at one point. But if you're getting first chase and without the speed boost from the pallets, from the windows, you're just going to be an easy target, especially mm-hmm. when the bubble is gone. And it doesn't seem like Skyfall was um, very familiar. Like playing consistently with Gardener as well as a kiter, mm-hmm. um, but even then, I would say you can see the standards there, right, Tosh? Mm-hmm. The standards of GH entire roster, right. even with three players, one player down, three players left, with only almost two ciphers done, they mm-hmm. still managed to put all the way to end game and have two escape. Right. Imagine, imagine if Skyfall wasn't was on a different role, a wildling, mm-hmm. something that the Opera Singer would give up on. Mm-hmm. And try to chase the three, right? That would be exactly. So that would and, be so hard. And note that Skyfall still had Tide Turner. So again, uh, just to add to that, yeah, with with the Gardener pick, and he was actually also caught in a bad area, the top broken part, and there's no broken walls. And I mean, that's where that that's where Opera Singer wants to, you to be at. So he tried to transition away. And yeah, maybe the nuances weren't as um, apparent with how you're supposed to use Gardener because. Uh, yeah, there are players that use Gardener as a main rescuer, but if you chase the rescuer first, you run that risk of having a long chase. But luckily for uh, luckily for the hunter, it really paid off. So now we're checking out the match stats here. Uh, mm-hmm. Again, a great start for the hunter, but then it just showed GH's prowess and a- ability to just turn anything, turn the tides in their situation because other teams may have buckled under the pressure of Opera Singer, but the fact that they were still able to tie it after the first elimination happened at 2 minutes 37 seconds and they prolonged the game an even 5 more minutes without without mitigating the resources as we mentioned is yeah. just i would say it's it's pretty masterful i mean the the numbers don't give justice to how incredible the back and forth was and you still have to give it up to Shaoji for trying to uh, win mm. all the way till the end and it looked like it at at one point but they were really able to stall them out and you gotta also admire the placements of the ciphers and how well they were able to play their roles well. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I think the communication was definitely excellent. They mm-hmm. knew exactly what to do. Hunter, Hunter's changing target, going to the back, back, going to the back, mm-hmm. gate, going to the front, broken. You know, all this kind of <laughs> communication. Like they, they call it so fast. I can imagine them calling it precisely fast. That's why they move so. F- they they move so accurately. Like yeah. before the hunter even comes, they're already like two steps, three steps away. Uh, further away from the hunter, so I guess that plays a vital role. Mm-hmm. You can see for yourself the containment time. Um, everyone was doing their part, decoding triple digits, doing uh, more than sixty seconds containment time, with the exception of Skyfall, which he actually bought a lot of time sitting on chair. Yeah. He did. Either he way. really did. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I like that you point that out. It's like the constant communication that was being displayed, moving as one unit. Like I, mm-hmm. I think. And that's so hard if in a four-person VC that you're still able to understand where to rotate to, uh, where the hunter is moving to. And that's Mm -hmm. the beauty of this game, especially if you're a survivor player. If you can see teamwork like this being put into action, especially not Mm -hmm. the best start of the game, but they Mm -hmm. were still able to manage that and uh, able to get a victory in round number one. So GH, strong showing uh, at Red Church, which it was their map choice. So I'd say they, they definitely win this this round especially mm. since they they kind of set the time the tempo and pace of this match hopefully utp can bounce back especially when it comes to their map selection yeah i mean you gotta give props to cell as well under that immense pressure oh yeah uh yeah right you, you still managed to get a draw could have been a lot worse gh mm-hmm. could have gotten that three escape as well uh, mm-hmm. very very possible but managing to get a draw is still very very good because mm. the score difference is five to three very very close actually right yeah. five to three uh, very you can come back uh very well like it's, it can still be anyone's game yeah and i think knowing that the point difference isn't so much now you just have to focus on the round wins because again we look at round wins folks before the score difference yeah if they're able to maybe tie this one and get a three one and then we're all tied up that's actually good to get to game number three so yeah the fact that they're still keeping that score line not too 
um, detrimental, like an eight one or a like a eight one possible, a seven to seven yeah, to two, seven yeah. to two, something like that. So, yeah, that's that's kind of devastating. But if you're able to just keep things kind of just at a, a one a one point different a difference or two or three, that's still doable. Exactly, still doable. Um, but GH, I I have to say the survivors um, are playing flawlessly. Mm-hmm. Miao Pai is so good at capitalizing on mistakes, punishing, punishing, Ooh. overextending, mm. Mm. and now UTP going to their the map that made them famous, Sacred Heart. They are they are go to <laughs> home map, you know, the base, the home base, Sacred Heart True. Hospital, and um, I think it will pose a bit of a problem as well because they're supposed to thrive in Sacred Heart Hospital, mm-hmm. but. GH survivors thrive in yeah. this map as well. Unless that same buff, yeah. Uh-huh. Unless. Unless if someone decides to pick up Itakoa and repeat uh, the nightmare. <laughs> it was how was there was no night watch, right? This entire uh, no. fires, I believe. Which is weird, I think. Because I honestly, what happened? If yeah, I know Chad is asking for it. When we're talking about the different priorities when it comes to Hunter, of course, we have Opera Singer around one, right? But I'm surprised that we don't see in round two. And it was best of two, technically, because like we've seen a lot of two zeros. We haven't mm-hmm. seen a single Night Watch. What is happening, chat? Yeah, I mean, I have no idea what's going on. But mm-hmm. um, this is what makes it exciting, though. Like, we mm-hmm. can't predict everything. And when the things that we predict uh, goes even further than what we think it would be. Oh, yeah. I mean opens up a room for new excitement and keeps Mm -hmm. things fresh this is uh, the one job i like being proven wrong because usually in jobs you don't want to be proven wrong like oh no right right. but here it it expands your knowledge and it tells better stories that you know what the the competitive scene the meta is evolving if you're able to find different ways uh to Mm -hmm. approach a problem i know we look at uh chinese mainland as the one to set the bar and they are but then it also I, I feel like GH also in their own right they find ways or they find interesting strategies to go about and get different game plans mm-hmm. to go about certain matchups and I think mm-hmm. we need to find more teams and players that are are willing to push the envelope like that you know what even even rain I would have to say it's like he's exactly. very persistent to make the to make the veteran meta work and exactly I mean it, it did happen like lawyer got buffed and like you know with thief dropping like the flashlights it's getting there, but you need someone to just show you the way. And then once they prove that, aha, this does work, and then that's the new standard. Exactly. I mean, MX has been playing Lawyer, Gardener, even before the buffs, right? Before the Lawyer buff. And right now, everyone's like, oh, if you used to play Lawyer back in those days, mm-hmm. people will say, you're throwing the game. You're playing Lawyer. You, you, <laughs> Eli, you're sorry, throwing the, the game. <laughs> Eli. <laughs> <laughs> but right now, it seems to be S tier, everyone's favorite go to mm-hmm. go to character. In fact, people will call you crazy mm-hmm. for not picking lawyer in search. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Eli, sorry, this cop is weird. Eli, <laughs> it, it is, it is. <laughs> my bad, my bad. Yeah. Do you remember the memes that we were asking for the group stage? I sent it in the chat, and someone had a meme of Eli, uh, kind of saying, "Oh, don't pick lawyer." And now a year later, here we are. Eli Whoa. singing the praises of the lawyer. That's crazy. The lawyer. Exactly. And meaning the lawyer to boot. Yeah. <laughs> solo queue, by the way. He, he put it up there in the, his solo queue survivors. And I mean, he told people not to use Mind's Eye, but. <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly. And you you solo queue, right? No, you solo queue with Postman, right? How's that? I, How does I that solo queue? I solo queued before. Mm-hmm. And it was very, it was very stressful. Dependent. Yeah, it was mm. stressful because I usually play rescuer. Mm. Um, I usually play mercenary when I when I uh, solo queue mm-hmm. because I feel like um, a lot of the teams, a lot of the people, they like to play decoders, kiters. Mm. The moment you see people picking up um, prisoner, mechanic, composer, mm-hmm. lawyer, the only thing left for you to play is support slash yeah. rescuer mm. room. Because I'm like, okay, okay, I trust you, I bro. Guess, I trust I you guess, to kite. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah but... <laughs> More often than not, they trust you to save. That's what yeah. they do. <laughs> uh, yeah. But again, like every other player, every every identity five player ever, mm-hmm. you you got some good rescues, you got some bad rescues, you got some oh, good yeah. games, some yeah. bad games. Yeah. Uh, I mean, 
more often than not, like I have to tell myself if like, oh, it's it's a loose streak, I should stop playing for a bit, maybe relax, <laughs> talk to Nell, like, hey, Nell, what do I do? Or like, just kind of hang out for a bit and take a take a step back. But exactly, yeah, rank can get a, a quite crazy, or maybe switch to quick match, just so you can be like, all right, let's just uh, that's enough of the rest. Let's just for enjoy now. hide yeah. and seek, hide and seek, hide and seek, <laughs> chase some shadows. Right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know what? Speaking about new characters, right? Um, mm -hmm. Like coming into the meta, I'm surprised that no one has picked Novelist yet. Yeah, Novelist is so strong, it. right? Yeah, yeah, we've been seeing a lot of streams like lately yeah. of players like utilizing Novelist in full VC. So I mm -hmm. thought we'd see a little more Novelist come into play here. Again, maybe it's in Southeast Asia. We have to check out if Novelist is going to get picked up in other regions as well. Uh, mm -hmm. We have yet to see, but yeah, Southeast Asia, I'm not sure. Maybe they want to play things conservatively. I was really looking forward to some switcheroo gameplays with the novelist switcheroo i know mm. yeah, beautiful stuff going on there yeah I, I like that i mean there's a few spots in a uh, sacred heart hospital where you can use the switcheroo you know yeah, like for example cage. yeah vaulting through the bird cage <laughs> and then hi i switcheroo perform switcheroo with you and all of a sudden i'm back in the bird cage mm -hmm. one thing one thing I'm actually intrigued, curious to know is if you can activate Switcheroo when you're falling from second floor. Ooh. It's like, okay, I'm falling down, okay, and I'm looking Boom. up, my, my camera's up. Boom, you're the one going down. You're falling, no. <laughs> Not oh! me, you're I, I thought that was Novelist, now it's Lawyer. It's my bad. Yeah. That's Freddy. Yeah. Answering the call, answering mm -hmm. the call for more OG picks. But uh, cheerleader, uh, right? We were talking about novelists and cheerleader. Cheerleader has been making her way, making her rounds in this competition at least, and mm -hmm. I'm excited to see how that is going to play out. We, it's safe to say whoever picks the veterans is going to be uh, Rain, right? Or Rain. is it going to be someone else? Because lawyer again is really good. Anyone could use lawyer, and it'll be very That's viable. True. That's true. Uh, even even Run uses lawyer, but mm, true. Um, but she, I, I, I think I would trust no one else to do rescue besides run. Yeah, um, she's she is stable. that stable. Yeah, I mean, that's just something about her. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's the six apple tall height. Oh, it's thing six. So sure. taller than Chocho, the five apple tall. <laughs> yeah, she, she's seven feet apparently. I don't know. <laughs> seven feet. Wow, that's a lot of apples. Five yeah, apples. Exactly. Must, must be some big apples. Like for yeah, it to be five probably. apples stacking seven foot tall. Yeah. Um, in New Zealand, they probably grow them pretty big. I don't know. Oh, wow. So <laughs> pretty tall. Hopefully. Exactly. Speaking of apples, oh gosh, I've lost so much golden apples. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All in. That much. We have to. We have to solidify as commentators to see see where we're gonna put our apples at. Exactly. I mean, mm -hmm. um, all in this time. Uh, mm -hmm. I rather have no apples. <laughs> then uh, then conservative. No apples, then conserve. Yeah, playing conservatively, oh. it's like, oh, nah. We only but hey, ones. Mm -hmm. yeah, I like that. YOLO, YOLO, exactly. But right now, I think I have a fair idea who's playing what. Um, All right. Run's, Run's probably going to be playing Worst Officer. Rain's mm -hmm. going to be playing Lawyer. Uh, is probably going to be playing Cheerleader. Or e either either mm -hmm. CZ yeah. or Sinjie because I feel like CZ plays Antiquarian more. True, actually, yeah. those two players they could switch because they both have Kiter slash support in their arsenal. So, like you called out, uh, Nell Run is on that first officer. Rain is on the whoa Meow Pai on the An. So we have whoa. seen his An before, and he's the type of hunter that persists on this. But I mean, you could just run into hospital and just kind of disrupt the cat levels but that has That's... not discouraged uh meow in any stretch of the imagination that like no this map isn't good for a hunter he's like watch me yeah i i definitely want to watch meow pie because i was about to say i really want to predict that Anne is not going to do well mm -hmm. in this map Mm -hmm. Especially if uh, the survivors get into really, really strong spots and dodging your um, your cats every single mm -hmm. time, uh, each 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 missed cat is going to be so is going to be so devastating for yeah. and because you gotta wait again until the skill cooldown. So I I, I don't know. I feel like if there's a few other options, but maybe he's trying to make disciple work. I love Anne. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, but oh yeah. It's gonna be such a tough chase with different elevations, windows, 
Uh, let's see him make it work. I mean, true, <laughs> true. I mean, they already locked it in, right? We can't speculate anymore, but I would definitely agree with you that there are stronger hunters on paper, right? It's it's one thing to say it's on paper, but in practice, Meow has always been uh, able to push that, especially in this tournament, right? He brought out Anne in Chinatown, for God's sakes, in round number two, when mm -hmm. other hunters were available. Uh, but exactly. that is how he plays, folks. But once again, we see the lineup here. Run, Sicha, uh, Rain, and CZ will be surviving. Hopefully, they get the win here to prolong to game number three. And Meow on the end. Once again, Nello Mello and Potch Spice are your commentators for this first half of the second round. All right, heading into the game, and it's already making the rotations. Runs going up the second floor. Um, he's already at the birdcage. CZ is going to be spotted Ooh. out, getting caught the first cat. Yeah, the window's the best place to jump through. Yeah, it's good, it's good. He, he's not able to jump anymore. He's gonna silence CZ here, but again, he's he kind of has to wait. Mm -hmm. Oh, he actually brought top down, I feel. Oh yeah, that's yeah. confined space as well. Okay, so at least the windows won't be a factor for him. Able to drop another cat, and Seeds actually gets to use the cheer onto the cheerleader. Silences it right away, just so that she's slowed down, Nell. And now Meow is going to try to close in the distance here. Can he make it towards the pallet? Able to get it? No blink and no way for him to use that hit just yet. Yeah, I love this kite. I love this kite. He's going to jump. Oh my god! What kind you turn? of was that? That was so fast. What? Exactly. Oh, oh, I to get the oh, oh my God, CZ! No, no, it's 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 hard. It's hard. It's hard now for Miao Pai. He missed the bling. Uh, he missed the cats. He did not even produce the stuns that he needed. Like, yeah, uh, okay. yeah, probably first hit. Okay, but now he's going to go into. Oh my God, the roots area. This is such a bad place for Anne. Yeah, Especially when you have no more with the walls. And the thing is, he's not even. A, he doesn't have the cross yet, so this is going to be really tough for him to go for. And I would have to say the cheerleader is still doing an amazing job so far. Let's see if he's going to make this leap happen. He's just waiting for the right opportunity. And we oh. do see that the lawyer is here as well. He's going to use the cheer for the distance to be established and silences it right away. But the pallets now providing enough distance here and prolonging the chase. Oh my god, CZ is kiting like a god here. That's a four cyphers kite. Still going through wow. windows. CZ, he's yeah. probably going to kite for until Lawyer actually finishes the cipher here. Uh huh. This, uh, that's so insane. Away. That's ridiculous how he's Rain. able to do that. And now it's actually, this is what MX wants. He wants to be the one to be chased first. He can just vault oh, whenever because no. there's no fear of Terror Shock. And Meow is actually put in a really tough spot. This is the most uh, compromising situation we've seen him so far in. Yeah, this is really hard. I that's why I said it's so hard, especially when you in this miss this map, yeah. Yeah, you miss the first you miss the first hit. Mm -hmm. Uh the first bleed, you miss the cats. Mm -hmm. It's not that he doesn't leap perfectly, he dashes beautifully, but Right. Yeah, it's just I, so hard. I would say this. Oh my god, we actually saw him try to just uh, bait out um or just um uh, ducking in the windowed area, but Rain now seems like he might be relegated to actually falling in this area unless oh no unable to get to that window but yeah i yeah. would have to say this is utp's game to win because of how well the kite happened at the start from cz yeah i mean beautiful kite so far from cz i think rain was expecting a pallet uh, mm -hmm. there but cz probably did not mention yeah i already used up the pallets in the area <laughs> right so uh, that's only so much a lawyer can do, especially mm -hmm. when the end has the cross ready, especially after that hit. But, gosh, look at the cypher progress, 55% and, and only counting. the first chair, right? Yeah, <laughs> and the thing is, the Antiquarian is still here. And now the Antiquarian is making her presence known, gonna get an early hit. He can go for that support and stun. Run is also around the area to provide that support. So let's see how Meow is gonna try and go for this situation. A win for Meow would actually be a tie. So the fact that they're actually oh. taking him to that limit is huge. And now that Cypher is almost primed now. Yeah, okay, he hit run, that's it. They're just gonna, they're just gonna pop whenever someone goes down or they can just 
Yeah, yeah they're gonna I wait think for he's them. just waiting for the cat. The cat. Um, mind you, he does not have trump card, so he does. There's not. no teleport to work with. Okay, gets the hit, oh, but no! the run actually. Oh, hang on, Oh, oh my God. God. the fly <laughs> Xingjie! Oh my god! Xingjie is gonna pay the price for meddling, but it's probably gonna buy all his other three teammates to safety because now the gate yeah. is already at 50%. Miao Pai, I think this is the first time he's only gotten one kill in this tournament. And, and the fact that he was able to do this in grand final is big, and Miao Pai knowing that uh, this match was uh, a tough one. Him getting a one-person uh, elimination is a moral victory for him. And just like that, UTP right. has fought back and fought back in ferocious fashion with how they were able to perform. And, you know, we were concerned about an Anne in this map. And this is the map that they chose to go up against mm -hmm. uh, Team GH. And Exactly. Uh, what have what we thought on paper happened in practice and really struggles in this match in this map not just in the ruins area but also the the center area that that hospital area it's just so hard because of exactly. the ch change of elevation yeah I, I i didn't expect him to use 612 uh detention mm. confined space because if you're gonna play like that you might as well uh, you might as well bring 3612. I, I guess he has to block the windows too. But if you are afraid of the walls mm. that much, you might as well play Bloody Queen here. Yeah. He's still able to end up with a draw and force a mm -hmm. survivor into a mistake. True. And yeah, but now, nada. Yeah. Nada. I mean, I'm, yeah, maybe BQ, a safer hunter bet. But I really think UTP did their damage. Um, I uh, we do have to give UTP their their kudos and their plan worked out perfectly. A lot of people in the chat were saying, "Oh, MX and Meow are gonna fight again in game number three. Yes, they did really well. Not out of the woods yet because, like we said before, you're giving GH the hospital and and you're buffing up their survivor team. Imagine if they have the same mindset. They actually make Skyfall spawn like same where Run is. Have first officer." And it could be a recipe for disaster. We just have to wait and see. But the fact that they were able to get a victory over Meow, and this is the first victory that anyone has gotten over Meow, is a huge deal. So congratulations to UTP. Moral victory. Job isn't over yet. You still have to be able to push for that game number three to call yourselves the champs of the qualifiers. Exactly. I would be very, very uh, shocked if GH actually pulls off um, an upset, like a, a four-man escape in this game. Because wow. that's what they need to get a 2-0 yeah. sweep, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's really possible, I guess. Possible. As long as long as, um, as long as UTP's Hunter kind of gets frustrated and uh, flabbergasted by the gameplay of uh, GH because they like to drag the game a little, frustrate mm -hmm. the Hunter, yeah. right? Frustrate. If, if I may ask... It, it... Who else does Xiaoji use that we can speculate to bring in this map? Would you happen to know? Uh, because it Itakwa. seems like Itakwa is one. And we've seen how yeah, well, uh, he, he has. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, he has Breaking Wheel as well. And he, uh, mm -hmm. according to stats, he has X Boy. X Boy too. Wow. So, so -boy. that's a lot. Yeah. That's going to be a good one if we're going to see X Boy. I don't know Breaking Wheel. Because again, change of elevations, a lot of walls. Uh, might be a little tough, but. And again, these hunters, they, they whatever we think is on paper, it doesn't really translate so much. Exactly. But I would have to say this was the most, um, I would say the this, the team was able to really push me out to his limits. And very uncharacteristic, him, him missing that blink. And mm -hmm. the chase was just so good by CT. Yeah, I think that was a very risky blink as well, because it's like... It's like you're about to enter through a door in your into your bedroom and you decide to blink towards the corner. And you, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, you, but then say, again... I'd say it's uh, with that blink, especially it's it was like a no-look blink. It was very anticipatory, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it was... Ultra instinct. <laughs> a little bit. It's kind of like if you have a piece of garbage and you want to throw it to a trash can, but the lights yeah. are off. I'm a, I'm a ah, predictor. Gotcha. Like, you know it's there because it's like it's in your house, right? But the yeah. lights are still off. So it's like, huh, I know someone's going to be there. But am I in the right area to do it? Exactly. I like that analogy. 
uh, yeah. Ultra Instinct, uh, Knowing the Place, yeah. R.I.P. Akira Toriyama Sensei. Oh by the way. wow! Okay, rest yeah. in power. Let's go. Rest in power, exactly. Mm-hmm. But speaking about power, it's not over just mm-hmm. yet. G.H. Uh, still has the survivors coming up next. Uh, mm. And UTP, very good start in game number two, yeah. three to one. Yeah, so three to one against Miao Pai. They're starting to feel Miao Pai right there. They're starting to feel mm-hmm. his gameplay, his strategy, his uh, picks and bans, and ultimately, him choosing disciple and missing that blink. Well, CZ redeemed himself, I would say, mm-hmm. from that yeah. uh, magician terror shock. True, true. What, what terror? That never happened. What are you talking about? I, I can't remember. I, I thought it yeah. happened. Final yeah, Destination. We just okay. we're just focusing Inception. on the match number two. That was again an incredible performance. Wow. And I guess you know what? It's not just the hunter that needs to you know um, kind of marinate and cook. It's it's also the survivors, right? So now they've come in and they've made their presence known with this map pick and they also got i i'd say the, that that's a huge w on their side up against uh meow i think exactly. though maybe meow might uh bench the an for now unless it's a favorable map or it's a favorable mm. um survivor lineup for that an because they mm. really knew how to play around the the hospital because uh yeah. it really showed that they they were just prepared yeah I mean, unless if you're Dong Shen, <laughs> <laughs> Big Boss Dong X. I mean, exactly. that, he he played Anne in Sacred Heart Hospital too, and the leaps were insane. But yeah, like what you mentioned, I think the survivors were a little more prepared uh, in in terms of what they can do against an Anne. Not to mention the cheerleader utilizing the cheering so well. The speed yeah. boost was timed so well as well, mm-hmm. and it definitely bought a lot of time. But for now, so, disciple, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I will say this. This mm-hmm. is a bit of an interesting situation because it's reminding me of IVC. Because remember in IVC finals, GH had a great start. But then in game number two, that's when FT started to chip away at the confidence. Mm-hmm. So luckily, this is not a best of five. This is a yeah. best of three. But this exactly. is where it's very telling. And this is where we saw a bit of the survivors kind of crumble. So let's see now with uh, the time away and the new lineup of survivors, how they're going to be able to answer adversity. Because like you said, they can end it here and now, but will they go for the conservative play and just go for a three person escape and push for the game number three and just allow uh, just allow them to still hold on to the two person lead? Or will they go all out, uh, you know, uh, and just go balls to the wall in this matchup and just go like, let's go for the four person escape. We can do it because Usually, mm-hmm. in that mindset, that's when a lot of the survivors get punished and the hunter could catch you overextending. That's true. That's true. I like what you're saying. Um, mm-hmm. Patience, uh, analyzing the situation first. Mm-hmm. If, if Skyfall doesn't play Gardener again, I think it's very likely <laughs> they can do a three man escape. I, I, mm-hmm. I would put them at three man escape mm-hmm. uh, simply because I feel like getting a four man escape at this point, it's like, unless if the hunter's playing. Changing targets, playing like a Wu Chang, and not mm. finding any targets until two and a half minutes in. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Uh, That's how that you play story. reptilian. You play like a Wu Chang, just hit everyone. And <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. But the win conditions are very clear already. Mm. Anything less yeah. than a four escape, we're gonna see a game number three. Yeah. Um, but you know what? The night is still young, and right. uh, second half is going on pretty soon here. I would say. I'm more interested in who's going to come in next. Would it mm. still be Xiaoji? Will it be Crimson? So Ooh, some some gamekeeper, gamekeeper in this gamekeeper. map, just set up traps yeah. everywhere. Gamekeeper is really good when it comes to to um, camping as well. Mm. Like uh, it's like a Leo, right? You you mm. camp, and I tell you, there's so many good spots in Sacred Heart Hospital. Mm-hmm unnoticed spots like you right. you would think that it's harmless but the boom boom he, he hooks you in you basically mm-hmm. stuck like what's this small little box doing <laughs> between me and the, <laughs> like you know sandwiching me uh and that happens a lot especially in front of the mm-hmm. the the runes area there's right. like little boxes left and mm-hmm. right the 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 mm-hmm. fountain the statue yeah. mm-hmm. yeah, I, I would love to see that but 
you gotta catch one first before you can actually camp that way yeah so. we can only hope and see if if man mm -hmm. if if they're able to make their a game number two victory with a game keeper i'll be a huge believer in utp if they're able to do that but mm -hmm. i mean like you said also i am also a big believer that maybe a three person escape is very doable and mm -hmm. uh, pretty much in the horizon so i think if if our, if again if maybe gh is talking now i think yeah maybe they just want to go for a conservative gameplay in, in game number three secure a three person mm -hmm. escape or maybe they could push for more if they want to and try that mm -hmm. but uh just respect it enough to push for game number three and that's when they can solidify their victory because they still have mm -hmm. the two-point advantage i believe from the previous game yeah i think they're just being chilling at the moment you know <laughs> like being chilling there mm -hmm. good luck have fun that's their motto and even right, during the interviews right. was like yeah we just we just uh just playing our game just doing mm -hmm. the best that we can and i feel like you know uh being chilling is the way to go here like you play players play their best Mm -hmm. some players play their best when they're relaxed calm communications mm -hmm. on par like well, we're feeling good right now we're just playing mm -hmm. it and yeah some players play very well under stressful situations shouting left and right Why do you, <laughs> you know like you, you know which, right, the difference in between yeah which player the voice are you like are you better under light situations or do you like stressful situations like wh where do you I, perform best i think i perform best in the middle like a in little bit middle. of stress a little uh -huh. bit of stress when you're too late back you're like oh yeah he's not gonna catch up to me and when you boom elbow pad boom oh my god how did that hit <laughs> you know that kind of situation a little bit of stress is always good and then back, you're tilted so. oh no how did mm. i get hit twice in a row by a leo <laughs> why am i going all in on this rescue oh no uh, oh. why did i call with seven two <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Chocho. She gets it. <laughs> Chocho called and had nothing. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> but hopefully we'll see some game three action. But for now, we're going to see the picks and bans in the second half of game number two here at Sacred Heart Hospital. Uh, global bans on the magician and dancer side, but we do see Aeroplanus and Priestess. I think really good bans off of Shaoji side because Shaoji respects little boy on that Priestess. And mm -hmm. Aeroplanist has been just a constant ban throughout because of how well he performs. Oof, Prospector Nell at the first two picks here. Really strong, really strong statement from GH to start off. Yeah, Narukun's probably gonna be playing um Prospector. Like that's that's his um character. Actually, that's his character and Chao Kahn's, but Chao Kahn has more or less shifted towards uh, rescuing yeah. um Aeroplanist, maybe, but it's been mm -hmm. banned, so mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really want to see a, a novelist here, though. Like, it's it's so nicely utilized, right? Uh, it can be nicely utilized in this situation. Like, oh, hey, uh, last I first almost popped. The oh, hunter is down. Switch. You couldn't make it in time. Switcheroo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> there's it, it's. I would say it's super creative to use the novelist. It uh, is. Just have to hope and pray to see it more in other qualifiers or maybe in the group stage. Because for now, or maybe it's going to be the kicker here. It seems like we are going to go with the uh, first officer to start things out. And now we're going to see the river. Yes! Yes! Oh! Novelist! Yes! It's like we got Novelist! a flush on the last draw. Let's go. Let's go, baby. I, I'm so excited to see this. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm so excited to see um, how they are going to do the elevator magnet pull into a switcheroo. So, whoa! Into... <laughs> yeah, oh my god. That's going to be crazy. <laughs> Guys, get your cameras ready and clip your... Yeah, please clip that if that is going to be the case. But chat, your prayers also have been answered just like ours. We're seeing our first novelist here in the Koa C qualifiers. Whoa. A novelist on Zhao Kahn's side. We're going to see a hermit from Xiao Ji. Her wow, hermit. I, I think hermit, our hermit is good. Like, that's mm -hmm. only a psychologist to help you heal yeah but then again don't underestimate don't underestimate it if they need to i i've seen gh done it before kiting kiting and starving uh the hermit of presence yeah <laughs> they can do that so it's interesting and you gotta commend shaoji for this this is technically a do or die time for him that he needs to get um he wants to prolong this game and, and really win for his team and he's gonna do it with hermit and we talked about it right hermit players 
Um, Nilu, shout out to Nilu. He was a crazy Nilu? hermit, by the way. We were able to see him at IBC. I think yeah. hermit round one or like early rounds is really good because you're not as pressured yet. So Xiaoji uh -huh. bringing it out with the pressure immense is going to be huge. Exactly. I mean, well, it's mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, there's only a little, <laughs> there's only little ways you can actually kite, especially when you don't have any items mm -hmm. or abilities to do, especially like when you're a psychologist, right? Um, you, you, you're very reliant. Um, mm -hmm. you very rely on team support because otherwise you'd just be a running presence gathering punching <laughs> back so I yeah I, I I mean that's that's very very true like and the thing with Hermit is uh, it's fine I can change target if I want to because mm -hmm. I can't hit you it's fine I'll find someone who I can hit right. <laughs> I'll, I'll find someone out of position mm -hmm. and Skyfall I mean yeah, hypnotism is going to be pretty good, but you know, it's like a tracker. If you manage to stun him while you he's on the club, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's like the cat, the cat on end, a slightly lesser version of that. But yeah, I guess we'll have to see, Hush. Yeah, we will definitely have to see. I'm super excited to see not only our first novelist, but our first hermit of the qualifiers for Southeast Asia. And the fact that Zhao Khan <clears throat> is piloting this novelist is going to be huge with the way he was able to come up with immense plays with the aeroplanist. is very telling. Once again, Park Spice and Nello Mello at your service for the second round of the second half. Ooh, little boy taking the first kite as the psychologist trying to maintain distance. Salji was unable to bait the red light because when you are doing that, you, you know, you lift up your cane. Mm -hmm. If they crank up the volume, they can listen to your position. Mm -hmm. So that's really good. Oh, nice tidbit there. Actually, we, we're seeing it live oh. also. It's like really good. But it seems like, uh, yeah, he was able to break down that pallet and little boy might actually use this, uh, this area to actually transition away but he is gonna try to get a zap onto him gets the attraction and gets the hit onto the psychologist yeah, yeah but i I'm, I'm not really sure the game plan here like no connections we've mm -hmm. seen how this gone we've oh, seen how yeah. this go before oh, i didn't right? even notice that thank you for pointing that out yeah no connections at all yeah and uh -oh. three cycles about to be done it's actually really fast considering it's only one minute so yeah, for a hermit match right usually you want a round start or Usually you want to connect it at the start, oh! but the blink is going to connect onto Zhao Kahn. As yeah. I was saying, you want to be able to connect the ciphers at the start. Wow. And then once you have a uh, down, that's going to happen. But Narakun's already on the case here. He's going to go oh! for the Eye of Sauron, but he gets the stun away. And he's actually going to save up. The switcheroo happens. Oh my god, Nell. Oh, the double flywheel baiting the hit. Confusing Selji for a moment there. But Selji is just one hit away from full presence. Zhao Kahn! Getting Ugh. baited a little bit by the red light, I feel, but Chokan has so. nothing to work with now. He doesn't. He's going to try to gain that presence once again, but it's so hard. He's going to get the hit onto the Novelist, and now hopefully he'll try to connect, but two Cyphers are about to pop. At least one can be controlled, and now it seems like this is where Xiao Ji is really going to ramp up the presence for our, the, our, our Hermit here. Oh my god, and at the worst place the possible to rescue from, right? Yeah, oh, not okay. good. Yeah. I mean, this strategy works if you can get a survivor down before uh, the, the cyphers are actually completed in time. Mm -hmm. So that makes it still pretty okay. Two, two cyphers, two and a half skyfall coming in. Oh, but uh, he is. Oh, you can see. Yeah, like you pointed out, he is actually hit by the blue. So let's see. He's going to try to use the attraction here. Still some time left onto the novelist. Now able to get it. And we see that Zhao Khan is going to get chased once again. Able to get the magnet on him, though Narakun stuns him away, but still continues on the chase. Switch. Boom, baby. But it's not going to make a lot of difference because... What? Oh, he touched the side to share damage. Nice. Oh, wow. What a play to allow Zhao Khan a little more life. And Narakun, he's going to try to get the attraction here. Yeah. Well, I'm not really sure of this kind of play because... Cyphers have completely stopped at uh -oh. this moment. So, G, a little bit of sh overshoot, but... Whoa! Now oh, Zhao Khan actually picked up the magnet and, re <laughs> he and did. Why? Oh, he's playing a lot of roles now. Gets the hit, though. Novelist is down once again. We're still stuck at three Cyphers remaining. The last Cyphers are actually at the 10% mark, while the 76 and 74 Cyphers moving along. This is what Hermit brings to the table. He could prolong it for so long. Everyone's injured, Posh. The Cyphers have stopped. 
mm -hmm. it has stopped completely. Five remaining ciphers have been connected. It's so slow right now. Mm -hmm. Everyone's injured. I don't know, man. I feel like Xiaoji's pyramid is actually going to be able to get more than free. just the yeah more than just a draw. Right? Oh my God, yeah. Nerokun! He's gonna have to share the hits with everyone. And Novelist, he's gonna use the Eye of Sauron to try and negate the rescue. What? But it does happen. Zhao Kahn gets hit by the blink. Oh no! He's not letting Zhao Kahn go. He's holding onto him tightly, Nerukun? clinging onto him. Nero, Nero. He's he's Ooh, he, he drops him in time, and there's no other magnet to use. And now this is going to be the first person out of the game. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to see a game number three at the very least. Oh my goodness, Posh. What are we witnessing? This not even. This is not. Can I just say? Can I just say this, Nell? No. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I'm just going to say this. GH. I'm pretty sure they have. They do not like this map <laughs> anymore because it's the same it's match with Kuga. Yeah, they do not like this map, and they do not... I, I feel like their light-up isn't good against, <laughs> against the, the Hermit here. Yeah, for sure. Look they, at the stun going on! Wow, double stun, Skyfall forced to use the pocket watch, Shaoji. He's gonna try to look around. So if they're able to turn the situation around and just deny points and get a tie, that's gonna be a huge for GH. But so far, Skyfall is being targeted oh here. Oh my god! Able to get it, and now Skyfall one more hit away from actually uh, going down here. Yeah, he, it, it's it's really hard. And he even has the red, blue charge. He does. So he's actually going to hurt the psychologist uh, along with this hit. So it's not looking too well. He's going to get the attraction. He's going to get the hit. They're going to share oh it. Psychologist is also hit as well. 4K. <laughs> yeah, this looks I'm really... Sorry, I'm just calling it really fast. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, that's you're, you're a numbers man. And numbers do not lie with how this is going. But you have to give it up for Xiao Ji with this Hermit. Again, it was do or die for him. For him to be able to pilot this complex of a character and, and dominate at the early and mid uh, point of this game, is, is it's huge. Yeah, I mean, this is really, really... This is really, really um, hard to come back from, right? Yeah. In this kind of situation. Everything is connected. Even if they finish the 88% Cypher. Um... <laughs> which is going to take forever mm -hmm. because uh, Psychologist is pushing that 33% Cypher to automatically push the 88. Wait, 88 is not connected. Yeah, it's yeah, not. It's so not, they're actually just not. waiting. That is the prime Cypher. Everything else is connected. So it seems like the slope. I mean, the, the moral victory here is for them to get at least one person out. But with the way that the the... the deck is stacked against them with how this went it's looking real tough and now they might fold soon enough narakun though has to eat that hit uh that blue charge uh he's gonna try and get as much damage to him as possible and now narakun's gonna try to support skyfall as much as he can yeah he has a bling so yeah he's just gonna bling straight away no nonsense bling skyfall's gonna get pulled out Neru. Oh, oh my god! He but actually the managed recovery to do... though, yeah. unfortunate there. Yeah, it wasn't a long enough stun. Skyfall can't get the thing. Uh, I can't get the struggle free here. Nerekun, you gotta give it up to him for trying, right? He will yeah. try that play out. Uh, last cipher, I mean, last two ciphers are still uh, on their way at 80%. Nerekun is gonna get the attract here, unable to get the magnet hit, and now get nice. the push away. Nerekun has to have a godlike kite to survive. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if he can last a little bit longer, Psychologist Cypher is almost done. Mm -hmm. And all she has to do is run, all she has to do <laughs> is run to 88% Cypher. No! With the flywheel! The flywheel, oh last Cypher at 88%. Can he survive? He's surviving with no magnets whatsoever. He's shooting on the ground. He's able to get Narakun and the Prospector has fallen down, folks. <laughs> Little boy is the only one left and it seems like Shaoji realizes that. He's going to try and go for a chair or at least move the body towards a closer location. Yeah, I mean, little boy knows where the... Oh, wait. This decision might... Honestly, I feel like Salji should just take it. Yeah, just get you the know, three, you know I mean? man. Just get the... Okay, I think he might be doing just that. Yeah, yeah. I this mean... is the prospector's first chair. He can still try to find where little boy's at. There we go. Yeah. I mean, even if he can't find where little boy is, if he knows where the dungeon is, Oh yeah. One one just... hit is all it takes. Right. One hit, and the psychologist has a charge. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I think he does know where the dungeon is. It's at the the, the entrance area. Uh, Hopefully he does. The back gate, yeah. The back gate area, yeah. Yeah. Um, still, it's a tough I mean, situation, but man, if Chaoji's able to get a four-person elimination, that is a that is unheard of up against exactly. uh, GH in this form. But yeah. he said we wanted to find the best of the best. This is the way to do it. Little boy now on the second floor. Is he going to attempt to rescue? Mm, maybe. I, I feel like, yeah, he's going to go and rescue. And if he downs Narukun again... Oh, no! Oh, look! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, that's opening! That's huge! This could be an opening. That's... Little boy. Uh-oh. Are they going to try to push the, the Cypher 88? Nice. Is it connected? Oh, Narukun gets spotted out in the open. He has two magnets and a flywheel very, very soon. So, uh -huh. we'll have... Oh, no, no. oh! Attack recovery! The attack recovery gets cancelled. Narukun has one more magnet to use. Able to get the push, but then that doesn't do much. He's able to get the attract, and that hit is going to register. Prospector is down. And now the last cypher, it's unfortunately not going to be making it in time. Yeah. Psychologist is going to be down, but he's he's got the dungeon. So at least mm -hmm. GH will be able to get one man escape, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, true. Little boy yeah. actually is gonna make it towards the dungeon. So once again, the four-person uh, kill was denied, but Xiao Ji able to tie it up three to one in yeah. a map. Technically, that's supposed to be desired uh, by Survivor. So again, incredible performance by Xiao Ji. Yeah, the Hermit definitely messed up their synergy that game. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and I, I agree with you. I feel like GH is going to hate this map. <laughs> they, they hate this map. I feel like GH is like, oh, please, auto ban, hospital. We're ne we don't want to see this. And this was this was the map that Kuga had like a 4K in. And now it seems like the tides have definitely turned. We are going to wait for the scores to come out eventually. But that's a 6-2 to two game. It is 6-2. to two, And the first game was 5-3. to three. So if yeah. you want to count round wins, they're draw draw but points utp mm -hmm. just needs to draw the next game and they win wow what? the script has changed folks we were seeing high uh, praises with gh but utp kind of I, I took them it took them a while to join the party and show that dominance but now they are yeah. here the diesel start has definitely played they're firing on all cylinders and just like that they have the momentum coming to game number three exactly momentum um coming into game three you cannot doubt you cannot doubt Selji now anymore. He knows what mm -hmm. he's doing, right? Mm -hmm. He knows what he's doing. Uh, Opera Singer, 1K, it's fine. At least not a four-man escape. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, what's it, a draw? A draw. A draw, it was a draw. A draw, right? So no problem. Um, it was, yeah, it was a draw still, and it was- Still very uh, solid, right? Mm -hmm. As an yeah. Opera Singer, um, as, an, as him playing Opera Singer, him getting a draw is still okay. At least you didn't add any more points. Yeah. Uh, and, and now with the Hermit they have to worry about, and I feel like that's not even Xiaoji's final form. And the only saving grace here, one of the saving graces here for GH is that they get map selection next. So they have to really bring it to a map that is unfavorable for for any of the, the, the hunters that may come out. I would have to say, though, I think um, the element of surprise was definitely there. Again, Xiaoji, I don't have that much notes on him, but the fact that maybe mm. GH was didn't maybe expect the Hermit to come out in and like you said, the the lineup of survivors didn't. Aside from the psychologist, it really worked in the hermit's favor. Yeah, hermit. They they, they couldn't prepare for it. Like me, I mean, I love to see a novelist here. Same. Mm -hmm. Like the combo Norton plus novelist combo. It's really strong, but against a hunter that stuns on its own as well. Mm -hmm. The blue, the the positive negative polarity on its own. It's. Mm -hmm. It's hard to play against a hunter that does that. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you can't exactly tight kite two um, because the charge is just going to keep you nailed to the ground. Yeah. As especially mm -hmm. if it hits, right? So mm -hmm. I feel like they're, that was the best that they could do under those situations. Mm -hmm. um, under that circumstance, right? Yeah, in that situation, for sure. But mm -hmm. um, I got to say, it, it, it's just... It's just the hunter, um, just not, just not, just not giving any more opportunities. It's just hitting left and right, and it shows, right? And mm -hmm. um, I think I, I doubted the decision in the beginning. Like, why 
not connect the ciphers. It's going fast. Yeah, same. That's true. <laughs> but he knew what he was doing. Once again, these <laughs> hunters, they want us they want to prove us wrong, which again we're very welcome to. So um Xiaoji for me now can't do any wrong. We cannot doubt what he has in store for us because you have to well, I was concerned at the start when you pointed that out. And the ciphers were moving at a dangerously high high rate. So yeah. Trust that he, he knew <laughs> he knew what he was doing. He wanted to just down right. I mean, have a an easy down or not an easy down, but just a, a safe and con a c constructive down. But once he was able to get Zhao Kahn down, he was able to connect everything, and they couldn't move ciphers from then on out. Yeah, the ciphers. Oh my god, you you can't imagine how hard it is to be in that situation. Like you're trying to push one cipher, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you're actually pushing the other two ciphers. Right. That's how hard it is mm -hmm. uh, to push the cyphers. It's like, man, you might as well play prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point, right? Oh, no. Right, right. Prisoner. Yeah. And then you can push the last 88% cypher too. Mm -hmm. But if you do that, Hermit's going to eat you alive, I feel. Mm -hmm. like. I, yeah, I really gonna... think, though, that because GH really... they. they when they come in prepared like they did yesterday because they knew their adversaries or they knew what to expect like with opera singer they were really on point right but i think yeah the fact that once they saw hermit come out and this was the picks and they weren't really prepared or like they didn't know how to handle or what kind of hermit would come out mm -hmm. i feel like they were a little um taken aback with how that 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 happened so again this is uh what the qualifiers are made for you know the best of the best going against each other and running into each other and just providing us amazing moments like this it's mm -hmm. just tough that we only one can move on and join team uh future because i would love to see both of these teams represent us mm -hmm. but then again mm -hmm. you can honestly say that the best team will be moving forward after this qualifier yeah for sure but then again that's why we have community tournaments as well so mm. guys we have iva up yes. running two years now close to two years mm -hmm. up strong and running we're gonna be having it in uh june and yes you you, you you gotta you're gonna catch all these teams again uh mm -hmm. especially and, competing and, preparing and please do follow nello mellow on his socials on instagram and facebook for updates on that again we want to give way to the call of the abyss season because it will culminate all the way in may but trust that there is a June tournament IVA to look forward to. Again, teams are all welcome to join. Please do. It's a fun time. And uh, we, have, we have amazing stuff planned out for you. So you better be ready to exactly. watch out for IVA. Exactly, exactly. Thank you mm -hmm. um, for sharing that with everyone. Um, and a little bit of surprise. I wouldn't call it little, but a big surprise. But that's only for people who's going to be tuning in. Yes, um, tune in for that. So we can't we mm -hmm. can't just give away all our cards. Yeah, we gotta we gotta exactly. make sure that we have something up our sleeves first. So yeah, we're gonna build the anticipation, and also we don't want to steal the magic away from what's happening in front of our screens right now, folks. Because <laughs> what you're seeing now is not j the the best of three has been broken in the previous match, but this is definitively broken now. G H has definitely faced a huge obstacle to climb which is utp and utp running away with that momentum is it's huge like they're the what they're the davids gh is the goliath and david has just struck goliath with uh with that stone and exactly uh it seems like gh has uh has fallen one one round but they're still the favored to win this especially coming into game number three maybe god j might come in who knows Exactly. I, I agree with you. Maybe Gotcha will come in. Maybe mm -hmm. Pai will still play. But in my opinion, mm -hmm. um, I would like Pai to stay because I feel like he's they're preparing him. They're, this is his testing ground. If they make it with this team, they want to make it with this team, they got to go with Pai again. right? Because mm -hmm. I feel like um, Gotcha has been on the stand as the main hunter all this while. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like it's just really they're just trying to sh bring GH to the next level and mm -hmm. by absorbing Miao Pai I feel like that's what they're trying to do mm -hmm. um, but yeah I, I believe that they have to stick to the very end mm -hmm. and it's not over guys because I feel like Miao Pai has been consistently good throughout the tournament mm -hmm. it's just the end pick The it wasn't even yeah. the person <laughs> it's just the disciple pick and the miss uncharacteristic miss bling so mm -hmm. uh but take that away 
he's still very consistent. He's still very yeah. good. Now we're gonna have to see, right? Because UTP uh, MX has history with uh, Meow Pai, and I think out of all the teams to go up against Meow Pai, this is probably I would say his worst matchup because they know him so well. But you could yeah. say the same for MX because in the first match he outplayed MX with what he brought to the table with the opera singer, right? So it's kind of yeah. a back and forth. Like I know you so well, I know you know I know, so I you're gonna do this. It's the next yeah, level I, chess, like 4D chess. 4D chess. It's like yeah, I I know you're bluffing me, but I'm triple barreling you. <laughs> wow! Oh, Queen's Gambit accepted, yeah. denied. Uh, King's Gambit. I, I'm trying to learn chess uh, openings. It's so hard. It, it is. It is. I mean, the only person I know in chess is just yeah, Magnus Carlsen. <laughs> That's the only That's guy. <laughs> yeah, and guess what? The only titles I find him is like, hey, uh, Magnus Carlsen winning the game with two with thirty seconds left on his clock. On the, yeah, like he came in late and then he won. That was <laughs> right? Crazy. Yeah. Because so... apparently in chess, you get like additional time each time you clocked in fast, real fast. Like, oh, you get two seconds. Bucks. Two seconds. Okay, cool. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know chess had patch updates. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah, those time yeah. attack kind of games. Yeah, yeah. boom, boom, boom. A like combo. If you combo, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, that's boom. true. Exactly. Yeah, but speaking yeah. of chess and strategies, um, UTP so far uh, at a slight advantage. GH definitely needs to re-strategize what they want to do here. Mm -hmm. um, what map was it again that they chose? It is going to be in Chinatown. Chinatown, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really good map. Um, Mel Pai can easily bring out the, the clown. Can bring out the clown. Can bring out breaking True. wheel. Can bring out even Anne here would be good as well. So um, <laughs> if he as, wants to go Anne as, again, as much as I want to see Anne again, I, I yeah, he could actually. I won't, I won't knock it for if he tries it again. Uh, but I'm just concerned, right? This is the most adversity he's faced. I wonder what his uh, mental fortitude is going to be. And I'm trying to look back at the vods, like what. Um, Who's gonna go in first as the survivor and hunter? Is it gonna be Mao or is it gonna be the uh, the survivor Chi? of GH is gonna go in first? Survivors of GH, interesting. Survivors so of GH first. This is the first time they're the ones to be the playmakers, and Mao Pai exactly. is gonna have to support. So I think that mm -hmm. says that you know what? I think this is their way of saying the survivor team is gonna try to cover for Mao and mm -hmm. like. Uh, kind of set the pace for him to just like, all right, chill. Maybe you just need to get a tie for us. We'll try to set the uh, the tempo and the pace of this. So this begs the question on what Xiao Ji can bring to the table because if he picks right again, I mean, they obviously have to ban that Hermit because Hermit could do a lot of damage in a huge map like this, especially yeah. with a lot of survivor bans. That's uh, true. Would you, have an, would you have an inkling on what you think he might bring to the table if the Hermit gets banned? Mm. You mean or for Xiao Ji? Yeah, I mean, he can he can definitely play Breaking Wheel here as well. Right. X Boy is also good here, mm -hmm. but to start things off, I feel like he wouldn't ban Hermit anymore. I think they would just probably try and build a team that kind of counters really this uh, because this, um, or they might be traumatized and be like, yeah, let's just ban it and get it over with. We we don't have to deal with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? If yeah, if um, you would draft a composition to counter Hermit, what would that be? Oh wait, actually, let's put a let's set aside that conversation because we don't have to speculate right. anymore. We're gonna go straight into it. Exactly, we are going to head into game number three, round number three, first half, where each mm -hmm. team has already gotten one round win each. So, mm -hmm. uh, needless to say, this is going to determine, set the pace for who is going to. Who's going to have the advantage uh, in the first mm -hmm. half? Right now, so, GH Survivor is coming in. Yeah, I do have to point out that the global bans bans out Narakun's uh, Prospector and uh, Xiaoji immediately banning that Antiquarian. So uh, Narakun, not known for the stunners, uh, known for his stunners, is not going to have his signature stunners on deck here. So it seems like this allows the aeroplanist and the cheerleader to come out. And we don't have to speculate anymore. Like you said, Null, it's going to be the Hermit that is banned. Yeah, they don't deal with it. It's like, yeah, sorry. We mm -hmm. we take away two of your characters. What are you gonna pick? And mm -hmm. and then if you're gonna pick X Boy, we got the counters. We got the counters for it. We have aeroplanes. We have um, cheerleader. I feel like mm -hmm. those two are already like saying, yeah, we we, we, we can do this, right? Yeah. Uh, if I'm he goes for, that... mm -hmm. yeah. I was gonna say I'm glad that 
out of all the matches, this is the one to go with the best of three because you have to admit that the grand finals is like the, the crucible to really prove who is the best of the best here. And uh, yeah, unfortunately for Xiaoji, like you, his best hunters have been already banned. So now he's going to have to deal with GH and coming up with a strategy to come out with uh, up against his other hunters that might come into the mix, like you said, like an Axe Boy or maybe a Breaking Wheel. So mm -hmm. will this be the SOS that GH needs to be able to um, move on here? Or will UTP actually just deny that SOS and be like, nope, it's our time to be in the qualifiers? Yeah, I mean, definitely a lot at stake here, right? They, they just got to put their best foot forward. Um, they they got to avoid mistakes. They, they got to play flawlessly. Their communication needs to be on par. Um, yeah, I mean... Even with that, as long as they play consistently, stable, I feel like they are going to do very well against Selji's Hunter here, right? Um, he probably will go for, I don't know, Breaking Wheel here seems pretty good. Um, high risk, high reward kind of behavior. Uh, but hey, looks like Skyfall, being the last person to pick, is going to choose Novelist for the team. So they're not giving up on Novelist just yet. <laughs> they're gonna come in here uh with novelist as the last pick i love this and yeah like just looking at you guys in the chat as well uh waiting uh, cell g x boy yep definitely waiting for it as well so posh we're just saying oh, oh wait michiko not an axe boy but we got the geisha so michiko is coming out into the mix here so i'm super excited to see how especially in a chinatown map uh, a lot of opportunities for the dashes, also for the change of elevations. So we're just going to have to see the spawn points here. But again, I'm super hyped to see a novelist come out of Nerekun. Uh, I don't know, man. Michiko. I mean, I, we haven't seen Saoji's Michiko, so I'm not going to... I'm not going to assume that Geisha is going to have another pallet mukbang, but, <laughs> it, but it is pretty hard target. I would say that all of these uh, survivors know how to kite a Michiko. Mm -hmm. I would say that they know how to kite a Michiko. Even Skyfall, with the help of the hypnotism from the watch, is going to have a better time kiting Geisha, because Geisha is a single hit hunter, right? So mm -hmm. as long as you're in hypnotism mode, um, you, you can't really hit as fast as you can. Like, you can't really nail that damage as fast as you can. Or one. As for Little Boy... Yeah, the butterfly is going to be a little bit of a problem. Like, you know, like speed boost, I'm just going to draw. So I guess the, the key here is to use elevations, use blind spots to avoid the geisha quite as long yeah. as possible. Uh, now that I think about it too, how many times have we seen GH kind of stuff any attempts of geishas, right? Again, Xiaoji, yeah. we got to trust in him that he brought out the geisha at a clutch moment here. Again, do or die moment for him. So we just have to wait and see. And uh, this is GH's map selection. So they will play with the advantage here. As we head to the game number three, first half, ladies and gentlemen, once again, Nello Mello Potch Spice at your service. Yeah, beautiful skin. Uh, I love oh, this yeah. skin as well. Chao Kahn's yeah. gonna be the first target from the Geisha. A mm. uh, swing and a miss. Chao Kahn, I... I... Oh. What's the reaction? Uh-huh. That's oh, just insane. That? He has his hand on the... Tr his finger on the trigger with that one. That was incredible. Little Boy already buffing up the uh, aeroplanist here, but now Little Boy has to take this kite. Wait for the whistle. And now mm -hmm. we see Little Boy just gather so much distance. That's an uh -oh. open area. He's going to get yeah. hit here. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's no way he was going to make it. Unfortunately, um, refreshing refreshing aeroplane is <laughs> still a little yeah, too cost. soon. <laughs> yeah. Well, mm -hmm. it's fine. Uh, little boy is still doing that kite, uh, maintaining the kite with the window boost, with the pilot boost. Oh, but the blank G not letting up. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> Through the window, and now cheerleader has fallen down. I would say still like in the first minute of the game, that's still kind of okay for the survivors because they can still go for the ciphers. But still, mm -hmm. maybe the maybe the plan for Xiaoji is to kind of go for this Thai situation. Seems like Aeroplanist does have that wanted order. Skyfall is already rotating for the rescue. Well, the la the other two ciphers are moving on uh -oh. accordingly. But Skyfall, uh oh, Xiaoji, it's like he has spider sense, man. Yeah, he knew he was coming from this direction. Skyfall. 
if you can't make it before half, yeah, go, this go after be half. Uh, no, he's gonna oh, do it. He's gonna do it. Oh, oh he's gonna make he, it. Yeah. He, yeah, you gotta trust. And now we see that the little boy gets boosted. As the cheerleader gonna get uh, some speed boost. Narakun's also here, so they're gonna try to OB and support here. They're gonna have a switch to the pallet oh! mukbang. That's how you're gonna do it. And that's the first switcheroo going on. Oh my god, Naru wow. tried to block again! Beautiful. Flywheel to stop the dash? That was crazy. Oh my god, what was that? Yeah, next time try on the tram. <laughs> I don't know. That was, that was the first time I saw it actually on local scenes here in Southeast Asia. Yeah. But little boy, while we're at that, little boy is still mm -hmm. um, maintaining his containment time. But it feels like Xiaoji oh, is nice. not going to hit. Oh my yeah, God. but only a matter of time till she gets exhausted. So now it just seems like Xiaoji is going to try to go for the regular hit here. Oh. And the basement is also here. I'm not sure if he's going to go for a basement play, but it is there for him to offer. Yeah, I mean, since you offered, uh, mm -hmm. thank you, I guess. Thank you. I <laughs> thank will. You. I will. Yeah. Thanks, Posh. I didn't yeah. see the basement there. Don't blame the GH fans. That was, yeah. that was Xiaoji. But Aeroplane is, yeah. Aeroplane mm -hmm. is going to come. I don't know why he's hiding. He has wanted order. Mm -hmm. um, you think he can make it though? It's so... Oh, wait! Okay, I'm sorry I doubted you. <laughs> but the... Yeah, uh -oh. but the rescue is going to come very early though. Yeah, early rescue. Two Cyphers still remain. Not going for a drop down hit. He's going to refresh what? the skill down here. Let's. I don't know how he's going to try and body block. But let's oh, see he's how this oh, oh, he's cheering. Oh, look at that! Yeah, he blocked! He blocked his way through the chair. That was incredible. What a legend. And that's the power. Oh, is he going to go up? He's going to make it through, little boy. Blink, Blink. drop down, unable to get it. Little boy trying to move on away. Oh my God. Black Cypher is at 86, 87. And we are counting down here while Zhao Kahn tries the body block. Can he get the right hit? Unable to get the first one. Goes through the pallet, gets the hit. Cypher is already primed. Force heal. No! Drop down! Drop down! Oh, it's so unfortunate! Oh, sayonara! Sayonara! Mm -hmm. When he flies up, the pop happens, and right now, GH! Okay. If... GH, oh. little boy, containing as much as he can while that Exegate tries to open. And now they're really just putting the pressure onto him. He's able to what? get the, 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 the speed boost while we see Zhao Kahn's here. He might actually go for another novelist switcheroo! No! What a beautiful switcheroo there, mm -hmm. giving Xiaoji another pallet slam, but three of oh, them, four of them scary. are running in the same direction. This is a what? little bit scary. It's a foot race. Can we get it? Oh, oh, he's able to get the push onto him, and now he tries to go for the hit here, able to get the cheerleader down. Push him out! Another switch. Push him out! Oh, everyone's yeah, they're trying to push him out. Oh no! Two of them have fallen no, out, but no, no, there's still one that's left. It is Narakun that is the sacrificial lamb. It is a three-person escape now. That was still amazing though. The three oh. men escape. They this... were all riding towards the sunset. Like, oh that that's was a coordinated crazy. team. Crazy. Oh. <laughs> exactly. And that push from the aeroplane is yeah. in the end. I, I, wow. I, I had to be reminded that, that that's possible. Oh, oh my God. let's just let's just try to break this down because that was this is the GH we know, right? The way they were exactly. able to control that match. And you really felt how comfortable they were facing off against the gay show. There were yeah. some moments that were leaning towards the side of a uh, Shao G, but the fact mm -hmm. that he was still able to get one person uh one person uh eliminated is still good, but Break, break down to me your favorite highlights there, Nell, because there's just too much to mention. Too many highlights, uh, but I'll state the obvious first. Mm -hmm. Nerukun with the novelist, uh, two times mm -hmm. Switcheroo into Palestine. Mm -hmm. Beautiful stuff yeah. going on there. Mm -hmm. And not to mention Aeroplanis, that beautiful dash, knocking the hunter on into the wall. I, I have to say, a lot of things going on. And not to forget, little boy yeah. managing the cheering so mm. well, managing the cooldown so well. I was like, how many times are you going <laughs> to whistle and keep running? Just so you and thought he was about is, to hit? He was, he, yeah, he was so good playing around the, the cooldowns of the cheer, right? Because you definitely go slower. And he made sure that someone was there to OB. He was near a good area to kite. And yeah... And also, I have to give props to uh, Skyfall. He was able to make it before half rescue. And that was exactly. looking real scary because 
uh, the Geisha was able to, uh, Shaoji was able to cut him off real far, by the way. So the fact that he was able to still get that rescue, that's the stable rescue, uh, the rescue where we know and love in Skyfall. So this is a good example of GH fighting at their element, right? This is how they want the games to go. And you saw the familiarity up against the, the Geisha. So unfortunately for Shaoji, it didn't go his way. But this is where survivors really should shine now. Um, we still have to see how the scoring is going to go. But uh, the fact that GH has won this first half or like 3-1 in Survivor side, um, I think the Survivors need to duplicate that same type of performance to still hold on to their lead. Yeah, I mean, uh, that was already... Okay, here's the situation, right? Just now, mm -hmm. in the middle of the game, it showed victory condition, which was kind of mm -hmm. weird because uh, mm -hmm. you can't determine it just yet, right? Uh, yeah. You still got to play a game, a second half. I think right? the victory condition there is if he got a 4K. <laughs> but he, I mean, that's really hard to do with a Geisha. Because if he got a 4K, then I think the point differential is not going to matter yeah. because the that's going to be a tied game in game number three and then points, and then it's going to be exactly. UTP to win. So yeah, that's but... still a little tough to go by, especially... Uh, I mean, yeah. I love Geisha. She's just been in the meta for so long that... Yeah, you saw how well they were able to counteract that. And the fly, I mean, the flywheel to count, cancel the dash for little boy to continue on. That was uh, that was some high level uh, gameplay there. Exactly. Legendary. Wait, mm -hmm. wait for it. Legend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wait for it. Legendary. Wait, 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 mm. wait for it. Dairy. Dairy. Okay, <laughs> Legendary. Oh, no. Wait for it. <laughs> oh dang! I, I messed up. <laughs> dang, I, I messed up. Yeah. I, sorry, I'm not. I'm not Th. Uh, mm -hmm. Patrick Harris, Neil, Neil Patrick Harris. Okay. Uh -huh. but, but yeah, just look at the containment time. It's super long. They obviously knew their way around a geisha, and mm -hmm. they're definitely way more comfortable facing a, a geisha rather than a hermit. So mm -hmm. nice bands to begin with. Yeah. Um, but for geisha, I feel like Xiaoji. Yeah, the dash, the dashes were nice, but you, you gotta remember, there's there's a lot of characters that can mm -hmm. mess around with you, and Geisha's really weak um, against Obiers. Yeah, like Anomalous, what can you do to stop it? You can't mm -hmm. stop it. And the aeroplane is each time you try to hit, beep, mm -hmm. boop, boop. Th there was hey. there was also a moment I believe in the final match when Last Cipher was primed. But he went to the change. Yeah, he went. Uh, he flew. He up. went above soul yeah, departure. And, yeah, and that's the thing. If you use soul departure, thank you for that. I forgot the name. Yeah, uh, no problem. It takes a while for you to fall back down, but it took. It, it allowed little boy to transition away because they just popped the cipher. I know yeah. what he was trying to go for, like a drop down hit and a hit. But I think he didn't know. That, I mean, probably he didn't know that the site last cipher was already primed. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it was just a little unfortunate there. Um, he really tried his best to the very end to pull out any trick he could with Michiko. But I think, yeah, GH was just just had their number. And if you want to be able to represent the Southeast Asia scene in Identity 5, yeah, mm -hmm. your hunter pool needs to be super deep because you could play best of uh, even go tiebreakers at, at some point in, in the group stage. Yeah, I mean... I mean that's about as best as we can see, right? The mm -hmm. um, the performance coming in. I'm sorry, I'm having a little bit of brain fart at the moment. That's okay. <laughs> Come, it's been it's been yeah. it's been a long day, and the matches have been really potent and really good. That it I is, mean, like is. we're just we're just here to react and really try to analyze and break down once it's done. And I mean, speculations are all at the door. This is just an amazing match. We're all tied up now. Oh my 10 god! To Ten. Wait, 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 wait. hang on. If if they tie this up, uh -huh. then we will go into overtime. No, no. If two, they tie two. this, if they if tie a, this up, mm -hmm. if they tie this up, it's going to be UTP because UTP oh. has the points advantage. So even if it's a a draw, they both no, have no, no. one win each. One win each. If they if they tie both two two, since total is ten, th it's gonna go. It's it's all tied up in points and rounds. Oh, there we go. Oh Is no, it? we're not gonna have any more. Okay, cool. So if GH would win if they tie this up. Okay, interesting. So yeah. two. Oh, okay, because you added. A, okay, okay. GH will win if Miao Pai gets a three K. Mm. But UTP Ooh. wins if. Wait, wait, wait. Actually no. Yeah. Actually no. GH just needs a draw. GH just needs a draw. So Miao Pai. Round win already. 
Yeah, mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm, only, yeah, it, yeah. it's more favorable for GH. Round win, round win first. Mm-hmm. But if they draw it up, UTP needs to get a three mana scare. If they do that, by default mm-hmm. they're gonna win based on right. points. So okay, thank you, Prod, for doing the math for us and showing us the conditions here. My brain can't math. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we can't. It's it's too late after after nine o'clock. My my brain's checked out with math, folks. So exactly. you saw the win conditions there. Meow Pai just need to tie this one out. And uh, yeah, definitely pressure is on UTP side because they need to get a three person escape. So they need to kind of duplicate that same type of magic we just saw here. Um, I, I don't know how Meow Pai's mentality is, but he's got to feel extra confident that his team was able to support him there because now he just needs to kind of just go for that bare minimum tie in, in this matchup that I would say he's very comfortable in this map. Disciple. <laughs> Disciple again, you think? Oh. Fool's gold. Nah, anything. Um, Fool's gold. I think, yeah. I think going with the Bloody Queen is good for a tie as well. Uh, mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. UTP needs to make something happen, right? And when they do, it opens them up for more mistakes. And mm-hmm. that's where Meow Pai comes in. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like, yeah, the guaranteed stun would be good too. But mm-hmm. his Bloody Queen is a beast too, so. Yeah. Hey, he brought out wax artist yes uh today actually yeah oh, um, I, I don't know plays here now i mean wax artist is a guarantee because he's definitely gonna get action yeah they need to get yeah. they need to rescue they cannot just sacrifice so he's bound mm-hmm. to get action mm-hmm. so yeah wax artist maybe depending on the draft yeah depending Enchantress. on yeah Ooh, <laughs> counter <laughs> counter yeah enchantress yeah, counter scream counter. which oh yeah for sure fact and and wax it and wax artists. Oh yeah, where the stuns go. Yeah. Oh no, I'm frozen. Oh come on. Okay, yeah. Enchantress then, counter but... is uh Anne also. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When, when she's oh, being stunned. Stun. <laughs> yeah, you, they, you know, they, like they uh huh. You know, like you know, like seven deadly sins. You know, full counter. <laughs> I don't know that. I one. counter you. You mm-hmm. know the the one where you I take hits from you. But then I oh. counter with an even harder damage. Mm, and that's true. Yeah. Two because yeah. right, math. Two negatives make a positive. That's why I think Yeah, that yeah. Right so they yeah. like 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 you slap me once, I slap you twice. <laughs> it it all it all makes sense, right? <laughs> <laughs> In anime world, everything makes sense. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So um, but do, what does make sense was the the win conditions for both teams, folks. And uh, I want you guys to spam whatever emojis you want in the chat to support your favorite teams. I'm still no more food. for my pasta and rum. I, I, I'll have some uh, afterwards, I, <laughs> but okay. I don't want to see it in chat because I might get super confused and hungry. Yeah. And you know what I'm looking forward to as well is yeah. interviewing the... Hopefully we'll get an interview, right? We're interviewing the winner of this team because they might be o- they should be over the moon with this incredible matchup that they're having because both these teams are definitely pushing each other to that limit. And that's what the moments we live for, right? We see these uh, teams like level up in front of our eyes. So, mm-hmm. yeah, whoever wins, I'm pretty sure will be in good hands uh, coming into Call of the Abyss 7 uh, for the Southeast Asia. And FT is going to have a, a companion to call their to call the, uh, that team their companion as they represent Southeast Asia in the big stage of Call of the Abyss. Yeah, I mean, I... Uh... I'm just looking right now, right? And mm-hmm. just thinking about the mats. Because, like, the chat's talking about the mats, and we're like, hmm. <laughs> yeah, I I, 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 I think we can't really math anymore. So, if anyone can help us, that's really appreciated. But from what we understand, yes. um, GH needs a tie. Yes. Really. Literally a tie, a, a, a draw, a 2K. Two two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. UTP needs a tie too, but that's not a draw. It's a tree mm-hmm. escape three. to, tie to make the, the score. Yes. Yeah, to make the round a draw. So technically so, speaking, GH has a better time because mm-hmm. tree escape is harder than a, you know, than a mm-hmm. 2K. So yeah. I guess that's the that's the verdict. Yeah, the true. And like the, you said, also mm-hmm. that um, Meow Pai is gonna expect action because mm-hmm. they're kind of forced in a situation where they can't bring like. I mean, it would be risky for them to do Embalmer or a Sacrifice play early on. So mm-hmm. they're going to have to have an excellent first kite to see how this happens. Yeah. So, yeah. While you're looking at chat, Nell, any shout outs you want to give out before we see our last? Because this was our last match. We won't see any more tiebreakers uh, because it was kind of definitive. 
exactly maki shout out to you maki maki kotone kotone as well sounds like corona right <laughs> yeah I, th- i actually thought that was corona at one point i'm like kotone. yeah yeah just real quick fio mondu among kamo idia shroud uh and of course um i six revel oh, yeah. uh, i see someone queendom come shout outs to you queendom come Woo. yeah meow asking if meow was gonna play bq Possibly. Probably. I mean, BQ is very solid, and he has a solid BQ. Yeah. Will God J come out? Krisha, that's Pollens. Krisha, haven't mm. seen her talk for a long time. You should speak up more, Krisha. Yeah. Yeah, but we should give shoutouts to people that also want to lurk. You know, what? just appreciate you guys being here, keeping us company. So we're gonna see. Wow, he actually. They, so the ad might come out. I don't know. They see the the sangria gets banned, and also the wax artist. And now we're mm. gonna see a novelist and an entomologist from UTP. Yeah, nice. Meow pie, hermit, <laughs> hermit, 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 meow pie. Mm-hmm. pie. Yeah, mess up the synergy. <laughs> novelist can't do anything to you. Yeah. So yeah, like that, yeah, the fact that yeah the bees are gonna be in play, they're kind of countering the ant to come out. So yeah, I want to see that hermit from Meow Pie. Yeah, I mean he has to play that right. Uh, breaking wheel doesn't make any sense. It's too, it's too yeah, risky. Too risky for a two person. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean. BQ. Oh, shout outs to mm-hmm. uh, Tae Wu as well. Sorry, I've been seeing Tae Wu's name, but I keep Tae-woo. missing missing out on calling him and Chiu mm-hmm. as well. Um, Bunny Teeth is in the chat as well. Russell, yes. Russell, Aquarina as well. Um, Blue Delicious <laughs> mm-hmm. support C besties. Thank you. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. and Korean name. Sorry, I, I can't read Korean. So yeah, but the emoji is cat in boxes. So yay, we appreciate uh, yeah. those. Adopt me, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, moving on back to the game itself. Uh, first officer. So it feels like. Jose is really popular. Right? Yeah, uh, I think you know Gravekeeper. We haven't seen a single Gravekeeper uh, in this. Yeah. It's always First Officer, Airplanist, which also gets banned, and Mercenary. So Airplanist yeah. and no banned. Wilding too. Ooh, yeah, no Wilding now. Yesterday, only uh, only Skyfall brought up the Wildling, but for now, it seems like he's uh, locked and loaded with this First Officer. So the final pick is going to be a dancer in this lineup. Dancer. Uh, so then- I mean. Mm-hmm. Bloody Queen. It screams Bloody Queen. Fool's I mean, gold. Fool's, fool's gold. gold. Yeah. <laughs> that that works too. Because the music box doesn't really matter. Oh, wait. Yeah, you can pirouette away from the mirror mm-hmm. image, right? And with yeah. Novelist, you can cancel. You can kind of counter counter the direction of the mm-hmm. Bloody Queen. So. Right. Ah, yeah. What mm-hmm. can you do in this situation? Hermit. <laughs> yeah, Hermit. I, I want to see Hermit. the Hermit. <laughs> oh my god, that's so hard. Mad they eyes. don't have any healing, right? <laughs> they don't. Mad eyes. They don't. They, Joker. No, uh, Joker. Oh. Gets oh, Dream Witch. Oh, how could we forget one of the yeah. calling cards of a character that Meow Pai brings out? The, the Dream Witch. But I would have to say, you know what? Like the the times have changed. You know what? Priority of Dream Witch. Yes, she's still really good, but. Teams have kind of understood the, the timings and the way to counter this Dream Witch. And in a big map like this, they could definitely kind of spread out. So we just have to see how this is going to play out. I don't know how Novelist is is going to be, especially if when he's leeched, how he's going to be able to do the switcheroo with this Dream Witch. Mm-hmm. Switcheroo indeed. But one thing is for is that sure. We're going to call that... it, by the way. I just, I just thought of it. It was a silly name. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's very relatable. Yeah. But one thing is for sure, this uh-huh. is the final match of the night. Yes. And it's going to be legend. Wait for wait it. Wait for it. Wait for it. You're going to have to wait and see because wait, wait for the match wait. to start. <laughs> Derry. Okay. Wow, I can't no, you wait for that one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Sorry. Please uh, excuse no, uh, an hour. <laughs> it's all good man so ladies and gentlemen without further ado we're going to introduce the survivors and the hunters for this last match of the c qualifiers one will come out on top will it be gh will it be utp we got run cj we have rain and cd on the survivor side and meow on his last stand with this dream which he needs a tie for gh to win and utp needs a three-person escape 
once again for the final time. Make some noise in the chat. We are your commentators, Potch Spice and Nello Mello, bringing you the IDV action for round three, second half. Okay, let's bring in the energy, guys, because right now Tomie has entered the arena of Chinatown and wait for it. We have to wait for it, right? Wait for legend. it. Legend. Wait for legend. it. Legend. Wait, wait for wait, it. We're going to wait for it. We're going to continue that it. word once you come back in. So. I swear I'm going to I'm going <laughs> to go wait for it until the game resumes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that's too much. But once the game's gonna start, you're gonna know what that word is. Legend. What? What? Wait for it. We're waiting for it. Legend. Legend. We yeah. again. The reason for the wait, guys, is because I think we saw. Um, uh, I think it was the novelist. Yeah, he was just kind of just standing there. So again, we want the best possible conditions <laughs> for <laughs> this matchup. Again, a lot is at stake. You know, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and hard work were put into this qualifiers, especially on the player side. And we want to be able to say with all honesty that we had the best come out of this crucible of a qualifier. So whether it be UTP, whether it be GH, we're, this is the decisive game for it. And it's so crazy how it waited till the very end. We've seen a lot of qualifiers where it was kind of lopsided and we had a lot mm -hmm. of two O's to start things out. But I have to say, Nell, this is one of the most exciting ones because uh, we thought it was a foregone conclusion. Maybe GH is going to take this one because they've been two O'ing, but... UTP, like you said, just let them cook, and this is what they produce. This is the results they produce. Yeah, let them cook, and I'm thinking about pasta now as well. <laughs> I saw some people spam some chicken drumsticks. I'm getting hungry. Ah, for real, for real, mm -hmm. uh, guys. I, I, I'm, I'm really embarrassed to say this, but mm -hmm. I love chicken. So <laughs> why are you embarrassed to say that? <laughs> because uh, we're in the middle of commentating and I, I feel like I, I love chicken. It's it's okay. We we appreciate you. What kind of chicken are adobo? You, are, <laughs> are you a fried chicken kind of guy? What's your favorite kind of chicken? Like grilled chicken, fried chicken. You know what? Kids. We should take turns naming all the chicken dishes. Okay, you know? go, go, you go. You chicken go. adobo. Oh wow, you go over that. Chicken nuggets. Fried chicken. Roasted chicken. Grilled chicken. Chicken teriyaki. Team chicken. Chicken nan bun. Raw chicken. <laughs> no! <laughs> okay, okay, fine, fine. That's all fine. Hi, hi, nan is chicken. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, you also have... um. Pull, uh, what's that? Grilled chicken. I did say that, but it's you fine. You said grilled fine. chicken? Oh, fine. I'll I say did. chicken salad. Chicken salad. Um, Lemon chicken. Okay, orange chicken. Wow. You're really good. <laughs> Sweet and sour chicken. Chicken burrito. Curry chicken. Ooh. Japanese curry chicken. I uh, know, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's true. <laughs> you can go okay. there. Okay. Tom yum chicken. Okay. Chicken noodle soup. Black pepper chicken. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I can go forever. <laughs> hot and spicy chicken from any Does fast that food count? Food. That does. Regular? Hot and spicy. Hot, hot, like hot and crispy <laughs> chicken. Hot and crispy chicken. Okay, what about breaded ch chicken chop? Uh, what about chicken stew? What about chicken bamboo chicken? Oh, that's, a good one. <laughs> uh, that's a good one, right? How about <laughs> uh, chicken? I'm getting hungry. I'm getting really hungry. I'm gonna call it, dude. I can't think of anyone. Okay, chicken. yeah, I can't oh, think. GG, yeah. GG. That's right. a lot of chicken for a lifetime, right? So I think so. A lot exactly but guys if we miss any chicken dishes please do <laughs> uh, let us know in the chat as well mm -hmm. um but yeah actually eli and i we were talking about coffees you know because everyone's talking about coffee mm -hmm. and yeah are you a coffee person though i get acid i can't drink coffee <laughs> oh yeah i i can't really take coffee too mm -hmm. because my would... heart just starts beating oh really palpitating fast. yeah that that too that that happens um i tried uh whenever because like i try drinking coffee but i need a lot of sweetener or like some milk just to counteract because i can't take my coffee dark or super bitter because i think the oh. bitterness wakes me up in the morning like oh that's a lot so oh, gotcha, gotcha, uh, gotcha. Mm -hmm. are you a fan of tea though tea is okay i'd rather drink tea than coffee oh yeah but, me I, too. but I, the thing I is i'm tea. not i'm not uh versed in tea like chamomile like at night or maybe some throat coat for my uh, throat 
but green tea I, I i don't know the nuances to tea i really wish i did them yeah speaking of which tea mm-hmm. after this mm-hmm. i'm going to head out you're gonna have pasta right i'm gonna head out uh-huh. and i'm gonna get myself mm-hmm. a glass of hot chocolate <laughs> what happened to the tea <laughs> I don't know. I don't stay awake. And a slice and of go back nice. dairy, dairy, da- legendary. Dairy. <laughs> there we go. Tomie coming in. Meow pie with the. Oh wait! Switch? I thought he was gonna release. I thought he was gonna release the patroller. But no, mm-hmm. the novelist has been leeched first. Rain taking the first card. MX versus Meow Pie one v one right here with the aid of the music box, of course. But he's gonna oh. break the music box. Circling around, Rain. Oh, wow, that Rain box able to so make much. that work. Ken, yeah, he's lighting up the dance floor there. It's going to be tough for Tomie to go for. Again, he just needs a tie, but easier said than done here. The respect onto the survivors with the ciphers. Look, CZ is actually moving along here. He's going to go for the bite of the patroller, but uh, this survivor isn't actually uh, leech just yet. Goes for the flywheel to move along to the pallet. So he's going to hang around this area. Going to actually negate another patroller bite. Let's see how long CZ can manage this. Can he transition? Unable oh! to, though. Oh no, CZ is gonna take that hit, but it's fine because CZ has that speed boost trying to min uh, you know he doesn't have a leech available, so mm-hmm. it's, he's gonna he's gonna buy a lot more time. But while all of that's going on, ciphers mm-hmm. are steadily increasing. Three ciphers are being worked on at the moment, Posh. True, and Meow actually trying to corner off the dancer here is gonna leech him off into this palleted area but this might actually be where cz is actually gonna fall so at least he's not gonna be able to you know harass any of these ciphers gets the hit at least onto oh. the leech follower so this buys some time for the leech to, to be applied and now hopefully some ciphers will happen left and right but this is where the momentum can shift for the side of gh yeah i mean it's I'm. I, I mean, he must be relieved to get that first person down, right? Mm-hmm. Because Rain was such a bad first yeah. chase for him, especially mm-hmm. in the place was filled with music boxes. And it was. but because of that, he changed to CZ, mm-hmm. and the female dancer had no music box to work with. So you know what's funny is fortunate. that Rain still has a leech on him, and he didn't even pick up an anti curse. Oh, the blink attempt, and now the push Ooh. is gonna happen. Allowing the distance to be uh, established here. Trying to go for a double down CZ. Actually going to go through the window. Seems like he's trying to focus his attention onto the first officer because the female dancer is already leeched. Now it seems like the entomologist wants to chase. Yeah, CZ. Last effort being tripped. That hit mm-hmm. brought him down as well with the followers still attached. But Posh, three ciphers down. Mm. Only one survivor injured, so yeah. Um, I I have to say, oh, and the oh, hit also CJ as well. <laughs> wow, so a little I, overextension on CJ, and now seems like uh, the entomologist will get leached out, and now he's camping the ciphers. This is where it's so dangerous. Novelist is the only one safe to go for this rescue, and again, they need to do or it's a do or die time, uh, for uh, UTP here. Trying to wait it out. Rain can't afford to get a Terra Shock. Immediately goes for the flywheel, but unfortunate situation there. He can't force the heal because the Cyphers aren't primed. And now CZ, uh, sorry, CZ is going to get eliminated. And it seems like we're going to be halfway there for Team GH to secure that victory. Exactly. But for UTP, the fighting spirit wow. is still beautiful. MX, he mm. saw the blink coming from from national service camp I mean, <laughs> <laughs> miles <laughs> away that's how far miles <laughs> away <laughs> uh, yeah but... nice anticipation though if you got hit there it would be so bad because everyone yeah. would be half health it would be curtains for them for sure but now we see the entomologist try to kite for as long as he can last cypher is at 58 percent he's gonna try to attack the bees to for the entomologist not to have anything to kite along with entomologist does not have anywhere to go and falls down to the follower and now this is gonna push for the last uh cypher to pop uh at 58 percent yeah the first thing to break uh is going to go down right mm-hmm. like now it seems like meow pie despite despite the early game occurrences he He's still very calm and composed, right. trying to find openings, finding cracks, mm-hmm. right? But the last cipher, it's almost prime. So yeah. this is a very, very dangerous situation to be in. Um, 
novelist. Let's see how it, this is, one. Yeah. This is gonna shake out because the novelist is actually the one that is decoding. So it's run. He needs to time this pocket watch correctly, just so that she'll okay. ensure the rescue from happening. So goes for the early okay. pocket watch here. Try <laughs> oh, he gets it off the pocket watch. This is actually gonna be crazy. Last cipher is already primed. First officer has fallen down, and he acts actually gonna pop the cipher. Oh my God! Singjie, Singjie still has the spawn, the the follower onto him, the leech follower. Uh -huh. uh, first officer is fine because of the 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 watch, but Singjie uh -oh. needs to get this kite going on, and his bees are almost running out. Oh! Oh! The, the, the blink plane. hit, and that is gonna be checkmate for the entomologist. He just needs a tie to be able to secure the victory here, and now he's gonna make sure that this. Uh, this chair is going to be away from everyone. And uh, this was by a main follower. And we do see that this, uh, this, the spawn follower is going to chair him over here. Seems like they're going to try to open up the exit gate. Entomologist is not actually on the death chair. My bad, ladies and gentlemen. Has one Rain? more to go. And they need yep. to get this rescue. Rain's coming in. Rain's coming in. But there's three leeches on the map nearby. I don't know. I don't see how they can make this rescue. But they got to do it, you know? It's they like, have to. Oh, do or my die. God. Really just in the vicinity. I think it's a uh, checkmate at this point. Entomologist the uh, dwindling away, so they might have to actually call it. But Rain, he's not gonna go down without a fight! Oh, he's able to snipe oh. him out! And unfortunately, Run wasn't able to make it in time. And we can say GG to GH. Meow has done it. He has gotten the tie. He's gonna try to get more points as possible, but GH is gonna represent Southeast Asia and call the Abyss 7. Exactly. You wanted action? He he knew he was getting action and he got the action and he capitalized on it, right? Like too many music boxes were placed for Oh wait! Okay, okay, alright. I okay. It, it, there were too many music boxes to support the normalist, but in the end when you change target to to CZ, mm -hmm. what what can you do? You can't even pirouette away. So, True, and and it just yeah. I think it was a good it was good discipline being displayed by Meow. Like he's not forcing the the chase onto MX, and MX wanted to get chased at the start. He was ready for it, and uh, ultimately it was the player that showed a lot of discipline to be able to get it. <laughs> Lower left side of the screen sees the first <laughs> officer trying to open up a chest here. Again, I think yeah. it's a good showing that Run wants to be able to like you know go down not go down without a fight. It is a syringe, so we're gonna see a heal come off. And hopefully in time for the detention to run out, which it's already has. Yeah, uh -oh. I mean, uh, let, let's just see what he's trying to do. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, pocket watch can make wonders. Oh, good. Oh, wow. Wow. That was yeah. close. Yeah, he, he knows the bling was coming. He knows. He knows. <laughs> they're they're just playing, you know, like to finish. Wait. Okay. 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 Oh, All right. Here it hit. Get the rescue. Able to get it, but oh wow, the movement. Hang on, Rain still has a switcheroo in him, but he's gonna get the hit onto the <laughs> first running. officer. <laughs> They're running in the same position, <laughs> in the same direction, right? But GG well played. I mean, uh -huh. you no know, pie. He, he's not letting up. He showing respect, going all in. He's gonna take that 4K. He wants that 4K. Rain is trying to do that 1v1 again. Oh, the swap. <laughs> the swap and he's gonna go down he's gonna crawl out probably he has i mean he has a flywheel so his crawling speed's probably gonna be really fast yeah but wow. there you have it gg G -G goes out to both teams but gh solidifies their ticket to call of the abyss seven so congratulations to team gh for showing us an amazing performance and facing adversity you know and coming out of it on top exactly beautiful beautiful performance coming in i mean all all the rounds were really intense really exciting and mm -hmm. we got to see a lot of characters and mind you we got to see that not everything is like there's always a good moment there's always a mm -hmm. bad moment and for us i for me at least i feel like you know um never give up that's the key perseverance mm -hmm. going in even when you have a bad game as an as a disciple, never give up. Come back, come back, redeem yourself. And that's what he mm. did. 3K with a dream wish in the end. So once again, rest in power, Akira mm. Toriyama. <laughs> that quote, don't give up. Yeah, yeah, yeah don't give up. You know what? Exactly. Uh, you know what? You feel the, the spirit bomb and like everyone around the world yeah. gives, uh, 
Give, put up your hands, your, guys. Yeah, put up your hands. Southeast Let's Asia, go. put up your hands for Team GH because they exactly. need uh, your energy and your power coming into Call of the Abyss 7. Also for Team FT. But can we also give our congratulations and also like a round of applause for Team UTP because they made this grand finals one to remember with how well they played the game and also really took um, GH to their limit. And I think after this match, they really got a lot of fans of buzzing for um, UTP to be uh, possibly a contender for IVC. I mean, I know I'm a little far ahead into the year thinking about IVC, but I think mm -hmm. that's the next major big tournament that UTP has to eye uh, for another fast pass for the next Koa. Exactly. I'm just so excited. Like, even though it's like, you know, this is one of the things like we're so invested in the events throughout the year. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, um, it's okay. You, you you can still, you have potential. You can still make it in the next IVC. And when we mm -hmm. think about it, oh, IVC is for Koa 8. And it's like, yeah, wow, we're, we're really thinking that far ahead. But it, it's, it, it's good. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. And Yeah, uh, I think that's how UTP is supposed to feel, right? So at least they have something to look forward to because they were actually really close. And... I mean, they could exactly. definitely uh, learn a lot from this experience, and I'm sure they'll only get better. Um, mm -hmm. Like we always say, right? GH is here because they stuck around with each other. They have iterations here and there, but the core members are still there. So I think it's, it 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 pays to you know what grow and learn with uh, the same team members. And considering that UTP, the survivors side, they have been... I mean, there, there was an iteration of them back in 2022 in, in IVC uh, as they were ZT. Hopefully they still stick around and uh, I want to see more of UTP. So congratulations exactly. to them making it this far. But the night belongs to GH, folks. An amazing mm. um, performance by... Uh, so GH. Cypher's Machine's remaining 14. That's uh, I don't know if that's correct. I think that's the survivor hits. Yeah, I mean, remaining that's machines. A lot of Cyphers. 14, yeah. I mean, uh, taking into account on future matches in IVC, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> in Koa as well. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, I... Um, congratulations to GH. I feel like that was a very well-deserving performance. UTP mm -hmm. as well, because UTP fought neck and neck. And for a moment, mm -hmm. they had the advantage in BO2. But ultimately, um, GH... They've proven to be more well coordinated, more uh, well communicated. Well communicated, more well, the co communication uh, was more open and clear efficient. And yeah, and efficient. So. Yeah, I, I guess ultimately that's what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. And ultimately earns them the spot. So I feel like the Thai fans, the GH fans, would definitely, definitely, definitely be rejoicing right now. Probably partying and like, yes, we're gonna see GH again in mm. Koa 7 this time group stages yeah so FT and GH the finalists of uh, IVC 2023 will be your representatives uh, for the upcoming Call of the Abyss 7 group stage so again congratulations to them they well deserved well earned and they gave us one heck of a grand finals match which um, yeah I, I would honestly say that was, that was quite intense you know what uh, we were talking about like Call of the Abyss and like Koa season, and for me, this this Grand Finals got me really invested with how well they're going to perform. So I can't wait to see them on the big stage. Yeah, can't wait to see them on the big stage as well, uh, going up against the giants mm -hmm. from <laughs> from China, from Japan. Ah, honestly, I feel like if we have a chance to go there, I mean. Oh, man. Oh, oh, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and mind you though, like in the the end of the race, like before we look at the before we actually know what you know what we let's just look at the total score in the end. Right. It was ultimately one win, one round win each mm -hmm. and a draw in the very end. And ultimately GH won. Mm -hmm. and no, it's a two round wins. GH won with yes. the round advantage. So yeah. yeah, it was it was neck and neck as well, thirteen to eleven. Yeah, right. it was quite. I think this is a storied saga that we're gonna see GH versus, uh, mm -hmm. maybe UTP come IVC twenty twenty four. Um, definitely lived up to the hype, especially when uh, MX was saying like we'll we'll try to four escape you. Uh, the most yeah. they did to Meow was actually a three person escape, which is actually still pretty good. So mm -hmm. it's just, it, I, I think it's it builds character, uh, facing adversity exactly. and coming through it and still sticking it out to the end. So 
I'm yeah. glad that Miao was able to stick with it and still come to his own, especially at the end there. And we have to wait and see who the MVP is going to be. Uh, yeah. In this and the in interview this, too. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, interview. We're gonna. Exactly. Uh, we 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 got confirmation of who we're gonna interview, but we want you guys to like speculate and also kind of mm-hmm. look at, uh, be excited for who's gonna come in uh, for the interview and let us know also in the chat what kind of interview questions you'd want us to ask uh, our yeah, our GH representative. Yeah. Or Name quick fire how questions. Many chickens. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know what? Speaking of chickens, they were uh giving a lot of chicken comments yeah you know what? i forgot chat. to say tenola i forgot to say cheesy chicken uh chicken tenders yeah. there's so much chickens i forgot now i'm getting more yeah angry. sorry i know it's a sin to say raw chicken i'm sorry my my brain it's, was you, sh- you shouldn't say ch- raw chicken you say chicken sashimi chicken sashimi yeah that yeah. was what i was thinking about mm, yeah exactly so my apologies i just love chicken that much but yeah i guess we are um we should do this again, right? Uh, um, but before yeah. anything else, we're going to head to the interview, folks. And who do we have on the other side? Let's find out as we transition to the interview. Wait it is it. none other than GH Meow. Congratulations, Meow, for qualifying. You have punched your ticket to the Call of the Abyss 7 stage. Tell me, how were you feeling as the Dream Witch when you were able to secure the winning uh, down or se- secure the winning score for your team? Mm. So excited. <laughs> <laughs> so excited. Oh, excited. Your words. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I mean, Nell, do you have a follow-up question? Yeah, I mean, um, it was intense. Yeah. But, yeah, but let's just... <laughs> But let's just, uh, you know what? I I want to I want to know what's going on. Um, mm-hmm. Why disciple in Sacred Heart Hospital? It's a pretty hard map, right there, for a uh, disciple. Yes. Mm-hmm. Is, is there a logic? Is there? Yeah, a... tell us. Tell us what was going yeah. through your head when you picked uh, disciple. Uh, because they pick a uh, first officer. Uh, I think maybe I can test test him, but they let him spawn hospital. So, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So that's gonna be hard to but chase. If, if the and... uh, if the thing hit, uh, I think it is possible to get a draw. Mm. Oh yeah, okay. the game plan was to hit the first officer. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Okay. Nice. So meow, I have a question. Uh, because Rain, aka MX, said that. You know, he he wanted you to chase him, and he said that we'll try to form an escape with my thief, with all that. Um, how did you how did you feel? And and do you have a message to MX after? You know, what? we're all settled now. Like uh, it, it was a good game you guys had, and you you performed really well. Do you have a message to the MX and the rest of the team UTP with how they performed? Very hey, good. Very uh, good. Yes, very, very good. good. Very good. Uh, especially uh, uh, that Xiao Ju, uh, aka Nilu. Very, very well. What's Nilu? Xiao Ju is Nilu? What? Uh, okay, thank you for that. Uh huh. Why did he keep quiet? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, this question, yeah, we want to know as well. Uh, does this mean, like, this is your debut, right, for GH in a, in a tournament, in a tournament like this, official tournament? Does that mean you're officially. Uh, the main hunter now and Dot J is sort of like a substitute now backup hunter mm. or yes. uh, okay oh. so nice. speaking of which since you are part of GH um, how is the training going to be like and how do you feel now that you're going to represent Southeast Asia are you, do you feel like you guys are ready or do you need more matches more training to be ready for the big stage of Call of the Abyss uh, normally we can play better uh, mm-hmm. today not not that good. Oh, yes. we, we will t- train more. Yes, train more. Hey, but yes. even though you didn't play better, you still won the qualifiers. So I still think that's yeah. that's an amazing performance. So congrats there, uh, Nell. Yeah. Any final questions or? Uh, let's let's do a, a little bit of a quick fire questions. <laughs> okay, okay, go for it. Okay, chicken or fish? <laughs> then you hush. Okay. Chicken. Chicken, uh, yes! Chicken! Okay. <laughs> Ice cream or cake? Uh, 
too hard, too hard. Uh, too, too hard, hard too hard. hard. Uh oh. Okay, go now. Tea, tea ice or coffee? Ice cream, ice cream. Ice cream. Okay. No uh, tea or coffee? Uh, J- Japan tea. Yes. Japanese, Japanese tea. tea. Okay. Whoa. Uh, opera singer or Itakwa? Opera. Opera. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, and this is not a quick fire question, but. The audience wanted to confirm how tall are you. Can you share with us how tall are you? Are? Five apples tall. Uh, <laughs> how tall are you? Uh, as, as you said, uh, one eighty. Uh, no, no, uh, seventy-five. Ichi o. Oh, ah, yes, one seventy-five. Wow. That's, yes, that's tall. Perfect. That's tall. There we go. Last but not least, Meow, any final shout outs or message you want to give to your fans and the GH fans out there and the people that are watching? You have the floor. Kula have fun. Yes. Yay. Perfect. Yay. Again, thank you so much, Meow. It was always a, it was always a pleasure watching your matches and interviewing you. Guys, give it up for Meow. We will see him. Oh, beautiful stuff. Look at that. He's got doctor. The, the doctor uh, singing in the rain. So let's go. Meow, thank you so much. Congratulations. And please mm. celebrate well with your teammates. Okay, we'll see you in the big stage. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye-bye. you. Quick wow. fire. There you go. Quick fire. Chicken. Chicken. He loves chicken, chicken guys. Chicken supremacy. Go. Chicken supremacy. If you want the way to a man's heart, especially meal pie. Chicken. Make him a chicken dish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make him chicken sashimi, I think. That's the way. Yeah. Chicken. No, chicken adobo. Chicken adobo. <laughs> or orange chicken. Mm, orange I, chicken. Yeah, yeah lemon chicken. chicken. <laughs> yeah. yeah, salad chicken. <laughs> so there you go guys again meow a few a man a few words but he was still able to share his insights and also you know what he did give credit where credit was due utp uh he said they were played very good today and rightfully so they took it all the way to game number three so congratulations to them uh but we will show you guys today's result again uh, we did break the, the 2-0 streak today. We played all the way till game number three in the grand finals. And uh, yeah, what a what a tournament, what a weekend so far now. Yeah, what a weekend uh, all the way up until crowning a champion uh, representative, the second mm-hmm. representative to go into Koa, uh, the main stage. So um, couldn't, you know, I can't find a more deserving team. Um, mm-hmm than GH to represent yeah. Southeast Asia. And, and the point. fact that he said that, you know what, there's still more to improve. We still have a lot to train. I like that champion mentality. We're always training. We're always learning. We're always going to keep improving. So I, I'm sure that we're going to see some excellent results in the Call of the Abyss quali- uh, Call of the Abyss group stage. And you know what? I think the goal for Southeast Asia is just to really make an impact. Not to win the entire thing because... Uh, that is the goal, but the fact that if they can get wins over huge teams like GG or um, GR, any of those big names, is going to be huge. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Like, it's already a statement, right? Uh, coming all the way um, into the top eight, into the top four, and then finally with unforgettable moments like, hey, I, for example, Team RS. Right, mm-hmm. they there's only the hunter carrying the entire team. Yeah, and that was he's, crazy. <laughs> exactly, and that's already a statement to begin with. Muyo, we will remember mm-hmm. Muyo as the guy who carried the team all the way until best of three. Right, yeah. so right. someone give him an award. I, I hope his teammates, wherever they are, unfortunately they couldn't make it. Just get him a chicken sandwich or something. Give him some ice cream. Give him some yeah, Japanese tea. Get him Meow Pie's favorite. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, a doctor's plushie. <laughs> not this much for real, for real. Cool. But, yeah but i guess uh we'll, that's the that's the end of the mm-hmm. southeast asia qualifiers uh, yeah. but that's just one part that's just one part mm-hmm. of the qualifiers going on here mm-hmm. and we uh, did next... say that we we still have other qualifiers to look forward to i believe like next week it's the naeu qualifiers and there's still mm-hmm. the other qualifiers that are happening in every other division so it's super important for you guys to follow the socials of identity five and also follow nello mellow like you said you know there's a tournament happening in uh, in june that you definitely have to look forward to and you know we post a lot of memes so do follow us on our socials just to know exactly uh you know we might we might start a little something for call of the abyss um seven right we had like a a meme thing going on so we should definitely do that nell any final words before we sign off 
thank you for sticking with us from the beginning until the end you guys are legend and uh, wait for it Derry. there we go thank you guys so much for tuning in we'll see you guys from y95 action here at the desk that's nello mello i'm parched spice we'll see you guys on the next qualifiers good night for now